We are live! I walk in like, how do you do? That's too big. I don't know where I'm going to put it. And I don't mean to be rude or even act a fool. I just do a little better with an attitude. So, wicky, dicky, dicky, dum, dum, sticky, icky, like it's bubble yum. Getting some, going dumb. Maybe we'll shut it down and party like you turn turning 21. Trouble gets loud, it's on the tip of your tongue. A son of a gun, we getting dizzy like we're rascals. King up in the castle, always worth the hassle. Only thing we want to do is get trippy on the track. Then we can leave and say we brought it back. Turn the lights down. It's gonna get loud. Hello once again, welcome to the Bahamas and the PokerStars Players No Limit Hold'em Championship. It is day two of the second edition of the PSPC, the ultimate poker tournament. $25,000 to play, a prize pool expected to exceed $25 million. Hello everyone, I am James Hartigan and alongside me are Joe Stapleton. Hello my babies. And Maria Ho. Oh, hi guys. Now, Maria, I know you're going to be taking your seat at the tables very soon. You made it through day one. You're coming into day two with a below average stack, but not in the danger zone. Yeah, I mean, below average stack, but the play is going to be above average, guys. Uh, I think it's 57,000 you're coming back with, right? Mm -hmm. So almost as much as if you had bought in today. But I wouldn't <laughs> have had the experience. Oh, wow. Day one. Wow. Okay. Way to shut it down. And what? an experience it has been for everyone competing in this event. Let's talk about how day one of the PSPC went down. The atmosphere was electric as players arrived for the long-awaited second edition of the PSPC. The buzz inside the poker room reached its peak as the shuffle up and deal approached. The reigning champion, Ramon Kalilas, took center stage alongside chess master, Alexandra Botez. Good thing I can see the cards in your glasses. <laughs> With over 400 platinum pass winners living the dream, competing against the best in the world. And as play came to a close, Chris Mormon was among the chip leaders, rounding out an incredible day one. So, Maria, you highlighted the experience of playing day one. Summarize your day one. How was it playing in this tournament? Walking in, as everybody has mentioned, the excitement was palpable. And it's just a feeling that as a poker pro, when you're older and withered, you don't get very often. So it was so exciting to be able to be a part of it and to see it in person. So I loved it. And granted, I don't have a big sack today, but I'm excited to just be here. Look, I took a shot at you earlier. Uh, now I'm going to compliment you. One of my favorite things in all of poker, especially in this event, is watching pros struggle to adjust to playing with amateurs. And something that I think you're actually very good at is making that adjustment. So I'm just wondering how that went for you yesterday. And did you see other pros struggle to do that? I felt like some pros definitely had a lot of trouble with the amateurs because a lot of the times they are used to playing with one amateur at the table, but perhaps not two, three, four. And so for me, because I appreciate that compliment, because I feel like I've had more experience, um, I was able to navigate it and, you know, duck some of the minefields. Now, of course, you came to the secondary feature table. I had to play against some familiar faces, Joe. Yeah. Uh, Griffin Bender, Spraggy there. Did Griffin drive you bananas? 
you know, at first Griffin was a little quiet because he had a short stack. Um, but uh, <laughs> then, you know, he became his usual Griff and it was really fun. And of course, having Spraggy and Mason Pie was, uh, oh, right, it pie. felt like a commentator home game, really. Now, you're involved in a hand against Spraggy that did not make the stream. But the good news is we've gone back and unearthed it from the tape. You do have a bit of a reputation, Maria, for butchering the Chop Pot song. But yesterday, Griffin Benger gave you a shot at redemption. Oh, you're done. Get a grip, okay? Oh. <laughs> oh. Love that frost. Love that frost. <laughs> oh. Unbelievable. How did I let him just get away with this? Hey, Maria. Or oh, defend. And you know what they say? Everyone, Everyone loves a child pot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to call it Maria 9, Griffin 6. Yeah, you know what the problem was? He was overexcited. He was already doing a victory lap before the words were out of his mouth. Come on, Griff. <laughs> uh, so let's talk about where we are at right now in the PSPC. Coming into day two with around 680 players. Registration still open for another two levels, by the way. These are the big stacks. These are the chip leaders taking their seats. Tony Tran and Chris Mormon actually tied at the top with 356,000 each, just shy of 240 big blinds. Josh Arie also in the top three. Look at that. The Shabanimal is seventh in chips, Joe. Yeah, I feel like the Platinum Pass winners in general are doing better after day one than they fared last time. Yes, and many of the Platinum Pass winners that we're familiar with, including what you call the Platinum Five, right? The OGs, the five who won their passes in Barcelona, all still in coming into day two. That's incredible. I mean, maybe, Maria, they, they learned something from watching the stream last time or the TV shows or just the advice that the class of 2019 gave them. Yeah, absolutely. And I feel like talking to some of these people who have waited so long, they've really worked on their game just specifically for this event. Now, I know what you're thinking. Who is going to be at the feature table? Who's going to be on the main stage? I'm going to put you out your misery. I'm going to tell you who you're going to be watching during the first session of play today. We have got Spraggy's Twitch mod, Dat Paddy, Patrick Chambers, up on the main stage. Spain is going to be very excited. Not only do they have Leo Marquez, they're also going to have Theros, Elias Gutierrez. Scott Baumstein, of course, was a finalist in the first PSPC, and he won a platinum pass to the second. A decent mix of players, Joe. Yeah, and if I'm not mistaken, Rick Bleakley was on our podcast as well. He was indeed. He is a platinum pass winner who was a guest on Poker in the Years. Uh, before we go and before we send you to your seat, Maria, have you seen your table draw, by the way? Who have you got today? I, I did look at it, and I don't feel like any name stuck out to me, so that might be a good thing. I'm right. going to hope to run it up today. Best of luck. We will be keeping tabs on your progress. And, of course, today is your last chance to get in the mix. The mini PSPC is running right now, an online version of the Players' Championship for 1,000th of the price. Registration is going to close roughly the same time that registration closes in the big event here in the Bahamas. And remember, there is thousands in added value. So have fun as you watch the action from day two of the PSPC. And just checking the lobby, Joe, looks like two and a half thousand entries in the mini PSPC with late reg open for around another two hours. Meanwhile, the field in the big boy, the PokerStars players, No Limit Hold'em Championship is at 1,009 right now. But it'll be interesting to see how many players do late reg during these final two sessions. Yeah, I wonder if you're Registering later, you're just going to max late reg at this point? I guess travel's yeah. got to be a factor, right? I'm sure there are people that are still on their way here now. Some people probably have a sweat whether or not they're going to make it. So kicking off the action at the start of level nine, blinds are 1,500 with a 1,500 big blind ante, playing 60-minute levels, so two levels back to back. I never on, but yeah. Feature tables, I always need a hat or sunglasses. Just my eyes get tired. One of the other Platinum Pass winners I guess we should have highlighted in addition to Rick Bleakley is Jody Hurley, who we had the pleasure of playing against at the Hippodrome recently. Joseph D. Hurley. Jody with a 22 big blind stack, folds the 10-5 of diamonds. Oh, Jody is all one word. I got it. So this is 
Chris Brewer from the US of A, opening with 10-8 suited. Mm, beer. Cool. And Rick Bleakley is going to call out of the small blind with Queen Jack of Diamonds. Rick! 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 Theros folds the big blind, and we are going heads up to the flop on the first hand of day two of the PSPC. King, queen, seven with just the one spade. Second pair for Bleakley against the cutoff open. You're not hating that. The action check to him. Brewer continues. And Bleakley calls the 5K. Turn card is the Deuce of Diamonds. Bleakley, a much stronger favorite now. The equities on screen, not accurate, not taking into account the board cards. So Bleakley checks a second time. Oh, looks like it went check, check on the turn. My apologies. Yeah. Barry Greenstein's made an appearance. We have an ace on the river. So Bleakley does have a lock on this. And kind of opened the door for Brewer to take a stab at this with 10 high. And wow, really does go for it. Bold move from Chris Brewer, which gets Rick Bleakley to fold the best hand. The bluff gets through and Brewer chips up over 60 big blinds. Rick Bleakley becomes the low man at the table with a sub-20 big blind stack. Um, so that mean we're live on Twitch, does it? Hours, three hours? Yes, Dad yeah. Patty, have you heard of it? Oh, Twitch? Yeah. Once or twice, I think. The, the streaming platform? Fast, I think. Oh, yeah. Are you familiar? No, just not cool. Oh, yeah, yeah, no. The same time, though. Patty in the one hole. Yeah, and it's going to be Leomar gets first to act here. She's under the gun. She folds. Scott Baumstein is out. Jody Hurley passes. Round two, Dat Paddy, Patrick Chambers. The platinum pass winner has ace queen. He's got one in the chambers. <laughs> Raises to 3,000. Ace five for Rick Bleakley. Rick, Rick. It's hard to, yeah, yeah, when course. you know the person, but obviously I understand and it's fine. And then we started switching. Theros is in the small blind, passes. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Ready for tour. I, <laughs> yeah, I saw that happen one time. It was... Uh, it happened to me he seems it was, ready. It might have been to Adrian. He, like Adrian doesn't even have a heavy accent. Ready's popped yeah, up here and like, there, and Adrian was a few of our streams. In English, and they were like English only, and I was like, they'll definitely speak in English. <laughs> 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 Went deep in Barcelona. The most recent one, I feel like maybe right. <laughs> it was like such a strange thing. The yeah. deal 2019 like, also. <laughs> yeah. He's pretty action, if I remember correctly, too. Oh, thank you. So raise and take it there for. Dat Paddy. Five minutes in today two. It's so hard with the accent. I think it's like I, for a while I used to try a lot, but it's so hard. Like you, you, I can focus on. Does Leo have an I accent? If I <laughs> try to I mean, it's pay too much attention to the accent. I have. I don't think it's too hard to understand for me. No, uh, actually, for us. I yeah. think for uh, foreigners, we understand way better people with accents. Huh, that's yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No? that's true. And, and, like, especially Europeans, right? Mm. But Greek, but even Japanese people speaking English, I think it's easier yeah, than it's native. Yeah. I agree with that. I have a friend, I have a friend from Czech who just never understands anything I say. Like, he speaks English fine, but specifically me. He's like, you talk too fast. <laughs> He's like, it's just a mess. I think you, I, I'm understanding you. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
So Hurley has opened in early position. Rick Bleakley has shoved with Ace King. Are we going to see a classic race, Joe, on the third hand of the day? It would seem so. Oh, oh. not exactly classic. Leomar gets with Ace King in the big blind, considering what to do. And Leo has elected to reshove, and that puts Jody Hurley in a tough spot. It's all into call, and two players have shoved in front of you. Tens really shrivel up here. I don't blame him for folding, and so Bleakley and Margetts are going to flip over what is effectively the same hand. They've got each other's suits. You guys even have each other's suits covered. <laughs> Oh Shall we boy. go for blacks? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Joe will get the chance to show Maria and Griffin how it's really done. Like the Beatles versus the Beatles, one of these two things is the same thing as the other thing. 99% chance of a chop. Let's be honest, guys. We don't want to see the 1% sickness. Come on. We do not. We will not. Okay, so we're going to call it. We're going to say that this is a chop pot, and you know what they say. Everyone loves a chop pot. For your consideration, Global Poker Awards favorite live stream 2023. 10 out of 10 chop pot. What other live streams sing a song when there's a chop pot? I don't think any of them do. No, that's if not true. If they do, it's one of ours. They rip us off. <laughs> we deserve extra points and extra votes for originality. I can't tell you. Now, people don't rip me off that much other than all it takes is a chip and a chair. That one is my gift to the world. But you get ripped off a lot. You get ripped off a whole hell of a lot. Nobody wants, nobody wants any of my BS shtick. Yeah, but people yeah, think yeah. they're ripping you off because you get the credit for, <laughs> for every true. single thing I've ever done. <laughs> From the 22nd or something? No. Um, you mean the start? Of, ah, okay. You mean the start of the PSPC? Oof, Zeddy, how about my gift during the last series? Razy takey out of the small blind. Oof. Eey. Hand four of the day. Action folded to the button. Ready Patur with 6 3 off. So round to the blinds, Leomar gets in the small. Scott Baumstein, fourth place finisher in the inaugural PSPC. In the big. Leo has elected just to call. Scott's got Queen 10. Scotty B been doing a great job this week, helping out with the live streams himself. As I like to call him, the king of South Florida poker absolutely crushes at the Hard Rock, just a couple of miles from here. Well, he has flopped a gut shot. Leomar gets with a pair of jacks. Action goes check, check. Two pair now for Leo. For those wondering, I do not know who the king of North Florida poker is. I think it might be up for grabs. Or queen. Check, check again. And a full house on the river for Margetts. Scott left with Queen High. I'm not sure how much Scott would pay off Queen High here. He, a lot of times Queen High could be good in a blind on blind showdown. Right. But a lot of times also, Leo would bet her nothings earlier than the river, yeah. Better 4K on the river gets a fold from Scott Baumstein. 
Leo Margetz hovering around the 30 big blind mark right now. Kep says, ha ha, I would have bombed the turn after checks. I assume he means Baumstein. And Scott would have ran right into it. But I do think that that would be a tempting proposition after the turn check to bet the straight draw. VJ mentioning that uh, Jacksonville is about the only place in North Florida for poker. It's the only place I'm aware of. I think all the Georgia people go play in Jacksonville also. So the clock hasn't ticked up since we started play. Still at 1,009 total entries, 669 remaining, which means the average stack right now is 90K. So we're playing reasonably deep, especially for this type of tournament. So if we started with 60,000 chips, mm -hmm. And now the average is 90,000 chips. Does that mean that we've lost a third of the field because the average is 30% more? You're good. Does that work like that? It does. That's, that's why they call in the human calculator. Oh, man. For your consideration, favorite, put, which other one has a human calculator? Huh? Does Turning Stone Live by the way, have a human calculator? Just so people can find it, Joe. Yeah. On the Global Poker Index website, I think you'll find the category is Fave Livestream. Fave, sorry, yes. Yes. Please use the correct Fave abbreviation. Fave Livestream. I'm pretty sure that this is an Eric move to tilt me because he knows how much I hate abbreviations. It could be. I wonder what Eric's fave live stream is. I wonder who he'll be voting for. All in. Scott Baumstein all in after the open from Gutierrez and the three bet from Margetz. Whoops. Sacramento says, imagine Spraggy, Botez, Moneymaker, and Raymer at the feature table. <laughs> They're all in the field. They're not at the same table. We have to hope that table draws, table breaks, and new seating assignments are kind to us because it would need to be fate that decided that. Scotty B, bowing it in, taking mm. it down. Now, of course, as the PSPC has played out over the coming days, the PCA continues with side events every single day. And thank you to JoJo for highlighting that Georgina James Reginald, GJJ Reggie herself, it. took down the ladies' event the last Orleans night. Oh, it. wow, Everyone's that's great. <laughs> no messing around on day two, eh? Yeah. There you go. And if you want it. It's those TV hands. You know, when I lived in off. England and I used to play the Sunday Million every once in a while, I. Uh, I used to play with my friend Charlie, who I ran into last night. She finished third in the event she was playing. Let's go, ladies. I think GJ's coming into day two of the PSPC with a pretty healthy stack as well. I know you guys are always keen to find out where you can get an overview of the tournament and how you can follow reports from the outer tables and chip stacks of all the players. Again, we'll remind you that Poker News do great live coverage. Chip counts can be found in the PokerStars Live app. However, spoilers, the stream's on a 30 minute delay. So if you go anywhere near the live updates, you may encounter spoilers. If you're fine with that, good luck to you. Just don't bring them into the chat. Is that red chip in your stack or is that a different denomination? It's a red chip, yeah. Oh, it, just, it looked a bit pink or something. Was it Jody who won his platinum pass on Twitch? <laughs> it's hard for me to keep all the story straight, but I'm seeing nods around the room. Room. Are you sure he didn't win his platinum pass hosting the Howard Stern show? Hello, hello. Apparently, he was actually on the toilet when he won. This was the Platinum Pass draw we did during the Big 20 series. 
Remember, the first person we drew did not have their PokerStars and Twitch accounts linked. He was the second to be drawn. He won the Platinum Pass. Do you think that would help or hurt what was going on in there at the time? Well, this oh, is boy. Ready Patur versus Chris Brewer. It is a King 10 deuce flop. So the Grafton paying off for Brewer has second pair. People in chat, please, whatever you do, do not, do not start calling and keep calling and forever calling Jody Hurley toilet guy. Don't call him toilet guy. That would be awful. Six on the turn. And Patur drawing incredibly thin, just ace high here. Yes, so, this is exactly what I'm talking about. Betting 6,000 on the turn. Pature. That's what you're talking about? Pateur. He's action. But Brewer going nowhere. And that means we're going to go to the river. Which is the five of spades. Brewer has a lock on it. Tour with a hitting a river card that would have been much nicer in the flop return. Just ace high. Brewer so far of what I've seen. Oh my god, is he shoved? He did shove and it got through. Wow. Strong move from Patur hovering around the 40 big blind mark. Six hundred and fifty eight players remaining. Vic and John YouTube asks, where Seb? Huber? Oh, maybe. So let's keep tabs. Yep. Finton, I think, was the first member of Team Pro to get knocked out. We lost Tonka. We've lost Whiston. We've lost Lex. We still have Spraggy. Spraggy's a Team Pro? Apparently. Hmm. What about Andre Akari? Still in. What about Ruben Visser? Not sure if he's here. Was he ever a team pro? He was. Okay. GJ, we mentioned her earlier on. Uh, Scott Baumstein, ace king again, this time in the cutoff and opening to 3,500. Cool. And it will be Patrick Chambers, Dat Paddy, who is the table chip leader who defends his big blind to this raise with Jack-10. I prefer to call him by his real name, That Patty. It is ace, five, deuce on the flop. Baumstein with a huge advantage. 
I don't, I think this will be an exercise in futility, but I'm going to read it anyway. Mayo faces Yo Stapes. When is Poker Stars coming back to all U.S. states? The game is called Texas Hold'em. Can't even play. Lol. Uh, oh, that Christ is something. Alive. Hold on. Well, all we can do is say, look, if you want Governor poker Pete to come back to all U.S. states, call your representatives. Call your Congress people. Call your senators. Because uh, that's the only thing that will bring Poker Stars back. Believe me, Poker Stars wants to be back. We just need to become legalized, and the only way to do that is to get your politicians to change their minds. Brutal beat. I hate yeah, to be a cynic, happens. <laughs> but I do think there are certain U.S. states where you are pretty much I'm drawing dead. I don't think there will yeah. ever be a situation <laughs> where all 50 states Doesn't are really playing do me much again. Just No, but it's possible like, uh, yeah, that your state so can come around. They're talking about it in New York. Talk about it every True. once in a while in California. <laughs> yeah. Florida is one that seems like might go at some point. I might not play this 250, even if I bust. The other thing I would say but is we're really only bad. just <laughs> dipping our toes <laughs> into the water of yeah. states uh, being I'm able to play against each other. Right. For example, like New great, Jersey and Michigan shared time. liquidity. I would love it if we could have a situation where, like, North America could have its own player pool. Uh, yeah, like yeah. Ontario be part of that? Exactly. I don't, again, sorry to be a cynic, sorry to be a pessimist, uh, I don't see a situation, yeah, so certainly good. anytime soon, yeah, 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 yeah. where America would be playing that's against fun. the rest of the world again. Yeah. Mystery Bounty is probably a good one to swap. I guess uh, I don't totally disagree with you, James. I guess to my point is the amount of effort it would take to drop uh, an email to one of your senators is only slightly more than it takes to write in Twitch chat. I see the point you're making. Leo Margetz has opened with artisanal sourdough, has been called on the button by Chris Brewer. Six tray deuce on the flop. The wheel draw for Margette. Still has the best hand with ace high. Uh, for the record, guys, I don't really care what unregulated, un unlicensed sites do. Not a fair comparison. I'm trying to do it the, the straight and narrow way. James, why buy a nice bottle of wine when you can make moonshine in your bathtub? It passed the first test. I did not go blind. <laughs> Nine. Did the Spanish just cry sexy time when Leomar gets raised? Oh, sexy town. I heard time, but, uh, you know, either way, sexy, I think, is the operative word there. That was Steve, Steve Enriquez. And I assume it's the raise that's sexy and not the person doing it. He probably would have yelled the same thing if it was Ramon or... Oh, 100%. I think it's any Juan Spanish Manuel player. Juan Manuel Pastor, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, why is Brewer stationing with King Seven of Clubs Sorry, there? Sorry, Brewer calls. It was Leo who check raised. Brewer calling with King Seven. I Curious. Mean, we saw that Brewer shove on one of the first hands, yes. and obviously that's like kind of a, a big shove to make. There was nineteen thousand in the middle. He shoved for around eighty thousand, and I get that you're bluffing with ten high, but Brewer is seemingly a bit of a rogue here. And I assume that when you call that raise, it's with the intention of firing super hard. And he does. And it's going to be hard. 
for Margetz to continue in this hand. 6,000. I mean, she's only got 13 bigs left. She's only got 20K behind. Yeah, I mean... Forced to fold. I right, give Brewer credit there for getting the outcome he wanted for the price he wanted. Good work. Well, we are going to step away from the feature table. We are going to go out into the field where there is an interesting hand in progress. It's Alexandre Vlumier. Remember him? He has just bet enough on the turn to put Ramon Kalilis all in. And Ramon has called, shakes his head because he knows he's up against it. Ramon has got ace seven for top for a pair, a set of sevens for Villemier. And Ramon Kalilas, the reigning champion of the PSPC, will not be going back to back. He is eliminated at the start of day two. There will be a new winner in the second edition of the PokerStars Players No Limit Hold'em Championship. Man, no matter what happened here, Ramon uh, put up the numbers from the time he won the first PSPC all the way up until now. Obviously, he didn't cash every single event, but his, his deep runs are too, too many for me to count right now. Including the PCA main event just a couple of days ago. Correct. So we're going over to the secondary feature table now. Yesterday, we saw Adrian Vinuela, one of the original Platinum Five, Clement Alloy is another member of that gang, but he's not involved in this hand. This is Philip Grusom, who I don't think we've seen for years, and I'm talking years before the pandemic. Okay. Up against Anna Marquez. Yeah. Phil Grusom, when I saw him, <laughs> he was outside, I was inside, made a beeline, came inside, gave me a big hug, told me he lives in Mexico now, he's a dad, and don't seems... Don't call me, don't bluff me, you like, how can you come back? Uh, uh, it's the same one. funny, <laughs> affable dude, but just a little Whatever more grown up I do, now. Like, if I bet I get nothing, if I take, I also get nothing. So it's again... There will never be a time like this. See, Jesse Wills asking about the Platinum Five. You gotta be across all of the PSCU, the PokerStars content universe. You can't just dip in and out of the live streams. You gotta be across the podcast. You gotta be across the blog. You gotta be across what we did in Barcelona 2019 when we awarded the first five platinum passes, the OG pass winners, what we call the platinum five. Then you jam and I'm fucking folding I and mean, I'm losing the pot. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you wish. You know what the plan is. <laughs> Alejandro Lococo, Papo MC. I've only seen one of his cards. He's got a jack. jack Jamil Wakil is back wow. at a feature table. <laughs> he folds and Clement Aloy. A man who he discovered has now basically detached himself from the rest of the world and is living off the land on his estate in France. Used to be a designer, designed a sex toy for dogs. Hashtag fun fact. I don't see any way I could comment on that that would be appropriate, so I'm just going to let it live or die, whichever. Marquez calls out of the big blind. <laughs> And we are three-way to an ace-ten-deuce flop. Anna could have the best hand here, but obviously we don't know Papo's other card. All these people who don't know about the dog thing. Again, get yourself up to speed with the rest of the PSCU. What are you doing? You don't go to Infinity War without watching the first 28 movies. That's right, guys. Get on it. We get service here because we are on the, on the, on the, on the TV thing. Getting around the beers? What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> you wish, bro. <laughs> <laughs> How are you? Everyone <laughs> checks the flop. King of diamonds on the turn. Have like the Pretty good. Does Lococo have jacks and that's why he can't yeah, bet this is high board? Mm. Out of the gun, plus one. 
Ten of hearts pairs the board. You're going to have jack 10 sometimes. Going to have king jack, queen jack. Going to have ace jack. Talking of players who've had multiple deep runs, by the way, talking of players with impressive live CVs, let's have some love for Papo. What's closest to you? Like, how close is, like, the place you can play? Very close? It used to be games in Singapore. They used to be. Yeah, I was just about to mention so, that. Uh, since Corona, they haven't started again. But the game no. sucked. Oh, the game sucked. Like, the slowest cash game I've ever seen. And has a very unorthodox so style really because you can't spell the Coco without Loco. You also can't spell it without Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. This really feels pretty jacksy to me. <laughs> all right, all right. Well, he has folded, and now Clement, the platinum pass winner, has to decide whether to hero with just a pair of threes. Yesterday was my birthday. What? Yesterday I had birthday. Oh, was it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. How old are you? Yeah. 36. Hey! Yeah, yeah. 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 I had a birthday. Here? No. Mm -hmm. uh, not here. Well, that's but, uh, That'll be fun. Right after Paris. Man, if Clamont makes his call of threes, yeah. Papo yeah. MC gets to see that his full with jacks was good. <laughs> Clement folds, and this pot will be sent in the direction of Anna Marquez, who adds 5,000 to her stack. <laughs> Checking on the stacks of all the players at the secondary feature table. It is Papo MC. Alejandro Lococo has the biggest stack. Jamil Wakil is the shortest stack with 45K. Average right now, 94,594. <laughs> was it last year you were I just got a message from our superstar PR team that oh, said no, like package that delivered, yeah, yeah, enjoy. Yeah. With a broken leg. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, I had like um, So I think it? we have a treat coming up soon. I thought I had a blood. It's not food? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> They put out Snickers bars this morning. I feel I've already had my treat. Not sure I can handle another. James, you know how everyone uh, gives me credit for your bits? Zacabello on Twitch loves my impression of Phil Gruesome. <laughs> <laughs> well, Gruesome going to the flop here. against Mark Rajan, a German player who lives in Malta. And Gruesome still ahead with ace high. Oh, you played other stuff too? Like you've been here the whole time? No, no, just here. Just for the time, yeah. Curious to see if Gruesome still got it. My guess is yes. Bets gets a fold. Yeah, I got I got a blood slot coming yeah. from Vegas. So well, basically, Joe has uh, joked about it a couple yeah, of times yeah, already today, also. but so a serious PSA with, coming up for you guys. You know this drug the Global Poker blood. Awards take place so at the beginning of March, and, and EPT Live, this production, is up for fave live stream. We would very much appreciate your vote. If you think we put on the best show, if you think our production is the best in the business, a true global production from international events, commentators in multiple languages, vote at globalpokerindex.com slash awards. We've got the link in the Twitch chat, in the YouTube chat. We would very much appreciate your support. And it's not 
a vote for us. Correct. It's a vote for the team. It's a vote for everyone who puts so much work, so many man hours, so much effort into this production. I don't think the word team even covers it. Like, look at what you see there. You see the designs, you see the thought that goes into the stage, everything. Every facet of this is what you're voting for here. From the coverage, to the production, to the, to the, to the audio. I would say the opening titles we have right now. Opening titles. Are like a James Bond movie. They are deserving of an award by themselves. The German is like borderline assaultment, you know? Like, <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. I mean, this place is full of frickin' laser no beams. Offense. No Dutch people here, don't worry. So picking up the action here, we've had a raise from Anna Marquez on the button with Ace-10 suited. Vas Zolt, or is that Zolt Vas from Hungary, has three bet to 14 and a half K. And now Papo's deciding what to do in the big blind with Ace-10 of clubs. And Papo says, I'll have the lot. Gets the red triangle of death, but make no mistake about it, he is shoving on the other two players. He has them both covered. I saw someone fold pocket nines in a spot similar to this very recently. <laughs> Good timing for button steers. <laughs> like, my, like my outfit, my eyes, my pads, my long hair. <laughs> you are looking for some, uh, how, you, how the professional says, tells? <laughs> so okay. it would be a flip it would be a race if Vass decides to make the call but do you really want to call it off here with nines Vass has got 50,000. He and folds. Also makes the fold with nines. Well, I'll tell you what. <laughs> the man sitting next to us right now was feeling Vass's pain. <laughs> David Costabile, welcome to the stream. Thank you very much. Thank you. I feel I feel honored to be with you two. You guys are the, uh, you are doing the heaviest lift of all of everyone here, I'll tell you right now. I mean, I will accept that. I don't think it's yeah. true, but it I'll is take true. It. I mean, you're sitting in a chair, you're in, you know, and they don't really have very good lighting here for you guys, but it's all right. Obviously, David, it was an absolute pleasure to have you in this event and obviously playing at our feature oh, wow. table yesterday. For and three and a half hours. <clears throat> uh, it was three and a half hours yep. of, of our audience literally mm. shouting at each other, <laughs> which is your best known role? He's Gal from Breaking Bad. He's Wax from Billions. He's the guy from Suits. Actually, I think you'll find he was in The Wire. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So it was really just one constant IMDP page. They just kept scrolling. Well, every it. time someone new would come to the stream, they'd be like, is that the... Is that, <laughs> is that, that guy? Yeah. I think that's that, that guy. But and also, also, there wasn't a lot of that guy. People did know oh, what nice. you were from. Right. Yes. That's good. yes. That's good. And I would say it seems that Flight of the Concords fans are the most vociferous. Oh, uh, yeah. They'll really once that once they've got their latches on you, they really won't let go. That's the Concord. I part. did a bit where I told people to send in their favorite wags quotes, and I had a good time. At least the ones I was allowed to read. Sure. Okay. Can you even say half of that stuff? Some of them. I'll, I'll, sometimes I'll just fudge a swear word. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, I heard you guys were very kind to me, and I really thank you because my my tiny little children were watching yeah. because they wanted to see Dad play cards. Oh, that's cool. And uh, so thank you. I appreciate it. And you listened to me when I sat down, and I was like, please, please be kind to me. <laughs> Well, it wasn't that difficult because there was, look, there were some, there were some mistakes. I learned something. I learned something very valuable. Should I tell you what I learned? Please, please do. If you're playing in the PCPS and you are short stacked and under the gun and you get queens and your instinct is to go all in, then the next thing you think to yourself is against these professionals, I'm going to get tricky. <laughs> that, that's when you should not oh, yeah. do that yeah, thing yeah. where it's it says, really I'm going to get tricky on these guys who've had me as a mark it's for three and a half hours and want my scalp desperately too, for their yeah. trophy shelf and are going to get it at some point. 
you can't get tricky. It's very tempting. It's one of the. It's it's a. It's like a the mirage when yeah, you see exactly. that and you're like, I could just like. I this can will like make fancy me even better. Put, yeah. I'm, I'm the fanciest. I'm the fanciest mark there is. Uh, yeah. So I was the fancy mark, and uh, that was a terrible, terrible error. Well, I got word that you called the death by a thousand cuts, and that's. It was. It was. It was the whole day. Literally, I, from when I wasn't on camera to. Yeah. To the oh, moment when I was, yeah, yeah, yeah. it really was just. That's a, what we saw a too. Death spiral. And there was some. The only situations where, yes, where yes. things were. I'm maybe happy for, I take direction and notes all the time. It's Fantastic. my job. So well, I'm not going to give you any for acting for notes. But okay. Yeah. That's good because I was also trying that part for you. That was that was my gift to you guys. To give us something. To something. Yes. 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 So we just saw. Chatter. Go ahead. Phil Cruesome won that last out of the secondary feature table. We're coming back to the main stage. And when you were at that stage yesterday, I think the highlight of my day, David, was when the Australian guy sat down. He goes, I know you're from that TV show, and you were trying to help him. Going, money. <laughs> like, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Is that the guy without the tooth? So hopefully he does well today. But he was, was he missing like, a tooth? Yeah. It was just cool. The guy's got his so tooth knocked out and he brought his tooth back at the, he after break. He, he put it on the table. Like, obviously he wants to I missed that. He was just like, this is awesome. You guys didn't hear that? I'm no, really no, pleased no, to say that I missed that. He put the, put the tooth yeah, yeah, on the table. I was like, wow, that's disgusting. He had lost it the night before and wouldn't tell us where or how he had lost his tooth. And we were like, so that's not even like a regular gag he pulls. That had just happened. It had just happened. And and the, that Rory, who was there, he was just like, wow, you're really taking it well. You're really just not... You're not upset at all that you lost your friend. And it was this tooth. Oh, my God. He lost his front tooth. We've got an all in here. Leomar gets opened with aces and platinum pass winner Jody Hurley has moved all in with tens. Leomar gets obviously makes the call and Jody Hurley is at risk. That's right, Sam Sam. Toilet guy could be exiting the PSPC. Don't ask. What? He won his platinum pass while he was on the toilet. <laughs> How do you do that? That's a, that's a skill. Is Robin Quivers on his rail? <laughs> I've made the right fold for myself, even if it's the wrong fold. I folded tens with when you both shopped earlier. 22. 22. Yeah. Big moment for the platinum oh, yeah. pass I'm winner. <laughs> Uh, it's most of Leo's stack as well. If, if Jody gets lucky here, she's practically out. And he has flopped a straight draw. What's it always coming? Seven. 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 That's as much as I can hope. Ace five. five. Yeah, I'd be happy with the top. Seven, ten. Oh, well, Jody Hurley will need to hit a ten or a seven on the river, or he is KO'd. The river is a nine, and we say goodbye to Jody Hurley. I hope he enjoyed the experience of coming to the Bahamas and competing in this 25K. But his chips now belong to Leo Margetz. Returning from whence he came, the toilet. I used to play with a friend who, like, whenever someone was, like, drawing dead on the colony, he'd just say they're drawing to a foul deck. Like, you'll just try to hit the ace of diamonds for the top. I mean, if that's where you do your best work. If I got lucky on the toilet, I would probably spend more time in there, yeah. Yeah, about what you would And you might be proud of it. You might be like, I'm the toilet guy. You'd be like, it's the way it goes. And you might have to travel with one here, a little potat or something. If it becomes your identity, it can become a real problem. Everybody's got a everybody's got a gag. That's my thing. It's his thing. The guy walks around in the toilet. He doesn't use it. He just walks around with it. Yeah. More than the guys that have zero idea, I like Well, I had spent... Last the like, prior well, week watching you guys, yeah. and I, I just I oh, okay. feel it. it I feel slowly. what you do it's is incredible. incredible. Because yeah, in yeah. normally yeah. what is absolute like, just dead silence, you, know, you are filling they are the, the void. That's and very nice. And it's you. very you fun and entertaining to listen to you. And you're yeah, yeah. I, not I, only I, the commentary I, is is funny, but it's also apt and very intriguing. So I applaud both of you. Both of you. Appreciate that. It ain't no joke. Amazing. I've had some very positive interactions with your your boss and friend Brian Coffin. Oh sure, you, you he's played like the a, cards with him. Well, I haven't played with him, but um, every once in a while, when he was on Twitter, he would throw me a compliment on Twitter. Oh, nice. That meant a lot because he's the Rounders guy. Yeah, he's the Rounders guy. It's a you know a, a god in the poker sure, world. Sure. The, the person that one of the yeah, I mean, I'm, Rounders. I mean, when I get back, I'm going to get notes from him too. So there's going to be. It's going to be all sort of, and luckily now everyone has gotten to see every hand I have, so now everybody can di dissect it. It if wasn't I, that bad because if I just had, if I had just been playing out in the field, right, you can't see what I'm playing, right. what I'm not playing. I could tell you and be like, ah, 
I, I, I warn our invited guests that part of the invitation is you might end up on a feature <laughs> no, table. I, I figured that was a, a distinct possibility. Yeah. Um, is my mind playing tricks on me, David, or did you have, did you have a small role in Runner Runner? I did. Well done. Brian's other Pokemon. Correct. Thank Correct. You. I played a degenerate gambler. <laughs> We, uh, we, uh, I mean, no surprise. Been, no, You've been on our podcast before, and we, whenever there's a new gambling movie or one we haven't covered yet, we watch it. We sure. talk about it on the podcast. We did Runner Runner, and yeah, we're right. easier on Runner Runner than Brian. Than oh, yeah, Brian. Is on yeah, Runner yeah, Runner. Yeah, yeah. Well, I actually kind of liked it. Yeah. I was like, that was a pretty fun movie. Sure, why not? Yeah. What's, what's not to like? You got money and guns and cards. Yeah. Yeah. Alligators. Um, alligators, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Who doesn't live a good animal movie? I love an animal movie. Yeah, What's weird know, is because the movie exactly. was written whatever it was 15 yeah, years ago, and I'm like, I think that guy exists one. now, the, the Ben Affleck character. I'm yeah. like, I, I, I'm pretty yeah, sure I know him. I think you might. I think yeah. you might have met him. I think I might have met him here, too. I think there, uh, there's a bunch. There was a bunch. Yesterday, I was like, why are you, I keep asking you where you live, and you don't say where you live. <laughs> yeah, here, there, everywhere. Exactly, and I was like, I don't trust you. Are you a spy, or are you a murderer? What's, I don't, I, I'm very afraid now. He was like, I own half the world. I was like, I, 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 I believe you. Poker player would be a great cover for a spy, for sure. Yeah, exactly. Maybe not an actor poker player, but just no. like an actual poker player. As soon as we stop talking, they stop talking. That's, That's great. Perfect. That's fantastic. Perfect. Thank you. That's how you can tell it's live. <laughs> So Rick Bleakley is one of the Platinum Pass winners at this table. It's been folded to him in the small blind. He is all in, presented with the red triangle of death. Now, this guy is a huge celebrity in Spain. Elias Gutierrez, a.k.a. Theros. I think the fact that COVID happened and pushed it back four years. He folds. Have to do this every year. It doesn't become special. It's pretty. I mean... Yeah. Numbers will start to drop. If sure, if, if they just get 800 play or 25k every year, although I think that's still pretty special, <laughs> even if it's not yeah, 1100. It's more of it by not doing it annually. Yeah. 620 like, players remaining, 1011 total entries so far. Registration still open for another one hour and 12 minutes. I'm not going to get back in. <laughs> I'm just not. We've, uh, I just don't have it in me. <laughs> Plus, I have to go back at the table. This is a freeze out anyway. Uh, I know, exactly. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'm not going to go in disguise. I think we went over this probably well, on the podcast, yeah, but just for the also, audience. Yeah. They What's your history with poker? Are you as new to it as you act like you are? No. It no. makes okay. sense because like, um, well, you may remember really wise, right? you go, the last like, Poker Stars the tournament that I was in. You won it. That's won. right. We should give you some credit for so, that. So, so I'm. As like players, oh, right. The at, that's 500. Less, my, my, my batting average is 500. I won one. And then I lost one win, one the loss. Yeah. So I feel like I can retire really and be in the Hall of Fame. Yeah, that's because at this point. That is all time. I mean, I killed it. I mean, I went out on the first day. but So Gina Reem went out before I did. So, you know what I'm saying? There's absolutely no shame going out on the first day. And yeah. for, no matter how good a poker player, or how many hours you're on that feature table, correct. No matter how the fact that you're you're juggling two different identities and trying to help your fellow fellows in the booth here come up with anything to say, we'll have plenty. No, I know, I know you had plenty. There's, there's, it's endless. It's endless. It's just, it keeps coming forward. So the guy who's raised here, David, Patrick Chambers, Tell again, me about he's him. a platinum pass winner. Okay. Now he's known online as Dat Paddy. So. Okay. On Twitch, the streaming platform, he moderates for a couple of oh. our streamers, for right. Spraggy and Tonka. Oh. So he's yeah, very maybe, right, maybe beloved the other, in the Twitch community. Looks like and he's he got a nice stack. He's the chip leader at this table. He's got like more than around 120K. But yes, there's a lot of support for him right now. Well, I'm all for that. Yeah. It's kind of like if a production assistant ended up with a speaking role. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> It happens. We were like, that's yeah, cool. Good you for you. Your, yeah, you yeah. did a great job, if buddy. You got Let's your side go. card. If you got your side card, right. you can get in there. The good thing about Bamas is that you make sure the... Oh, I met him last night. <laughs> well, he's <laughs> made it to the flop, the top pair, top <laughs> kicker, and Reddy Patur, who defended his big blind, has nothing. He replaced some Aelkins with Asians as you move more east, more west, more Aelkins. Shoot him a then, that opens up. Now we're talking... And we were saying earlier, this guy, Pator, shows up on our live streams every once in a while. He is an action player. He is very aggressive, constantly betting I mean, ships. Traveling yeah. to places I haven't been for poker is a little lame. I Unfortunately for him, he's run day. into top pair, top kicker. <laughs> My God, yeah, I'm, gonna go. I'm so excited to check out the Bahamas. 
The casino is really nice. Yeah. <laughs> well, the Bahamas is less of an issue because all you're really doing in the Bahamas anyway is going to the beach. Yeah. Oh. Going to like a cool European city and then never checking it out. Continuation yeah. better of 4K course, that, like, from that you know, paddy. To, to Berlin and you don't leave the yeah. hotel inside. Yeah. Ideally, if I can find a day off, I like it, but... But then so I think I'm right in saying that there was a, a competition. It was a raffle that was conducted. All of the moderators who look uh, after our streamers, now, who look after our channels, um, were in that draw, and it was Dat Paddy's name who was drawn. Mm. Was this the one Nick did? Yes. Cool. Very cool. Yeah, it's a pretty unique event. We get folks like you, David, to come in, and also we get opportunities for people that the rest of the year are, like, busting their humps, working yeah, yeah. really hard, and they're like, hey, you want to play a $25,000 uh, tournament? People cry. It's, it's, no, that's fantastic. Yeah. New York, those no. I, I did a lot of crying oh, last night, <laughs> interestingly <laughs> enough. So, see, look, that's what I'm talking about. Batura yeah, called that bet again. with Jack yeah, Six. I mean, that's. It's okay. they don't, he's going to need to look in the hit on the on the turn. Uh, another yeah. straight card. <laughs> no, 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 another heart. Oh. Missed them both. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't think they uh, look so for them. The, the thing is, he can't even really rep anything right now by bluffing, but that's never stopped him before. If it comes a club on the. Yes, if the river's a club, he can. The smaller games get busted, the bigger games don't have the cash. So yeah, yeah, yeah. He, so if there's no cash, the cops. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Was he the big blind in this? Pato, yes. I was there. I was there, in the place where they came. The police came and they made. A so checks a second time, and I don't see any reason, Joe, why Chambers should stop betting here. There was another barrel, please. Place shut down by the police because they were playing a home game. Yeah, yeah. The police said there were millions of dollars uh, there being played. Because of the team. Millions of dollars. Oh. Uh, but it was just like some... Like, but they didn't know. Because yeah, yeah. they are incompetent. Tournament value. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Paddy is against the big blind, right? So he is going to have yeah. some fives. Okay, okay. Well, he checks it back. Barry Greenstein makes an appearance. Ace on the river. What you read, right? Giving because Chambers yeah, yeah. top two. You, are, you have inside info. Yeah, and you remember they were saying, yeah. Gambling gets coupled uh, very poorly in mainstream. Like, they'll, they'll say something. They'll be like, so-and-so is like a high-stakes poker player. Or, Played buy-ins up to like two thousand dollars or something, and you're like, "Well, <laughs> that's not really." A <laughs> well, like I remember. In Spain, you cannot. I get the impression that Patur is about to do something casino, funky. Even if it's he always does. But you can't play but online, not, right? Not, uh, you can't. But you, you can't play like GG in Spain, right? No, no. Play no. money. Yeah, yeah. But you cannot play live. Like you cannot play in. All a, he can really a rep is a five. Even if it's with. With peace. Oh, okay. Like they can, I guess yeah, yeah. they can be. That's super, that's Deuce three made a straight on the end, but even that's even a hand folks are gonna fold in the big blind. I mean, it's super crazy. Yeah. Does he know it's his turn? Maybe he's just enjoying the stare down. Well, they're trying to goes very slow in Japan, so that's a good thing. They've been trying to build casinos Here we go. for a while, right? Isn't that like so we've got seventeen and a half thousand in the middle, and that is an overbet okay. from so the Was now. that a snap like call? A snap call. Nice one, Dat Patty. And Patur elects to muck, which means Dat Patty wins the hand yeah. uncontested. Whoops. Mm. This one. Yeah. I want. I haven't. Japan's probably number one. Patrick Chambers closing in on the 150k mark. Nearly a hundred big blinds. Blinds will be going up though in about five minutes' time. So yes. Yeah, so Seems getting awesome. back to the the last time I was uh, in to play with the Stars Coffer action, and it was an incredible experience for me. I was so excited to win and beat those professionals and all the other and fancy, a bunch of your co all the really fancy celebrities yeah. and some co-workers. It was awesome. <laughs> so awesome. Who did you end up heads um, up with? Was it Casey Affleck? No, it was it was it was a some uh, I think a Brazilian football player. Oh yeah, I don't know who exactly. It was. I'm not. A, we're not sports guys. <laughs> we're nerds. Uh, but it was fours against Ace King. And you want to And the fours held. Very good. Um, it was it was an incredible. And also because I got to donate the money, it felt even, I was I was saying to somebody it would be like if I had one thousand a hundred thousand bucks like, in the middle of pandemic, you would have been like. Big deal. That's yeah. kind of, <laughs> kind of gross. You'd be like, no, but I want it, and I, I, we got to give it to World Central Kitchen, which is an awesome organization, and I think they do amazing work. And um, I was so happy to 
Because I got I got exactly what I wanted. Like, yeah, I got I mean, to be. You got the glory. You got the glory. You got to be, yeah. I got to be in the nice Hall of Fame, person. the Poker yeah. Stars Hall of Fame, because I'm only, if I play in another one, it's gonna have to, I'm going to have to cash. I'm going to have to cash if I'm going to keep my batting average up. We've got a new player at the feature table. Dae Wong Song has just arrived on the main stage. By the way, the one TV show that didn't come up until yeah. I raised oh, it. Oh, thank you. It's better call Saul. I know oh. it's part of the Breaking Bad nice. universe. Yeah, sure. But obviously, you got to return. I got to return. I got to do some more singing. And there are, generally speaking, in TV rules, right, spin offs rarely work. Mm -hmm. Where you take someone who is maybe not the main character, but a side right. character, and try Love. to make them the center sure. of the show, and prequels. Mm -hmm. Somehow, yeah, right? both those rules get broken because it was magnificent. Those guys are incredible writers. They're amazing. They're amazing writers. I mean, Vince and Peter, they were just... It was too good. We end up, despite the fact that we do a poker stream and mm -hmm. poker podcast, we end up spending an inordinate amount of time talking about Better Call Saul the last few years. <laughs> Is that right? And billions. I mean, for some reason, we just have our things that we hit. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Yeah. I mean, I, I was saying... Even before the last season, I think, you know, Better Call Saul was like the Godfather Part 2 mm. to, to Breaking Bad in yeah. terms of kind of like, and that was before I knew it was going to have a similar narrative structure in right. since it was going to be part prequel and part sequel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Plus, you just wanted to, you didn't want that, that world to die. You didn't want to see, visually, you didn't want, you didn't want those characters to go away, you didn't want San Carlo or, um, you know. All those guys. I, I mean, so are you, uh, are you allowed to US, A, right? US B, and other things besides yeah. billions right yeah. now? And US can you tell us about any of them? Uh, yeah, I, would, I did um, I did two things yeah, over the break. We had about a nine month break um, between last season and this season. We're right in the middle yeah. of no, 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 I, I, it shooting both, the seventh right? season I, right now. And it was, US, I just US happened to be like off this week, which was fantastic. Cool. So I could come here. Yeah. I did make a deal with my producer that if I said, look, and, and, and it's and not going to happen, it's not likely that it's going to happen, but if I have to work on Friday, I might be at the final table. And she said, if you're at the final table, you can have off. We could have worked out a deal where you use the footage in the show and just write it in. It's Exactly. I should have called Koppelman and been like, listen, <laughs> he went off the reservation and he just decided to go get into a, a five-day tournament. Um, well, Wags, could, Wags just walks away from the five million that he wins at the end of the PSPC. He's like, exactly. ah, that's too either. much trouble bringing it through exactly. customs. <laughs> I can't carry all that. Forget <laughs> it. Um, uh, so, yeah, so I'm, I just, this past year, I did Waco 2, which was, they did the, there was about four years ago, there was a Branch Davidian show on Paramount+. Plus. And now they're bringing back the trial, and I play, oh, I play wow. the judge on the trial. Cool. Um, and then there's a new show called war, Obliterated, huh? to to which war, I play a, bit, a super bad guy. A bad guy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, what else? Yeah, yeah. I'm glad we're doing this interview now. <laughs> I play a super bad guy. Super, super. Really? Bad. Yeah. He's super bad. Um, so those are two of the things that'll be out, and then Billions, I think, comes out. Mm -hmm. I don't really know the answer. Okay, that. that's all right. Um, at some point, it will come out soon. The it information is readily than, available. It's got to be days. on the. It's yeah. got to be on that supercomputer you've got there. I'm sure it's. I'm sure it's in there somewhere. I'm sure someone on the stream will tell us when it's. Talk to me about playing a bad guy because we uh, we spoke with Michael Sarah once. He plays the bad guy in Molly's game. Yes. And I was like, is it hard to play a bad guy? He's like, no, it's really fun. It's the best. It's the best. And and I would say in billions, what's great about it is there are no weapons. Right. Because when the weapons come out, you know that you're going to die. Right. Because the only real thing that happens to bad guys is that they get killed. So, the only come up is, yeah. Yeah. So I play Wags. There's no, there's no guns. Wags isn't. Nobody's going to shoot Wags. You don't want that guy to die. Wags is not going to die, but Wags could go to jail? I mean, sure. But Wags sure, also but isn't a bad guy. When you're well, in jail, Wags there's telephones. Hooker with the heart of gold. Exactly. Like, yeah. Exactly. There's no come up exactly. necessary for that. Yeah, Wags. you know what? No, he's gonna get. He keeps getting his, and then he'll get more. Right. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah. He uh, <laughs> reminds me. I don't know why it reminded me of this when you were saying like what are the, your favorite lines. When, when at one point I, I I it was early in the season, and he says like, I'm gonna send you somewhere, and I said please don't send me to rehab. Oh no. <laughs> That's what he says. And Wags says he looks at him. He's like don't send me to rehab. <laughs> 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 because he's like the last three times it didn't work. Um, Sorry, you're in the midst. No, I, was, I, I want to get back to this because yeah, uh, sure. I have a, a wax related <laughs> question I wanted to ask. But I just yeah, this is a real fact hand here. That we've had Chris Brewer open under the gun with Ace Queen. Leo Margetz has just re raised with tens. King Queen for Song, but with a raise and a re raise in front of you, it's not even suited. Just nah. 
But it's good to give it a think. He had like 45 to start. So Brewer, I guess, yeah. deciding whether he really wants to take this race, whether he wants to cool. shove on Leo and flip that coin. Or just call. Interesting. Multiple options are always available. The flop is queen mm. four four. Mm. So Brewer with the advantage. So one of the reasons you try to maybe get it all in mm -hmm. there with ace queen is so that when this queen hits, you get all the money mm -hmm. instead of mm -hmm. Leo yeah, I see that. I will see be able that. to get away now. Yeah. She leads out and then can make her even shorter. Well, I feel like I've been in this situation. <laughs> <laughs> Featured table. Yeah. No, nope, I understand it now. It does make it so much clearer when you see the card. I'm not sure if you've watched it yet, but you'll see. I have was, yet to watch. There what wasn't. I, which one was there? There wasn't anything that you could have done in all of What did he have when I had the nines? You remember? You're up against ace king and ace jack. Mm. And when I had the queens, he had ace queen, ace jack. That one I don't remember if I was in there for or not for that one. Mm. Fives, you're up against five. Oh, oh yeah, they had, had a set of fives set. on you. Yeah, sure, perfect. Discipline fold. That was a good fold. That was a really good fold. Brutal. Though. There was an ace on the flop too, though, there was right? An ace, yeah, yeah. Sure, that was like he's got some shitty ace. Ace five, which literally came all last week and has clearly come all this week. It's certainly on the feature table. Oh, yeah. I don't know why. What did you call it? Sourdough starter? Artisanal <laughs> sourdough. <laughs> Artisanal so sourdough. the story is that yes. there are trends in poker, right? Some yeah, things yeah. become very trendy. And ace five suited became the trendy hand. Yes. Everyone started getting tricky yeah, with yeah, and yeah, re-raising. Yeah. And because it happened this. during lockdown, yeah. do you remember there was the whole trend yeah, yeah, of yeah, yeah, making yeah, sourdough? Yes. So ace five was like sourdough. It was very much in vogue at the sure. time. It was the, the trend of the I time. I do remember this. Yeah. And because suited is better than unsuited, sure. artisanal rather than uh, store nice. sourdough, I like right? that. By the way, I've got uh, Adam Levy in chat telling me that the call preflop is always a call. It's never, oh. never a shove, so. So I'm assuming that Brewer's going to try and go for value here and might get paid, depending on his sizing. All in. It's a pretty tough call at this point. But Brewer, remember, um, River shoved against the short stack very early in the day with a total air ball. But obviously, this is a little bit different situation. Brewer opening under the gun. Gets to the test. It is all in to call. If she does call, if she does hero, she's out. A lot of chat pros in there. Upset over this bet sizing should have been smaller. Yes, when we see that Leo only has pocket tens, we know that a smaller bet's more likely to get called. Brewer doesn't know that. Also, by shoving, you can make this look weak. Couldn't the same have been said of pre flop? A weak shove. Yes, but it, it is them. kind of Just pre flop. You don't, you don't even have a pair. You won't get called by a worse hand if you call if you shove pre flop. So she has yeah. folded. <laughs> Thirty minutes. She'll see that it was a good lay down. Nice lay down. Leo Marquette will be left with a twenty big blind stack. Now I am afraid I have bad news for Team France. Although arguably there's a silver lining for our other French commentator. Julien Bracard mm. is eliminated, so it's back to the booth with Benny for you. And quickly back to the subject of Billings. I know you've got to go in a moment, yep. David, but we did admire your sartorial choice yesterday. We did feel that the blue jacket was very wags, and that got me thinking, 
do you have access to wardrobe and props? Because there was the episode where they priced everything up. You guys were sure, wearing. Yes. Like, do you get to keep those jackets, those watches, those shoes, those? No, no. <laughs> but I will tell you, at the end of last last season, I think they did like a. Uh, a sale, like a fire sale of the first four seasons, so I could go back and buy all the tailored suits, the tailored jackets that were just nice. tailored to me. But then the pandemic came, and I was like, I can't film this. Wait, mm. wait a second, <laughs> we gotta retailer this thing. We I gotta can't retailer this I thing. Can't button my, my I can't, suit that I, I wear. I, I can't button anymore. my suit. Can we, can, we, can we have this redone? It's weird that everyone's <clears throat> clothes shrank at the same That's time. That's really super strange. It was part of the virus, so. Nobody, nobody knew that that was happening. And finally, before we let you go, because this has been the most frequently asked question from oh, the audience, right. both mm -hmm. on Twitch and mm -hmm. YouTube, what was it like working on The Wire, which many still consider to be the greatest TV show of all time? I mean, I will tell you, I had when I got the gig, uh, I had not watched the show, and then when I got there, I started to panic, and started binge like watched the show in a fever dream, and got was so glad I had done, by that point, I had done like three or four episodes, and I, I was like, oh, okay, I'm okay, I'm okay. And, but I was, basically, if I had watched before, I would have been in a total blind panic, because the writers are so incredible, the actors are so amazing, and you're just like, I, I wouldn't have been able to function, I wouldn't have been able to go to work, I would have been like, I, you, you chose wrong, I can't be here, I can't, you're not, I'm not good enough to be a, like Michael K. Williams, I can't, I can't tie, I, I mean, I can tie his shoes, I'm happy to tie his shoes for him if he needs shoe tying, um, make a great but also Starbucks even, run. yeah, exactly, I could do that every day, uh, and David Simon is just, he's, what a hero, he's incredible, Love that guy. I will tell you the funny story, the very first day that we were shooting, and it was, it was a scene in the Baltimore Sun, and it was like a three-page scene, and I had all this journalism gobbledygook and I didn't know what the hell I was saying and, and I, it was like me leading the meeting and it was like the the five o'clock meeting and which when they decide what's going to be in the paper and like so so we come in and they're shooting from a mile away and there's a long lens and they're shooting this long continuous thing and we shoot like the first three pages we shoot all the whole scene we get through the whole thing and I'm just like oh yeah I did it and the script supervisor comes up to me and she's like I'm sorry on page two, this page you changed this to that it's this, not that. And I was like, I changed this to that, and you want me to ch change that back? And she's like, yeah. Like literally the words, literally this, this to that. To that. Okay. And I was like, this paper, or this, or like that paper. And she's like, it's this, it's not that. And I was like, oh my God, oh my <laughs> God, you are kidding me. I just did three pages and the camera's a mile, you can't even see us. You can't see what the hell I'm saying, you can't see me, I'm like this big. And so the, they're like, oh, we're in action, we gotta do it again. And this, it's coming at you. It's like you can see the words coming at you. Is it this, is it that, is it this, is it that, is it this, is that, this. And you're just like, them, they're like, did I get it right? She's like, you got it right. So terrifying. And this is in the first day. Was, she ever just asked, like, who is this note coming from? Is this from you? or? I mean, no. I, mean, so she, I was like, really? You guys are that strong? She was like, yeah, it's word perfect. I was like, all right. Okay. Nice. It's, it's the way. And then, you know, when David Simon's right again, it's word perfect. You gotta, they're good words. You want to keep them all. Very well, just saying anything. David, it's so awesome to speak to you again. And Absolutely. thank you so much for dropping by the booth. And ultimately, thank you for coming to the Bahamas and playing the PSPC. It was so fun. And again, thank you for treating me so kindly. I get to watch later all of my errors and you guys I'm sure were very kindly being like you might have chosen something different that's about accurate yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> maybe you could have chosen this differently next time it would be like it, I will, it, was I will. Just, it was really a this or that thing it was a this exactly yeah. <laughs> I kept choosing that and you've been like ah, I think it's this and be like if if the next time I mean I'm all for the ear feed like if you want to just feed me things to say and no, like, no 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 <laughs> absolutely not <laughs> huge thanks to David Costabile Great to have him here at the PSPC. As we continue the action on day two. Now playing level 10. Blind's currently 1,000, 2,000 with a 2K big blind ante. And registration is going to close inside of the next 50 minutes. Inside of the next hour, actually, because I guess the break, Joe, is also included in that late reg time. So we have gone three way to this flop and Scott Baumstein has flopped best with a pair of aces. Nada for Dat Paddy. Chris Brewer with the snowmans, num num. Well, I hope you enjoyed that section of the show, guys. I know there's a few people who are like, 
oh, just commentate on the poker. We're doing like hour after hour after hour of coverage. I think if we take a short break from calling the action and you guys follow the graphics so we can talk to a Hollywood star, that's okay. It's about opportunity, right? We get 30 minutes to chat with someone that we'd never normally get a chance to chat with. Deal with it. There's only, what, 40 more hours of poker this week? 50? <laughs> They're just jealous, by the way. What a charmer. What a, char what a delightful man. 100%. And who does that kind of research to come in and watch our stuff beforehand? Maybe we can count on David's vote in the Global Poker Awards. Because in case you haven't heard, guys, we are up for favorite live stream. And for your consideration... EPT Live is on the ballot. If you go to globalpokerindex.com slash awards, you will be able to vote in this category. We would very much appreciate your support. And again, we're not asking you to fan the flames of mine or Joe's egos. This is about the work of everyone who puts on these live streams, every single facet of the production. A huge crew who work very long hours are really dedicated to this game to these productions for them, if not for me. Vote. <laughs> this, you're voting for this. You're voting for what you see with your eyes here. You're voting for what you hear. The, the player mics, all of this, the conversation, all of this is stuff that, in my opinion, we do incredibly well. And everyone here, by the way, We've got another all in. Everyone here cares so much about putting out the best product possible. It's honestly annoying because I would prefer to do it good enough. It looks like it's Rick Bleakley who's all in here. I think it was an opening raise from Elias Gutierrez. There is Theros rather opening under the gun. And then the shove from Rick, which elicits a fold from Theros. Thank you to Sean. I voted with my three personal emails oh, and my two oh, work good. emails. I don't, I don't condone that. I don't. I do. I don't condone. <laughs> don't hate the player. Hate Look, the game. To be fair, it says in the rules, it's one vote per email address per IP address. So, so we can vote in the Bahamas. We can vote back in London. I we can mean, vote when we get to Paris. I'm, <laughs> I'm a bit of a Boy Scout when it comes to stuff like that. Just going to throw it out there. This is not a presidential election. <laughs> it's way more secure. Just kidding. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> what I would for this. Me personally, I'd... But to her with I kings. Million more than the race is under the gun. <laughs> I could see, if you had a platinum pass, like, it's gonna be and four, you felt like... Four million. Do Platinum Pass have to stall from the beginning, or can they just, they can just, there's a lot of reason if someone just was like... I'm not going to rip on this person because uh, like it's it important, like but Sorla Saw says, which one of you guys, I'm not seeing poker stars. Our live stream is, it's a little confusing, we're at the PS, PCA here, and so um, it's UPT Live. EPT Live is the overall name of this. To be fair... Yeah, yeah. These are the awards for 2022, right? right. So and all the streams like, that we did in 2022 yeah, were from the like, EPT. Like, like Prague in March, Monte Carlo money. in the spring, uh, yeah. Barcelona in the summer, London in the autumn, and Prague again Wait. just before Christmas. <laughs> I also am not really well, sure why life, the W Coop live streams, the Scoop live streams, the Sunday Million live streams aren't necessarily. I don't know if they need a separate yeah, then, nomination like, for that or whatever it is, but. Oh, in life. Uh, certainly those are very good, well-produced streams as well. All diamond flop, but tour with kings, which are good, but he also is the king of diamonds. Everything has an opportunity cost. I think it would be 
more of a catch-all call, and I agree with you. If it just was Poker Stars live streams in general, we don't control any of this, by the way. Yeah. I, I, it's okay. I, it's still, every time I look at it, it tilts me that it's fave live stream rather than favorite live stream. But it is. It is an impossible job to run those awards, and so I do not I give. I, I, I have some things that I question, but I those guys are great. I have no complaints. And ultimately, again, it comes from a good place. We know Eric really well, yeah, and we uh, had Eric on the podcast last stuff. year to talk How about the Global Poker Awards. Their ambition well, we is to shine a spotlight on poker, everything that's happening like in the poker one. industry, all the good like stuff that's happening just, just across events, game, across like content like creation, and of course, like, nothing's ever going to be perfect. Correct. But ultimately, these guys really want to do the best job they can. You would never play the main event again, and then the other one is never play poker again. The never play poker. Any poker. Any. That one. That one becomes like most of us agreed that like it had to be something like absolutely absurd because it's just like enjoyable. It would suck to never be able to play. <laughs> it's a fun game. <laughs> Can you say no? To, uh... I mean, there's obviously a number. If someone was just like heals 50 million to I'm never play poker again, I'd be like, all right, I, I guess. You don't need any I'm, in, I'm into you chess now. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's that's the other thing. All this stuff that's well, like. David Costabile has vacated a seat that has just been occupied by Nick Walsh. Like, hello, hello. Sorry about that, guys. I was supposed to be on a little bit earlier. I was chatting to David. Got a little bit starstruck there for a minute. Sorry, James. That's okay. <laughs> James kept peering over the monitors like, oh, I think it's your turn, Nick. I'm sorry about that. We're here. We're back. Sorry. Uh, yeah, I mean, guys seems to have a real passion for poker, though. That's that's amazing. Well, look, I don't know. You, you I'm like getting kind of like slightly tired uh, of trotting out the same line, but I say it because I mean it. So the <laughs> entire <laughs> poker community yeah, is yeah, represented like, in an know. event like this. At all into a, a star I like David, Nothing. Like you cannot amateur players, the, professional players, every can, single country yeah, yeah. in the world. I know, it's it's so all walks of life, all nations. That is what I love about the PSPC. Yeah, no, yeah, absolutely. Think, and uh, what a treat, you know. Always, um, I've always felt like stuff. That, like, <laughs> again, having a day one and a day two, a treat in itself yeah, just to it get to watch high, poker right? at a much greater stack or depth. Um, already, we've I mean, seen a lot of really interesting plays from some of the best I, players I, I in the world. Have, these little subtle things, things I've been talking about, James, these yeah. little yeah. moments where they're winning a little bit more and Everything. really nice to be in the commentator yeah. seat and to be able to point those out and, you know, bring that to people's attention where there's lots of edge to be to be additionally made in their future games. Just very quickly, Jory on YouTube says, so this Nick guy's arrived. Who did he play in the wire? I mean, this is the problem, right? You set, you, you, you set the bar high. Uh, as Gutierrez moves all in with ace nine. So limp, raise, shove. That that's the action we're looking stuff, at like, here. If you had to pay me to like, even like this result, which is super nice, and like if I was allowed to be outside, but I couldn't leave the result area, you'd still just have to pay me so much because it just sounds so awful. The irony is, Nick, this hand looks stronger well, than Ace Nine to me. Yeah. If I'm Patur, I'm like, no, nope. run away, yeah. run away. Yeah. Absolutely. That every time I look back on is it, is that like, Rick yeah, Bleakley? It. it is. <laughs> One of our hashtag Team Dublin. For how long? A year. A year. You just live in valleys. Uh, team time. Ireland, I should say. I, I, I mean, I technically Team Dublin as well, I suppose, but uh, I guess that's not the official branding. Yeah. Oh, it's so hard for him to call here. here. I think yeah, Ace Knight has done a really good job to uh, to make the, make the move. Definitely a gamble hand. Definitely a gamble hand. Yeah, a bad gamble. I was stuck in the valleys for you. Not too bad, though. You just have to pass time. So I'd be like, I guess I'm going to the gym. Like the jail. Like if if we ever get in jail, I think I'll get super in jail. Yeah. But yeah, so I hold uh, Too bad. the guy that did the bathroom bet. He just was doing like. He pulled down. He paid to. Stop well, yeah, yeah, yeah. But the, he was. I hold he was doing something like crazy. Like he was doing like 300 push ups a day because he would just get bored. And he was just like, I got to entertain myself. So you just do push ups or whatever. Meditation, probably to not wanting to I don't know. yourself. <laughs> to, uh, yeah. I don't know if you know Rich. That guy loves. Oh, you know he that guy loves money so much. I, I think he was just smiling the entire... Yeah, yeah, exactly. Here, He's here. just smiling the entire time. He's just like, money, 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 money. <laughs> Probably he doesn't need that money that much. I have no clue. I just... He's the type... He's... When I hold, he was the one taking the bat. I was like, I want his side. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> oh, you were sure he was. I heard he had like a room. You like, uh, like heard the yeah. gardeners outside. So yeah, yeah. The, the day changes and stuff. I was positive I'd want his side. Huck Seed, when he hold about the bet, had a really funny comment. Huck Seed was like, 
I'll do it for twice as long and only eat cockroaches. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but am I wrong? You didn't finish the bed, right? Uh, it was a buyout. Yeah, uh, it was him and Roy did it, and Roy bought out, I think. They agreed. Yeah. yeah. Okay, uh, I feel like this has gone on a bit too long now, James. Clock! <laughs> Can we get a clock, please? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, definitely not something that's just... Like, anytime you have to bet against somebody's just desire to make money. Like, Come on, that's a fold. Like By now, that's like a fold. When people do, Don't like, try and shoot an angle. Just fold your blooming cards already. Oh, like, come on, bro. Too, yeah, if it's just... Anytime it's something you can't like, check and fold at the same time. You win, Stop you checking. <laughs> I did. I'll have to wait 30 more minutes to find out. I, <laughs> I, I thought you were trying to see my yeah, I, my eyes. Chances <laughs> are, if you have a six, you oh. probably made the right fold. Yeah, you know, those suited aces, they can be interesting in those situations. But I think you knew it was a fold. I mean, at this stage in the tournament as well, I think the Neville played the main doesn't really feel like a spot. So we are at the 1,000, yeah. 2,000 blind play, level. Yeah, Still have 38 minutes left on the clock. Once yeah, this yeah, level finishes, we'll hit the first break of the day. Yeah, yeah. And during we that break or towards the end of that yeah. break, the oh, tournament like staff special. will close registrations oh, yeah. and we'll have the final numbers. The prize pool will be confirmed. The payouts will be confirmed a bit later on today. It is our intention to play into the money on day three. And that's why the duration of today is flexible. If it looks like we're getting Getting close to the money, we may finish play early tonight. That's right. Can't look at your phone. Save them bubbles for tomorrow. Well, and just like can't read a menu. Yeah, yeah, that'd be terrible. Can't read a traffic sign. It's gonna die. My man Rick. Even if it was just like makes the fold. Even if it was like I could read stuff, like I could read traffic signs. De España. Just read a news article. I would still King six suited. And Theros is going to raise the button, makes it 4,000. Uh, yeah, yeah. But I think it would be super tough. I think I'll keep poker if I never can read anything. You cannot get information. I mean, you I, I, I live to just go on Wikipedia dives and randomly learn about, like, the history of Star Wars or something, so. Well, you, you, can, <laughs> you can pay someone to... <laughs> to tell me about it. I have to listen to audio tapes. I hate audio no, tapes. But you, you pay an assistant <laughs> that Googles for you and, and explains. <laughs> <laughs> so, so far, has Pitur been taking extended amounts of times like this so far? James? I hadn't noticed, to be honest. This is the I second hand where I'm kind of like, I, I, I'm dude, not so <laughs> please. Yeah, yeah I like so Pitur here with approximately I always, I do about 20, big, 20 bigs, something like that. The table and whatnot, but whenever these trips are done, I'm always just so exhausted of everyone. <laughs> For me, it's very similar. Like, I... I recharge by myself. Like yeah. I, I, I enjoy a certain amount of social life. All right, he's going to make the push with the 7.5 suited. He did take a little bit more time on that one, yeah, but does like, find the spot and does make the, the bluff effect, successfully. Done, like, the <laughs> and on, like, extra ball, extra ball, I always let my... Sleeping in the I'm chat says like, reasonable tank if he jams. Yeah, I actually think like, that's that is quite reasonable. Um, <laughs> I think 7.5 suited that. is and definitely much, much wider than one would expect, but probably is going to be borderline okay. Probably going to be borderline plus EV, I imagine, especially with the extra uh, dead money of the big blind ante. A lot of those sort of low suity connectors actually do fine as reshoves. Yeah, stuff like someone was like trying to get me to go to the playoffs, Baldy, and I was like, that that's not happening. I would say, I would argue that 7.5 suited yeah, yeah, yeah. has been so unconventional, like, but I, I think probably it. if you ran it, it would be it would be not as crazy as one might think. Obviously going to get tons of folds from the button open there, so that's where the majority of the value comes from when you're about 20 effective. Bleakley in the hijack. Colin asking, is he a platinum pass winner? Pateur? No. As we've established, he is a player we often see in our live events. Has made a few trips across the Atlantic to play on the EPT. Seen him a couple of times in Barcelona. And Scott Baumstein is going to defend his big blind here. 
with threes. Now, Scott Belmstein is a platinum pass winner. He is a very proficient pro. He made the final table of the last PSPC, finishing fourth, but managed to win a platinum pass in a live event in Florida back in 2019. So he's been waiting a long time for this. It's like a raisin to take it, James. Raisin take it for Thelos. So we'll look at the stacks of the players who are at our current feature table. I can tell you that Dat Paddy, Patrick Chambers, is chip leader with 140k. <laughs> Look at the stacks of the other players. No one has 50 bigs right now. And we have got a couple of shorties. Rick Bleakley with 18 big blinds. Leo Margetz with 13 big blinds. I'm going to call it. Leo Margetz is in the danger zone. Danger zone! Has Joe done the whatever Leo wants, Leo Margetz yet? We've managed to get through an hour and 27 minutes without that, Nick, but thank you for your contribution. I've done it. I've done it now. He can't do it now. I mean, we've seen Leo with 13 big blinds before, and she's spinneroo. I believe she had a really nice spin up in Barcelona, if I remember correctly, in a similar spot. Obviously, we're still considerably outside of the bubble. Still a long way to go. My fingers are crossed for her. Speaking of Leo Margetz, Ace King off on the button. Nice. Very nice. And obviously with 13 bigs here, she might be tempted just to push with the offsuit Ace King. Ace King suited might be the min raise and Ace King off might be the push. Still get called by worse here when you jam. It's not like you're not going to get paid once in a while, but for the most part, Ace King suited has infinitely player better playability than their its offsuit uh, counterpart. Therefore, you're just going to try and balance it that way. Scott Baumstein, Queen Jack in the small blind, yeah. folds. Easy fold in the small blind for sure. And 10-9 in the big also folds. Nick, I need your help. Yeah. Glenn Cortinas on YouTube writes, quite a few of us around the world are having lunch, breakfast for dinner and do not appreciate the tournament references. Thanks. What? The tournament... Um... Thank you for your comment. I'm so confused. That's not even a copy and paste job. That's not even going to end up on the Twitter. I just don't even know what it means. Also, having lunch, breakfast for dinner? <laughs> Is that like all three meals combined? <laughs> All mixed up in a bucket yeah, you know, with like, the eggs on top? You know restaurants that do like all day breakfast? What if it's a place that does like all day lunch for breakfast? <laughs> 4.5. Have you had your breakfast lunch today? That patty is opened under the gun with King Jack. Steelhammer says, how many people are in this tournament? Sorry, I can't make any references to the tournament because someone's having lunch, breakfast for dinner right now. Stop making references. All right, Patur in the hijack. I think, you know, it's uh, Jack Nine suited, obviously, and that has uh, probably greater value the deeper you get there. Uh, jack Nine suit is a combo that you're going to play plenty, absolutely. Very playable, but um, I think when in the hijack with that stack depth, you just want to avoid the spot. There's still players behind to act who can put, some, put you in some really awkward squeeze spots, right? If Patur makes the call there with 26 bigs and the big blind decides he just he's just going to put in like a little squeeze three bet, you're just going to have to give up so often. It just becomes really, really ugly for you, especially when you're playing. Oh, my days. Why did he fold Jack Nine of clubs, James? He should have played it every single time. Results FTW, ace 10-3, it is crunchy, and Chambers has the nut flush draw. Can't believe Patur folded that, James. It's just obviously a clear mistake. I jest. 
Very unfortunate to see the three club crunchy flop. King Jack, King Jack with the king of clubs, absolutely massive here. Bet in a fold, seems good. So we've already established that Patrick Chambers is also known as Dat Paddy. Is one of the mods on Twitch. Moderates for that lanky git. And the guy who lives in his bathroom, Tonka. So if you want to see more of Dat Paddy hanging out with Tonka and Spraggy, you will see it just before the break in half an hour's time. I didn't realize, Nick, that that is literally the first time they'd ever met. Okay, and if I can just if I can just point something out, it's really great that he went out to go meet, you know, Tonka and Spraggy. Isn't that beautiful? What about the guy that gave him his pass? I'm sitting right here. Where was my hug? I literally created a competition to give it away. Haven't even met the guy. Anyway, best of luck to Patty. Hope he goes deep. I'll link up with him later, hopefully. Crooks said I would have hugged you for what it's worth. Crooks was actually in the running for that same pass when I tried to give uh, my pass away to the uh, to the mods. I tried my best, distributed my pass to the people that support us every day. Couldn't even get a hug. Unbelievable, Patty. You have been called out, sir. Anyway, we got a hand brewing here. Ace Queen suited for Gutierrez. UTG plus one. Song has a very playable hand on the button. But serious question, how long has he been modding for those guys? Forever. And he's never met them before? I don't think so. Wow. Remind me to take Patty off the list of moderators that can win a pass next time, all right? Unbelievable behavior. Are you really that desperate for hugs, Nick? <laughs> you got to take them where you can get them. I mean, you know, money talks and talk. <laughs> Gutierrez has opened with ace, queen, and chambers. Three bets with jacks. And I don't know. We've seen a lot of these hands play through the streets rather than players getting it in. But now that Theros is 30 bigs effective, I kind of feel he might pull the trigger on this one. I think this is probably meant to be a call, James. But, I mean, it's not exactly a snapperoo. He's going to so far up there. I, I think it's more likely to be a shove. Uh, sorry, excuse me. That's exactly what I meant to say. Thank you, James. Well, interestingly, Theros does just call. And oh. flops a flush draw, flops the nut flush draw, and that paddy is only a 54% favorite. This is what I like to call a post-flop flip. Yeah, on second glance, I think I think it really it's close between the shove or the call, given the action was coming from uh, UTG plus one, so the range being a little bit tighter. 27K in the middle, Patty's going to go ahead and fire a bet of. Oh, and the stare down. Yeah, I think the chips are going in the middle here, guys. There's not really any way around it. There it is. There's the all in. All in from Theros. And the call from Dat Paddy. And the post flop flip will now play out. Gutierrez drawing to an ace, a queen, or a club.
Gutierrez is the at-risk player and he needs to hit to survive. Turn card. Is a queen. Oh, wow. Theros now with the advantage and just has to fade a jack on the river to double up through chambers. It's a four on the river. The pot gets shipped to Gutierrez. And Dat Paddy drops down the rankings, is now playing a sub 40 big blind stack. Gutierrez, meanwhile, nearly 75 big blinds. And I appreciate there's a lot of support for Dat Paddy on stream, but Spain just exploded. Yep, absolutely. Viva España. Especially after what happened to their boy in the PCA main event. Yeah. That double bust out where both he and Ramon went out in the same hand against the eventual winner, Dutani. Absolutely. Take a look at the chip counts here on our feature table. Gutierrez, after that double up, up to 146K. Now our feature table chip leader, Leo Margetz, 32.5K, representing about 16-ish big blinds. Both Margetts and Bleakley need to make something happen. Worth highlighting that the blinds will go up in 24 minutes' time. Yeah, I mean, obviously a hit for Patty. I think he plays his hand very well there. However, still chips behind. Still 36 bigs at this stage. Still a very playable stack. Just uh, take a deep breath. Regain the, uh, the control, the composure. And on to the next hand. Line level now, 1K, 2K with a 2K ante. Has been so for some time now. Just a reminder if you guys are joining us. Average stack currently 112,000 chips. So currently, only Gutierrez on this table is over average. All the other players under average on our feature table at the moment. Ace 10 suited for Baumstein. Going to go ahead and open it up from the hijack. Brewer on the button, King Queen off. Got about 43 big blinds, something in that region. Meanwhile, we've got Buffy Patton watching on YouTube, who's struggling to work out how to vote in the Global Poker Awards. Thank you very much to our mods for deploying the night bot. We've got a link running in the YouTube chat and in the Twitch chat as well. Click on that link and you should be able to register your vote. The category is Fave Livestream. We are EPT Live. That's what we broadcast throughout 2022 from every European poker to a stop. Very much appreciate your support if you think we are your favorite live stream. So Rick, one of our shortest stacks here, does call in the big blind as well. So a raise from the Ace-10 suited in two callers. King, Queen, High. Top two for Brewer now. Fresh off the flop, the top two. Straight draw for Bleakley, obviously has one of the shorter stacks. Might be tempted to do something here, James. Might be tempted to put in a little check raise. Try and sort of semi-bluff a decent draw. Does have the 10 of hearts as well, I suppose. Jesse says, not my favorite live stream, but you are my fave. In that case, it is appropriate that you vote. <laughs> Baumstein does find the continuation bet with the ace-10 suited. Goes about one-third pot. Brewer puts in the raise right off the bat. So 5K was the bet on the turn raises to 12,000. So actually not even a 3x re-raise here. And Bleakley just snaps it in. No messing around whatsoever. I think it's wow. it's always going in the middle here, obviously, not folding top two. Well, Rick Bleakley is going to need an ace or a nine. Or those running hearts. Immediate outs. He has seven of them. And there is the <laughs> nine of hearts. Oh, no. How about that? 
I mean, as far as turns go, that's pretty damn good. Now, Brewer has a redraw to a full house. A king or a queen on the river would seal the deal for him and would see Rick Bleakley eliminated, but it is a jack on the river. So Rick Bleakley, the platinum pass winner, gets the double up. Yeah, very unfortunate for Brewer there, but reading from my boy Bleakley, he realized that there was a lot of dead money out there and he was just not gonna get away from this one, decided to go with the variance. Obviously coming in behind, but decent equity. Nine of hearts, just about as good as it gets on the turn. Folding around. Uh, Brewer decides to open up the old tens from the cutoff. Folding to the big blind now. Gutierrez with a very, very pretty hand. Nine, seven of diamonds. I think this is going to be at least a call. I think the call is probably what you're going to do most frequently here. Makes the call, looking for some diamonds and some straighty cards. Pocket 10s obviously blocking that significantly, but it does come seven high. We will see some action in this pot. Gutierrez checks. Brewer probably with a continuation bet. So 11K in the pot. Puts in 4K. So Brewer with 44K behind. It's about 22 bigs. Probably too deep to check raise a hand like 9-7 here. Obviously, will be a situation where you're concerned about over cards, but I think calling is still the best course of action. I don't think you want to sort of quote unquote protect your hand with a check raise here right. because it gets a bit messy. Again, you can get jammed on by hands. You're still beating, like, you know, flush draws and straight draws and the like from these positions. Or raised again, at least. So a bet and a call. Three of clubs in the turn. Very, very clean. I think Brewer definitely needs to consider his options here. I think you're probably supposed to bet a second time here. Something at least over 60% to try and punish the draws. So 19K in the middle now. Brewer, the effective stack with 22 bigs. He has bet 15,000. Yep. This is reasonably committing. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, you're going to run into a three here once in a while, but you really want to punish those gut shots that will always call flop. The four fives, the hearts. And seven does make the call. He's getting plenty of value. Brewer kind of instantly looks down at his chip stack. He knows that, you know, he's got less than pot behind, considerably less than pot behind. Four of hearts, very, very interesting card. I think Gutierrez is just trying to get to showdown, James. I don't think this is a card he turns into a bluff. He has too much showdown. Sure enough, a check. Brewer might be tempted to check here as well, just given the fact that this is such a coordinated card. But if Gutierrez had the flush or the straight, surely he would lead this river. So he might still find value. He might still find the value bet given the action. I mean, a good player knows that once they've called two streets from these positions and it comes to four of hearts, if they have ace five, if they have five, six, if they have two hearts, this is a river where your opponent's going to slow down in position too frequently. Therefore, you need to lead at it. I just don't see many pros 
trapping with any of those rivered made hands here. So Brewer might still find the value. I really like that he's giving this some thought, though. I think this is uh, this is very cool. 29K, 49 in the middle. I think the only other move you can make is to be all in here if you're going to have any bet at all. If there's ever a moment to just go for all of it. That is not all in. Wow. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. We've got Brewer's stack wrong. It is a virtual all in, Nick. Okay. So it looks like he actually has 31, not 29. So he's actually bet 30 here, leaving himself 1K behind. I love to see this, James. I mean, I think when you're learning poker, you go, oh, I know what a bad river looks like. This is a bad river. Therefore, this is a spot where I play, play it safe. But, you know, when you're playing decent players, you just got to go, would he ever really try and trap me in such an obvious bad river situation? It just, it's just so hard to imagine him, you know, calling twice with a flush draw or calling twice with a flush draw on a straight draw or the like, and then getting there and then, you know, not trying to get the rest of the chips when it's so easily an all in. So I think going for more value here is really, really strong from Brewer. I really like how he played this hand. I think flop turn sizes were perfect. So just to clarify, Brewer's stack, 31,000. He's actually bet 30, not 28, and he has 1K behind. Yeah, the fact he makes this a virtual all-in is just really cute as well, James. Such an interesting spot to use this. 1Ks left. It's just BFH. Bus fare home. Bus fare home. Uh, is, is this a taxi bet, James? The official taxi bet? At least he gets a bendy bully. Oh, such a tough spot. The, the issue is, James, he's just got such a good price on the river here, but it, it for your opponent to fire three barrels of that size on this river, in particular the river better here, I think is just very telling. It's not impossible to call, but I think he's going to have a lot of strong hands here. I don't know. I get the impression there's a single chip call coming up. He's got it in his hand. Oh, so close to the middle. For the second time oh. today, clock. <laughs> Makes the call. Oh, wow. And that is practically a full double up for Chris Brewer. Tens are good. Uh, absolutely hats off to Brewer there. I think he played that hand fantastic. And I, like I said, it's a scary river, but when you put it all together, I think it is still the value bet. And he got almost max. Chris Brewer, now table chip leader with more than 100K. Still a below average stack. Average right now is 115,000. Brewer's got 106,000, so a pretty shallow feature table but we're going to step out and head into one of the outer tables richard seymour three-time super bowl winner nfl hall of famer in a hand against blas sejav we join this hand on the turn and richard seymour has bet 6500 the board is ace 10 8 4 with three hearts sejav calls the 6.5K, and the river card is the eight of clubs pairing the board. Mm -hmm. 
Seymour betting again. Seymour, Seymour bets? Is 15,500. Sorry, James. And that is a fold from Zizhov. So, Richard Seymour, legend of the New England Patriots, has 103,500. And that table, by the way, is going to be our new secondary feature table after the break. It also has Sam Grafton, and it also has Sevens guy, Christian Rudolph. Let's go. Sorry, James, I stepped on your on your bit there. Seymour bets. There's got to be there's got to be a Simpsons reference there. If you want to do jokes about Richard Seymour, who could literally crush your skull with one hand, knock yourself out. Nick. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, oh dear. Sorry, chat. I let you down. I apologize, Seymour. Formal apo formal apology. Back. On the main stage, Scott Baumstein opened in early position. Ready Pateur defended his big blind. We have a jack five deuce flop and we're waiting for Pateur to do something. Sorry, but I do feel that the pace of play right now is a little bit annoying. Yeah, I mean, we when we uh, finished commentary yesterday, guys, we sort of commented, actually, it's been quite speedy. Yes. Um, despite the fact that we don't have clocks in play, we don't have our shot clocks in action until day three. But uh, yeah, absolutely feels a little bit dragging right now. And I don't want to point any fingers. Anyway. Scott Bouncy making a continuation bet of 3,000. Pateur has the best hand, ace high. Uh, shot clock will come into play on day four. Oh, day four, excuse me, chat. I think Baumstein has such a nice seabed here. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't look like he's connected much, but having the jack out there and the spade, there's lots of nice turns. You pick up flush draw, sometimes a flush draw and a straight draw. Our boy Scott, fellow commentator during this PSPC. Um, PSI Master asks a fair question. Why the wait on the clocks? I don't think there is a perfect answer to this question. And I don't think there is a perfect solution to when and how to implement the shot clock. I think you have to bear in mind that, again, you have to be specific this is a unique tournament and therefore you have to look at it and say we've got a ton of amateurs some of whom have never played live before competing in a twenty-five thousand dollar event and having them on a shot clock during the early stages even putting them on a shot clock before they've made the money is probably a little bit brutal i i completely agree and um i think also now 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 we're talking about it, now we're thinking about it does it feel like I mean, for the most part, my experience of, of inexperienced players is it's on you, sir, and they're nervous and they tend to react somewhat quickly or they realize that they're acting, taking too long, and they sort of sometimes panic and act faster. It's the pros who seem to want to tank the most, isn't it, James? Yeah. <laughs> I think having a shot clock at this stage of this particular event is wrong. Uh, I think the decision was taken to introduce the shot clock after the money. But bear in mind the bubble's going to burst midway through a day. You don't want to bring out the shot clocks halfway through a day. So start of day four was the compromise. There is no perfect solution. That's just the reality. Yeah. No, that's a great point as well. I mean, like you say, if you do it in the middle of the day, the disruption associated with everybody. Okay, now, wait. You, how long, you haven't been doing yours, dealer? You haven't been using it? Didn't you know it was this level? And there's all that confusion. So much better to bring it in at the start of day where everybody's on the same page. We can give the talk to everybody at once. I mean, there's a lot of tables out there, guys, to, uh, to try and herd those cats, you know? And as with any MTT where a shot clock is introduced, there will be time bank cards, Anne-Marie. Every player will get six of them per day, and you get to bag any cards you don't use and carry them over to the next day. Uh, so Rick Bleakley did indeed open with the Grafton 10-9 suited. He's been three-bet by Theros, who's got a seven of hearts. Yeah, Rick obviously had a double very recently with that jack-10, turning the straight. Looks like he's made the fold. But uh, Rick sitting there with you know, around 37 big blinds. So definitely could have considered defending the 9-10 suited there. I think the fold is also totally fine. So Boyd asked the question, wait, so they can literally sit there as long as they want 
in theory, but it will be policed by both the tournament staff and by the other players at the table. And at any point, anyone at the table, not just the other player in the hand, anyone at the table can call the floor and put their opponent on a shot clock. If you feel they've had adequate thinking time and the dealer agrees, they will be put on a clock. It's just people are so reticent to do it. Yeah, and I, some people react so violently when you do that as well. Like, they're just so... Some people get really aggressive when you, when you like, oh, you know, it hasn't been that long. It hasn't been that long. And, like, then it becomes an issue. I can understand why people are hesitant to do it. But especially if you're playing a faster tournament, like, obviously, we have these nice luxury levels here, James. But if you're playing at a local casino or something and it's a relatively turbo structure, yeah, you got you to gotta call people out once in a while. Wasn't born there, but Again, uh, lived there. situational. If someone is facing a decision for their tournament life, right. whether to call all in, yeah. they might need that time. If someone has basically gone to a flop and they're first to act and they're just sat there, mentioning no, I mean, to me, no names, um, then maybe I'm more inclined to say, clock! I love it. Got a question in the chat here. Bag cards for next day, what does that mean? So we're making reference to the fact that when you go to the next day, uh, the sort of protocol is that you put all of your chips into a bag and then you sign the bag with your name so they know it's associated to you and you tell them exactly how much is in the bag and that is put in the safe and that's protected and then distributed the next day so all of the chips are accounted for following the day. But in the event where we have shot clock cards where each card represents a certain amount of time that you can use um, to take additional time if you need it when shot clocks are in play, you can put the cards that you haven't used in that bag and take them to the next day, and then you'll be given even more at the start of the next day. And if you're somebody that acts very rapidly and you want to save them all for one big moment, you can have them, and they will stack up over days. You don't lose them simply because you didn't use them at an earlier time in the tournament. Absolutely. Three minutes left on the level, and that means we are approaching the close of registration. I should highlight that registration has closed in the mini PSP th PC. 3,373 runners in that event. Good luck to everyone who will be competing over the course of the next three and a half days. As Scott Baumstein picks up ace-10 in the small blind. Scott here, 42 bigs to start the hand. Um... Have you any cash? Playing into Song here, who has 24. So the effective stack depth here, guys, is in fact 24. I think this is probably always a raise. I think I like a 3x, a 3x size here. So blinds are still 1k, 2k. I think something like 6 is pretty standard. It makes it 5.5. That's cool, too. You do want to size up when you are blind. You blind, though, in, your small, in the small blind because, of course, your opponent will always have absolute position. It's almost as if they have the button. Uh, because they will always act after you, assuming all other players have folded. Um, I think theoretically, Song should probably call the king seven, and there's a there's a very sli like slim amount of sliver of three betting as well. King seven off is a decent combo to include as a three bet here, and he does in fact pull the trigger on that. Any chance that Scott now shoves on him? Um, a very strong chance, I would say. I think that this is a situation, probably 80-20, something like that, calling to three betting. Ace-10 suited, so strong. Blind v. Blind, 25, uh, 20, uh, 25 big ones effective or thereabouts. I think you're just supposed to rip the Ace-10 suited every time. I don't think calling is completely outrageous, though, as well. I think we're deep enough to play Ace-10 suited well from, um, from out of position. I just think it's way up there. And if you think your opponent's capable of three bet bluffing in the spot, you need to just take the spot and pick up the chips here. Quick opportunity for a bit of blatant self-promotion. Patrick says, you mentioned a podcast. What's the name of it? Poker in the Ears is the name of the PokerStars podcast. Poker in the Ears. Award-winning podcast. You got this, Scott. Yes, my man. And gets the fold from Song. A little bit of cool background here, actually, guys. Me and Scott were talking. Uh, we, this is the first time we've met here in the Bahamas. Um, and he sort of said, hey, Nick, tell me about yourself. Where do you come from? I said, well, actually, I come from St. Louis. He goes, no way, me too. I said, I used to play Heads Up Piper. He goes, he goes, no way, me too. And obviously, coming from a background in St. Louis, we know those well. Oh, wow. A lot of Alexandra Botez fans watching the stream yesterday and today. I am sad to report that she is out, eliminated towards the tail end of level two, of level 10 rather, but the second level of day two. 
GG, thank you for playing with us, though. Really, really cool to see Alexandra join us here in the Bahamas. Uh, it was a real pleasure commentating on her day one uh, feature table. And we are now ticking into the break, so this will be the last hand of the session. Uh, yeah, Scott obviously knowing that spot really well. We both have a background coming from sit and goes, so that blind v blind action is something he's going to know really well. Gutierrez is raised with 7-6 off. Song in the small blind has an 18 big blind stack, ace queen of diamonds, and of course that stack will be shallower the next time he plays a hand because the blinds are going up to 1K, 2.5K. So I'm going to push here, blind view blind. Yeah, good here. He's always going to fold. In that spot, though, guys, I just wonder, maybe there should have been a raise not all in at 18 big blinds effective. Seems like the shove with a nice suited ace is maybe a little bit over the top for my liking, but... With the big blind ante in there, it does change things a little bit. So this session comes to a close, and registration will be closing shortly. So I imagine during the next session, we will be able to confirm the prize pool and the payouts and give you confirmation of how many players have participated in the second edition of the PSPC. These are the stacks of the players we've been watching over the course of the last two hours. And we can see it's getting very shallow now. Everyone, 40 big blinds or less. So we are going to be back in 20 minutes time with more action from the PSPC. Now, while we're gone, check out the chance to see Dat Paddy, Patrick Chambers, meet his bosses for the first time, Spraggy, and Tonka, the time they met in the Bahamian sunshine. My name's Patrick Chambers, and I'm from South Africa, and I'm a moderator for Spraggy, Finton, and Tonka, as well as the Poker Stars channel. Paddy was one of the first people ever to come into my chat, and then it came that I needed a moderator, so he became my moderator, and he's been doing that full time for me for five years. Patty has been around in Spraggy's channel for the longest time, eventually, you know, found mine. He's just become a good friend of uh, Sprags and mine over the years. We play a lot of video games with them. Just a good dude. I just sort of help all the lads because they're all a, we're all like a tight group knit, like friends, you know? We play video games, me, Tonka, Patty. We play, you know, several hours a day. Neither of us have ever met him in person. He was entered into this random draw that Pokestars did. He goes to me, there's a draw going on. I don't know what the prize is, but you know, it, I'm not worried about it because I'm not going to win anyway. They put some names in a raffle and my name got pulled out last. I don't know, I just I won this great platinum pack, which is just crazy. That is him, that is him. Look at that foul beast. There he is. The big pad. Is that the great There he is. Yes! How you doing, buddy? Amazing. Good to see you. There he is. Meet you. What's up? They wanted to catch our... Initial meet now, And huh? this wonderful moment, this magical yeah, moment this in the Bahamas. Moment, right? So platinum. this is it. This is what we had to do to meet you. I had to give you a Yeah, I had to get a, I had to get a platinum I had to get a platinum pass. That's the only way I was going to crawl out of my hole. You know? <laughs> seven, um, seven years modern? Eight, seven, seven years? years. Yeah. I mean, it's incredible to meet folks that you meet online, you know, and build relationships with over the years, and then just stumble into the same place eventually together. Probably more important than playing the 25K almost is like that camaraderie of us all being here in the Bahamas and coming together for the first time. To the secondary feature table, when Maria Ho is dominated by Sean Deeb. Awful situation for Maria. No overcards out there. Forty-five. Deeb, three bet pre. He continues the flop for four thousand five hundred. Here, I can just. Uh, oh, here, I'll just give you this. Yep. Maria calls. 
turn card is the Deuce of Diamonds, so Maria picks up a flush draw. Checks the action to deep. Having the 10 high flush draw makes it even less likely she would fold to a bet here. And Sean shoves. It's unlikely Sean's got a flush already, but it's quite likely that she would often be drawing to just two outs. So a lot of the time, Sean's gonna have something like jacks with the jack of diamonds, queens with the queen of diamonds. And there are very few hands that she's doing really well against. Finds a call. Showtime. Not the worst case scenario. Diamond's live. Yep. So Maria has 11 outs. At least I got a drink out of it. 11 possible river cards that would eliminate Sean Deeb. But that's not one of them. He gets the double up. 28 or something? 20, much less. 24, 8. 24, 8. You would have called 28,000? Yeah, I didn't have that much. <laughs> hey, managed to get a needle in there, too. Maria takes a big blow. Now playing fewer than 20 big blinds. As we head to the outer tables, Sam Grafton is facing a river shove from Enrico Kamoski. Paired board. No flushes or straights possible. Dumb, man. So dumb. Also, six and four, not six and four, nine total. Yes, sir. Most of Sam's stack to call. That's a call. That's a full house. That's a better full house. That's top full house. I mean, sorry. Well, I, there was a lot of Hollywood, to be fair. No, I, I, I didn't. Sorry, it was a slow off. It was. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I, like, when you reshove all in, like, I thought, like, you know, you must have. And you were like. Just stop. You know, I mean, I know I beat. Nice, sorry, bro. You think it's slower. I'm never going to fold, I guess, but, like, it felt, like, super strong, you know? Hey. Poor dude. <laughs> Poor dude. Sorry, bro. Well, the net result of all that ridiculousness is that Enrico Komoski has been eliminated. Good game, guys. Yeah, man. <laughs> Rather cruelly. So you're not, like, excited, like, when it goes all in for 45. Chuck Ace or Ace? Yeah. Chuck Ace, Deuces, man. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, I think, like, Deuces is a little, like, small overplay, right? Uh, uh, <laughs> I don't know. Like, maybe I'm just, maybe I'm just terrible. I think that's, like, more than possible. <laughs> I love Sam, but that roll was so slow, it was like it was on island time. It looks like Maria Ho is flipping for her tournament life. Her ace-jack versus Casey Yancey's pocket sevens. Yancey. Always coming seven. Maria needs running cards. Queen, ten. <laughs> well, there's the ten. Hope Springs eternal. But the river's no good. Good luck, everybody. Good game, Maria. Have fun. See ya, Maria. See ya. See ya, Maria. Another big name elimination here on day one. I hope they do this again next year, because I want to come back. <laughs>《ファンファンファンファンファンファンファンファンファンファンファンファンファンファンファンファンファンファンファンファンファンファンファンファンファンファンファンファンファンファンファンファンファンファンファンファンファンファンファンファンファンファンファ Has a queen. Queen. It's a shame you hit the queen. You might have left off 50 to me, huh? Into your pair of sevens? Come on, what the f? <laughs> find the f. Get the guy to bluff off all his money. 
He spikes a queen. What the f Well, he's certainly on brand. Meanwhile, back at table Helmuth. Looks like he's going to the flop against Alex Vanovsky. Ace, nine, six. Vanovsky's checked. Helmuth bets 4K. Isn't it weird that we're all just rooting for him to melt down every single hand? Vanovsky <laughs> calls. Turn card. Five of diamonds. I hope a set of fives just got there. Check, check. And ten on the river. Check to showdown. Vanovsky rivet a pair of tens, and Helmuth doesn't like it. I know, girl. <laughs> I mean, yeah. What's going on here? The diamond draw on the turn. Good flop for you, huh? What Thank do you I expect? There's a thousand players, right? Some goofy going on here. Yeah, we're all hopped up on goofballs. Well, back to the main stage. Blinds are up to 1,000, 2,000. Dmitry Ivanovich under the gun, first to speak. Has ace queen. This is a good hand. He raises to 4,500. Fold it around to Miller on the button. He passes. John Andres also has ace queen in the small blind. 45, right? This is also a good hand. He calls. Helmuth in the big blind with pocket tens. I know Phil doesn't really play this way, but a lot of folks would say the move here would be to shove. You can get hands like ace queen to fold. I'm going to raise 9,000 more. 13.5? 13.5. A relatively small three bet from Helmuth. I thought he was going to flat it, so I'll take it. 13,500 total. Rupanovich is in a less than desirable spot because he's not closing the action. John could easily shove behind him. Rupanovich lets it go. What's Andres going to do with the same hand? Probably wants to see all five cards with the size of Phil's stack. On. He does shove. Well, I hope he has pocket eights. And Helmuth calls. Why not hope he has three, four? Well, this is not quite a flip. Helmuth actually a two to one favorite because we know an ace and a queen are dead. But there's a queen on the flop. Oh, man. It would have been fun to play against you all day. I know. Helmuth at risk and now behind. Ace queen. I thought maybe you had king queen suited or something really bad. The turn card is an eight. Helmuth needs a ten on the river to survive. <sighs> <laughs> Even the eights would have got him. No ten. Nice oh, I knew you were going to try something. Was... Hey, uh, good luck. Yeah, we're going to go. Thank you. Hey, nice I don't meet. like playing flips, but good yeah. luck. Thanks. Yeah, good luck. Good luck. Yeah. Pleasure to play with you, Phil. Great international table. Yeah. He's taking it rather well. Yeah, great sportsmanship. No, never mind. I'm going to move him with ace queen. Ace queen. Hey, yeah.
back of the feature table, it's folded around to Sam Grafton, and we're going to play this hand from his perspective. Joe, we're going to sweat with Sam. Sam's the only guy I've ever seen sweat from talking too hard. He's raising with Queen-10 in the cutoff, 9,000 to go. Hey, look, it's a Hinkle. Blair Hinkle. Hinkle is Finehorn. He's folded. Alciano Polliman. This guy's definitely a mercenary for the Umbrella Corporation. That's cool. How much am I just, okay, thank you. Pretty similar. Heads up to the flop, and it's a straight draw for Sam. Checking feels a little weak. I'm down for a C-bet. How do you feel about 6,500? I'm for it. It's small, and I think it would get the job done on most hands if Polymer was going to fold it all. Polymer calls. So we're going to the turn. Six of clubs, which shouldn't have changed much. No, I don't think it would. Polyman checks a second time. Now, this is a dangerous spot to barrel. I know checking seems a little weak, but I don't think there's a lot of draws we're getting caught with on the flop. We'll never get an ace to fold. So if we bet here, we're really hoping they'll fold a king or a gut shot similar to ours. He does barrel, 18,000. Not saying we shouldn't have bet here. I'm just saying it's dicey. Polyman folds, and he did fold a king. All right, well done. Nice pot for Sam Grafton, who's now playing 155,500. Slightly below average. And he gets it quietly there. A rare occurrence for this outspoken Brit. Just a couple of hands left to play today. We're going back to the main feature table. I'm booked on the Lazy River tomorrow for one, so. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you miss it. I kind of want to double all the bus, you know what I mean? Yeah, I hope, I hope you miss. Why don't you Can just you rebook go down there? Go down 10. Wait, is it really a real thing? Is it booked for the Great Lazy River? <laughs> no, okay, I didn't, I don't know. So I was like. <laughs> all right, now I feel kind of dumb. <laughs> nice one, Spraggy. Poor Tim Riley. Action folded around to Ellison. Now on Spraggy. Queen Jack. And he shoves for his last 73K. Trying to hijack with Queen Jack. Pocket threes for Luke Marsh. I'm sure Spraggy would be very fine for everyone to fold. Just the big blinds to get through. Kane Callis. How much is it? Kane Callis. This guy's a cash game legend. He's got ace 10. And he calls. Spraggy's behind. This will be a good pot to win for me. Does commentary for a living, everybody. The flop is queen high. Spraggy now with the advantage. Seven on the turn. Spraggy just has to fade an ace on the river. There's only three of those. Boom. He gets the double up. Nice one. Nice. Skill game. There you go. If he could teach that skill, he'd never have to play poker again. Not too painful for Kane. Nice hand. Thank you. I'm not too Spraggy now with 155k. Blinds are now 6,000, 12,000. Over to the secondary feature table. Should point out the shot clock is now in play. Each player gets 30 seconds per decision. And a handful of time bank cards that can extend that decision by another 30. Spraggy's clock is running. And he puts the big blind all in. All right, mate. Good luck. Okay, let's wet it. Good luck. Oh, wow. you have an ace. 
That's very unfair. Definitely unfair. <clears throat> All right, the Jack Nine. There's a nine and an ace. That was a tease. I saw the nine. There was a little ace hidden underneath it. <laughs> Turnego says, get to the flopper. That's, that's good for me. Eights, nines, jacks, kings, all working for Spraggy. But it's a seven. That's good for you. That sounds... Somehow Spraggy not broke. I think I have 300 chips and a Snickers wrapper. He actually has 6K, a whole small blind. Wow. And the wrapper. That sounds... Mama chip and data chip. I'm ready to go. Oh, God. If I'm in the big blind next hand, can I not win the antis since I can't pay antis? Yeah. I still win. Be a part one. Yeah, I'm actually not sure. Nobody is really. Better win this one then. Spraggy all in for his one small blind. Kristen Bicknell with pocket deuces. It's a flip. Will she give him some protection? Well, she's raised to 26,000. Folded around to Victor Begara, who has 8-5 of hearts in the big blind. None of this is looking all that bad for Spraggy. Begara calls. So three-way to the flop with Spraggy all in. Two live cards. King, King, 10. Deuce is still good. Action checked to Becknell. She bets. And Begara folds. Showdown. I'll be honest, it was an aggressive shove for half a big blind. <laughs> Ooh. Well. You could win with 6i. <laughs> Possible. 10, then a 3. That's how we win this. <laughs> the 10, then the 3. That would be the fun way. Turn card is a jack. We could chop. <laughs> this is true. Jack 10, 6-4. It's a seven. Deuces hold. Good game. Put out the time, Ben. I should have, shouldn't I? Thanks, folks. Good game. Nice playing with you. Good luck. Enjoy yourselves. Out 140th place for $35,000. Hello, my babies, and welcome back to the Poker Stars Players No Limit Hold'em Championship from the Poker Stars Caribbean Adventure at the Baja Mar Resort in Nassau, the Bahamas. Continuing coverage from day two, overall tournament chip leader Aaron Oleknowitz. I'm going to go with that. Tommy Wynn, second in chips. It's been a while since a win won. Oh, never mind. Feature table chip counts. Same players that we had the first couple of levels. A couple of platinum passes bunched up from second to fifth places. Leo Margetz, also a notable name, short stacked here with just 11 big blinds. Now's when the blinds are finally starting to catch up with people a little bit, I think. We're gonna, we're gonna lose a lot of players today. We're gonna hit the money tomorrow. Same feature table on the main stage, but the secondary feature table, that's gonna be slightly different. Not slightly different, entirely different. And there they are, headlined by your friend and mine, Sam Grafton. NFL legend and recent Hall of Fame inductee Richard Seymour also at the table. Christian Rudolph, a.k.a. Sevens guy. Should be a fun group.
group of folks to keep our eyes on while they mic up the players. Let me introduce my co-host, Nicholas Walsh. Hello, Joe. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for being here. Joe Stapleton, Nick Walsh, level three of the day. Blinds at 1,000, 2,500, 2,500. Looks like 1,014 players. Registration closed? I think it's close. I think it's close. We may see some more numbers added to that, but we gotta be real close to the end of registration. We do know that there are 508 players remaining when we went to break. But I believe that was a 30 minute, was that a 30 minute break? And the revised tournament you get tons of wasn't? I think it was 20. 20 minute break? Yeah. The mystery bounty when, yeah, the late wedge is like insane. You're like almost, you're in the bounty. You're like six or seven shy of 25 million. They want that, they want that 25 million. Scott Baumstein, Dat Patty at this table. Good luck, Doc. Everyone pretty happy that the mods. Speaking of mods, Super Mod Tom standing right in front of me, right before my very eyes. Hello, my friend. The one and only Super Mod. Tom Lahat. Action has folded around two ready pature. Also short stacked, 18 big blinds. The shortest is Leo in the hijack, 11 bigs, Queen Jack. Some fold equity at 11 big blinds still. Yeah, I think I like taking the spot here, Joe. I think I'm just gonna push all day long. It feels really, really good. So does Leo. And whatever Leo wants. Go ahead. Leo Mar gets, but Song wakes up with Queens on the button. Ooh boy, this is about as bad a matchup as it can be. Queens against Queen Jack. I mean, there's domination. And then there is domination. Song reshoving for 45-5. And it's gonna be just the two of them. Rough shape. Leo in very rough shape. Does have live diamonds. Can make a straight a little more easy than Song can. I don't think there's a single person out there rooting against Leo Margetz. Nah, absolutely not. Okay, an ace is a straight card, oh, a king is a straight God, card, and a 10 a is a straight card. Leo <laughs> flops the joint. <laughs> Hey, Joe, whatever Leo wants, Leo, Leo Marquez. Yes. <laughs> Unbelievable. Wow, we song can chop and now it can win. <laughs> Has multiple outs to two different types of full houses. The river card is a king. So Leo is going to double up about as big a dog as you can be pre-flop. Yeah, it doesn't get much worse than that pre-flop. But as the chat will know, because we mentioned it twice, Leo Mar gets there. Absolutely beautiful flop for Queen Jack. I don't know what it is like. I didn't verbalize it. <laughs> Do you hear that? He goes, I guess that's your one time. She goes, no, 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 no. I didn't say it. I didn't use it. You didn't use that one time. That's just, <laughs> I that, didn't hear it. That's just, uh, that's just a Margetts run good. That's, that, that was just, that, that was, was just, just a given. That was yeah. just a normal run good. That wasn't an official one time. And you certainly can't force me to use it, sir, especially after I've won the bot. Yeah, you should have asked ahead of time. If you want to, that wasn't part of the deal. This is where the chat goes. And this is why... You Professional poker <laughs> isn't profitable you, you for the pros. Ah. <laughs> you just took 1K for him. Good job, chat. <laughs> Classic Joker <laughs> stars. It's all there. It's overwhelming. The biggest stack always wins. Nice work, Croaks. That's another callback. Okay, into the next hand. 
Leo now up to 24 bigs after that double. Baumstein makes the fold with King 3 off in the hijack. First time in 10 levels that I overpassed so Brewer so far playing pretty solid. Seen some really good play from him. He actually recently came off a double as well, triple barreling with the tens. Someone said they recognize Brewer from the Triton stream, so he must be a pretty high roller. Raising here with ace nine oh, suited. And who's still in the hand? Oh, I see. It's Rick Bleakley with pocket tens. Button versus big blind. Yeah, so pocket tens here, guys. 26 big blinds. This is a ship ship roo, isn't it? I mean, yeah, it's, just... it's, it's going to be in there. I think there might be an argument for just having mm -hmm. a three bet here, but I think for the most part, you just three bet jam. Tens are getting up there, right? The bigger the pair, the more likely you're just a three bet non all in Joe. But I feel like tens is also a reasonable jam here, too. I think both are fine. Probably have similar values, to be honest, from a theoretical standpoint. He is going to get action from the dominated ace nine of hearts, though. And that's a good. Co oh, oh boy. wow. Uh, maybe better if it wasn't a heart, but a set of tens for Bleakley. So Did not get it in pre-flop, but it's going to go in on the flop now. Yeah, I mean, flop and sets in three bet pots. On the flop, I should say post-flop. Would be really small bet bet from Bleakley here. Five K into thirty-seven. Chris Brewer with 6.4 million in live earnings on the Hendon Mob. 28th in the PCA main event. Yeah, he's just going to push them all in, and Bleakley's absolutely smashed it here. Obviously, you know, not loving the hearts, but a lot of uh, the jack of hearts, for example, is no longer an out for Brewer, given the fact it will give Bleakley a boat. So 74%, that is mahusive when it comes to all ins. Huge favorite to win this one, and that would be. The second double for Bleakley in not so many hands. Spur also had a 10K high roller Prague in Prague. Excuse me. Oh, high roller wow. win in Prague. And if he runs like this, instant, I can see why. Sorry, Joe. Instant delivery. Just unbelievable. And the board doesn't pair. That's going to be the end for former Poker in the Ears guest, Rick Bleakley. I feel like a Bleakley joke is a little too. All right, good luck, guys. Too soon. Too soon. Too expected. Yeah, that was that was very unfortunate. I think he played his hand really well there too. Just so cold. Rick Bleakley, shout out to my boy. Managed to meet him in Dublin just before he came out to the Bahamas. Really bummed out for him. One of our Platinum Pass winners. We would have loved to see him go deep. But GG to you, sir. Chris Brewer grinning as he stacks Rick's former chips. Eight players currently in the field. Actions folded around to Daewoo Song. Folds. Daewoo! from the cutoff with another 
The suited heart hand, Jack Five. The Motown, as some people call it. Gutierrez, a.k.a. Thero, big-time Spanish streamer. Defends a big blind with pocket sixes. King, 10-10. One habit asked, does someone know if Ben CB is playing the tournament? Yes, someone knows. Thank you for your question. Deuce on the turn after a bet from Brewer gets called by Gutierrez. Check, check on the turn. Eight of spades on the river. After this action, I feel like six is probably feeling pretty good. Yeah, absolutely. Maybe not value back good, right? Could be a blocker back good. Blocker back good, all right. Gutierrez has checked the river. Brewer now with the opportunity to try and speed up if he wants. It's a really, really weird one, though. I don't know. Maybe he just waves the white flag here. Well, Brewer has not waved any white flags in any of the hands we've seen him play thus far. He bets more than half pot here. When I, he had a hand previously, he did not want to show down. He went for a very large sizing. Uh, the exact amount was all in. And this sizing works as well. Yeah, it does get those sixes to fold. Nice hand, sir. Reminds me from many Two years back, I guess. I uh, was in day two. In the end of the day two, pocket kings, king 10 10. Other guy had 10. And like. Looks like we're heading out to our second feature table. And some of those notable names include Richard Seymour, third in chips, Sam Grafton, Poker Stars Team Pro, fifth in chips, and Vaughton Loss, Senior Rudolph in the sixth seat, and the originator, at least as far as we know, of our sevens meme. It's always coming seven. It's Christian Rudolph. When I go, yes, the other, the other sixes, this is the other sevens, that's me doing a terrible Christian <laughs> Rudolph impression. <laughs> Sevens to sevens, they're always coming. Check. And looks like we've got a check to showdown hand. You, you related Sarah to Chuck. This is, you, this is your, the step, Kyles. Your step, your cousin, step <laughs> over, like, this place is and of course, crazy. everyone will see <laughs> the one and only <laughs> Sam Grafton <laughs> repping the PSPC merch. Those black hoodies with the I cool like hoods. <laughs> Looking fresh to death, my like friend. Imagine if he had to be. Yeah. He's like, too disciplined these days. Now he wants the club to go for it. Oh, I need a club. Look at me, I'm just knitting around. And I'll, I'm, I'm, I'll go remember I'm not commentating this table. I'm actually playing. You know? Something me. tells me he's well aware. <laughs> Better at it as well. This is Blaz Zerzhav out of Slovenia with the pocket jacks. No, I like se seven hours. Seven hours. Yeah. Yeah, not much. Eight hours. It's fun though. It's sevens guy. These three of spades in the cutoff. Pretty sure he's tight with Sam Grafton. Christian Rudolph, by the way, uh, more than just sevens guy, an incredibly accomplished player, live and online. But wait, is this an opportunity for a squeeze from Ace Nine suited? Looks like no squeeze. Okay, just wants to make the call instead. Seems good from absolute position. 
John Delano says, I wonder if that is getting old for him, the seventh guy thing. I'll tell you, from the looks that he gives me when I walk past him in the casino and try to say hello, my guess is it is getting old. <laughs> He's never, he's never seemed particularly happy to see me. Richard Seymour defending from the big blind. Ace eight suited, nine, four, Trey, two clubs. We got a nine, we got a Trey, Rudolph, Shaw. Jack's beating both of them. Yeah, I mean, in a multi-way pot, I think you got to do some betting here. It's a very, very, it's a big pot already, right, Joe, because it's four away. So I don't think you need to necessarily be like, yeah, I'm just going to smash out, Ooh. you know, a massive bet here. I think 11K is more than enough to get the job done. Well, it would be highly unusual for pocket jacks to fold on a nine high board. This is pretty much what you're dreaming of. And I'm just wondering. If he wants to go for the check raise here. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No check raise. Playing it slow. Eight of clubs on the turn is a safe card for Zerjev and gives Zerjev a flush draw. Yeah, having the jack of clubs here really nice. I think given the four-way, the nature of the four-way action here and the fact that Zerjev can of course have fours, threes, nines, that kind of thing, I think that's the reason why he opts just for the for the check call instead. Pocket fours, threes, and nines? Yeah. Or a uh, four, three, and nine? No, pocket fours, pocket threes, pocket nines, definitely got to be a concern for the jacks here. Mm -hmm. Having the backdoor club is really useful too, of course. I think the fact that he has the jack of clubs is also interesting because another hand he might want to call with on the button might be like a hand like jack 10 of clubs, which is now immediately cannot be in his range because sure. you have the blocker. Queen jack of clubs, for example, another hand you might be concerned about here. And the six changes nothing. I think it's still going to go check, check on the river because ace nine has put in two bat value bets. Now they're going to be concerned about what he might have here. Two checks, yep, and the jacks will take it down. Very well played. He's disguised his hand really nicely there, but he's also controlled the pot in a way where he doesn't necessarily have to lose a huge stack to trays, fours, nines, and that sort of thing, um, where he can just sort of check call, check call, and if he faces another bet on the river, probably reconsider. Um, and will very likely be beating, I th uh, be beat, excuse me, I think. That's a cool first name, Blas. What did you do this weekend? I was getting blasted. <laughs> ah. Couple of folds here to start yeah, things off. That, that coffee. Yeah. They're folding too much. Oh, no. All the way back to Shaw once yeah, again. I all of my trousers rather than folds my, this time. Make me sign up. Go. I can't even text. Normally, you know, I got the power. I could text, text someone, text the. Richard cat. Seymour yeah, in the spring, small blind is going to gonna complete they, they after actions folded all the way to the blinds. And we're going to see one. Blaz again, yeah. Jack Four. A hand very, very famous for being called the flat tire hand, and no other reason. Blaz attacks that limp. Takes it down. Afik on YouTube asks, where's Alexandra Botez? She gone. Yep, eliminated from this PSPC. I saw her in the hallway. I was walking with Maria Ho. She was leaving the tournament area. Here's a here's a flip for you guys. Did Alexander Botez know who I was, or did she not know who I was? She immediately recognized you, Joe. 
Nick says she immediately recognized me. Do we have other guesses? She asked for your autograph. She asked for my autograph, okay. We got a lot of no shot, hell no. She had no idea, she did not, not, did not know. She did, nope, nope, not, of course not. She knew, no idea, she knew Maria. She didn't, nope, no, no, she did not know. She showed you being the background on her phone. All right, well, there's one person that has some faith in me. She told you she didn't have any change. She called security. Sad story. She said you're banned and walked away. She said, are you really dating Margot Roby? <laughs> she knew you, but she went straight to Maria. Joe who? She thought you were Clayton Fletcher. I'll tell you the answer after this hand. Sarah Chuck, who, by the way, goes by a different name generally, Rodrigo Seiji. No. Up against Richard Seymour. Uh, by the way, this camera angle d does not do him justice. This is a very big person. Deuce on the turn does not complete Richard straight, does not make Sarah Chuck's flush. Seymour might be tempted to bet now, being checked too, but wisely checks. Takes the free card, and what a clean river. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Do you know why six was afraid of seven, Nick? Because seven, eight, nine. Seven, eight, nine. Nine high straight for Seymour. Luckily for Seiji, ace queen did not improve. Yep. Five of clubs would have been pretty brutal. Not sure if he gets much uh, gets much value though, given the ace queen doesn't really have a hand here on a very wet, low, straighty texture. Fourteen thousand. See more. Seems like a okay bet size. I like it. I think it's actually really good. Seven is a registered six offender. I probably shouldn't have read that. See more bets. 14K. Is there, Seiji's really giving this a think on a board where I guess the button could be bluffing here. I guess there's lots of Bluffs from button raises, right? Jack 10. I mean, I don't know what what, what was the action after. That? Was it checked all around? Yeah, I guess I guess maybe he's thinking, wow, does make the call, gets paid. I think maybe he was thinking eight nine might have bet the turn once he got checked to or something along those lines, and he could have missed clubs and he could have, you know, two over cards and a gut shot. Again, that might want to bet in position two. So Really interesting pot, but Seymour gets paid. All right, back to the question at hand. Was I a known quantity to Alexander Botez? If you're one of the people that said, Joe, she had no idea who you are. <laughs> you were right. I mean. Thank you for having faith in me, Nick. Thank you for having your friends back here. Yeah, of course. I mean, I've always got you back, buddy. But I, I thought also, I mean, Joe, you got a lot more American-centric appeal, right? I feel like, I feel like Americans know Joe. You know, like in in the same it's, way that a lot of Americans don't know James. It's actually the opposite. Really? Yeah, because all of the tours and streams I work on are are, are EPTs. EPT. It's W Coop. It's Scoop. It's not really things. And I think that a lot of the uh, Americans are focused on cash game streams, and we don't really do those. Yeah, sure. So. She did not. Although, as a very polite person, she, at the end of the conversation, was like, what's your name again? Stapleton? And I said, yes. And she said, it was really nice to meet you. And she's a delightful person. And it's just as charming in person, believe it or not. She said, sorry, what's your name again? You said Stapleton. And she said, great. It was nice to meet you. And it, so if you could go get those drinks now, that'd be exactly. great. Exactly. That'd be Do fantastic. You, she's like, I'd like to ask you something later. 
can you get me a soda? If you could get the bill for us, that would be great, sir. The open from Rudolph. Vaughn lost. Christian Rudolph, ace eight. Seymour's called in the cutoff with Queen Jack suited, given a squeeze potential here for Kyles, who doesn't have a lot to work with, but is gonna squeeze. Cool, 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 cool. Peralta. Cool, 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 cool. OMG and Sam Grafton now with ace queen in the big blind. And Sam Grafton, one of the best players in the game right now, one of the best thinkers in the game, one of the best communicators in the game. Sam's going to know what to do here, but I think that I maybe um, just Joe, don't get involved Joe, with Joe, this. Joe. Yeah. Cold, cold four bet, just like click cold four bet. Watch this. Okay. Watch the click cold four bet. I would click fold here, personally. No, no, he's going to make it. He's going to make it 45,000. How do you make it? 45,000 out of a 95,000. You know what? Uh, if, he, if Sam does it, it's right. No, I'm just kidding. I honestly don't know. But I think it is possible that there's a cold four bet here if he thinks that Kyle's is possible, is capable, excuse me, of putting in some light three bet squeezes from the small blind here, which it appears he is. I mean, A7 of hearts is a nice hand. Don't get me wrong, but certainly not trying to get called here. Yeah, there it is. The okay. cold four bet jam. Let's go. How much is it? Yeah. Sam shoving with the best of it has every other hand dominated. I think Joe makes a good point though. The um, making it 45k is ridiculously committing. It's effectively a jam, but it does make you look a lot stronger, doesn't it? As well, Joe. I don't know if Sam really would do that. Maybe it looks weaker when a player like Sam does it, right? Yeah, I think Sam just wants to use his full fold equity. Yeah. And, you know. Maybe just didn't want to give a really great price to something else with a, with a four click. And manages to win a pretty significant pre-flop pot there. So well done, Sam. Yeah, a huge pickup. And, you know, Kyle's just sets it up so nicely for him. Now, if you're playing in your local, your local uh, $100, $100 freeze out, Probably just going to run into aces there a lot. <laughs> <laughs> it really comes down to the players. And, you know, if you think Kyle's is, is going to be in there in the mix with some hands like ace seven of hearts, all of a sudden ace queen becomes a monster four bet jam or a monster four bet of any kind. Oh, Sam is just so good, man. Just such a such a force to be reckoned with. And now in the small blind, King-5 suited, facing the open from King-Jack off from Shaw, UTG plus one. I am a fan of these new hoodies. I just got mine. I think it's nice. Puts it in the bin, big blind left. Wow, psychedelic shirt, my man. Queen deuce off for Betbese. Five moves. Sam wants this game speedy. Moves the button for the dealer. On to the next hand. There he is. The man, the myth, the legend. Sam Squid. Seji, gonna open King, King eight suited, or can eight as I just tried to say. Looks like poker face is trending right now on Twitter. New show on uh, Peacock, Natasha Leone playing a person who reads people's faces to see if they're lying, I think is the gist of it. Oh. For a minute, Natasha Leone was interested in coming to this event. We. Couldn't end up making it happen in the end. You know why? Had to do publicity for Poker Face, which I was like, yo, uh, how about you do it from the Bahamas? We got cameras. What could be better publicity for Poker Face than a Poker Stars tournament? And the search off. Wow. 
predicted by Nicholas Walsh moments ago. <laughs> Sometimes in these situations, someone has aces. Zerzhov's ace queen and Seiji's king eight in big, big trouble against the pocket aces of Vatenlas. There goes the king eight. Uh, with this three bet to 24,000, Zerjov may take a look at that remaining stack of Rudolph and think, all right, well, let's just play for all of it. And you might also think, uh, I'm not really going to be ahead here that often. She was on Jimmy Fallon this week, Turka. But it was before the PSPC. I'm sure there's other. Yeah, nice lay down. Yeah, very good. Oh, my God. <laughs> Adam Levy just said, I'm sorry, I'm back. I had to write a 200-word essay. <laughs> I mean, what? How long, could that have been? How long could you have been gone for? It's only 200 words. <laughs> I mean, a 200-word essay, what is that, like a minute? I love you, chat. There's like there's like 200 words on screen right now. Adam, I mean, why is he even writing an essay? He's a 40 year old man. <laughs> 200 word essay. I write text messages longer than that. That's right, Chroma. Sam Grafton opening from the cutoff, king and nine off. This guy's name is Bet Bessie. From Argentina. Ace Jack. Nicholas. I'm all in. Bet Bessie. Watch this, guys. I'm all in. All in. There it is. Announces all in. Red triangle of death. Obviously gets through. <laughs> Solar Rotor says 200 word essay that's at least several rough drafts, proofreading. You got to pay an editor before the final submission. There's a, there's a lot that goes into that. It's just so weird because whenever um, I bring up the 200 word essay, chat goes crazy. And I just wish people wouldn't spam the chat because my mom got me a new laptop and when you spam the chat, it burns my legs. Yeah, and when to please don't spam the chat because when you spam the chat, it burns my legs. It, my computer gets heated up. My producer, Chris, is asking me why my mom got me a new laptop. Kyle's not so deep anymore. I think the chips are going to go in the middle here. But I think Kyle's is going to have to call, does make the call. So we are going to Flipsville, Joe. Flipsville, I love Flipsville. Population two. Like Buzz Lightyear the toy versus Buzz Lightyear the man. One of these two things has a slight mathematical advantage. And Jax. For the second time in recent memory, are doing pretty well. Turn card is a queen. Oh, Never wow. mind. Just kidding. Queen of spades in the turn. Jack suck. 2%, <laughs> only one jack remaining, and the five of clubs, no change. And before you say it, chat, there's only one jack remaining because we know one of the other ones was folded. Okay, calm down, calm down, calm down. <laughs> Bet Bessie.
Now, if you enjoy jokes like the uh, burnt leg meme, <laughs> 200 word essays, we would like to remind everyone that oh, the voting is open. Right meow for the Global Poker Awards. They're, they're putting it up to a fan vote as to what your fave live stream is. And we think that EPT Live would be a good choice for your fave live stream. And look, I put some feelers out there this week. I want James to win for best broadcaster. I wouldn't mind being nominated for best broadcaster myself. I wanted Francine Watson, the show producer of all this stuff, to be nominated for industry person of the year. But this is the most important one, IMO. That fave live stream is an award for every single person involved with this, from the people who design those logos, who put the set together, who moved those cameras, who mic the players, mix the sound, get the stream up and running, the mods, the people who contribute to chat, the players. Yeah. I mean, chat, winning this, winning this is a win for you. You're part of this production. Your comments fuel memes, and memes right. make content. All right, guys. Howlett in the cutoff is going to open the king four off. You're a little bit on the wider side. The tour, small blind jack three off, making a swift fold this time. Scratch says you're saying it's not a team of two. Not only is it not a team of two, it is a team of hundreds. It's the live events people because the event is part of the live stream. There's people at poker stars and offices who spend all year designing things. The people who make sure the stream stays up and running. <clears throat> the technical people, the cables, everything that goes along with this. People who unload trucks. It is hundreds and hundreds of people. And we would like to win this award for all of them. Shout out to Uncle Curtis in the chat, guys. Everybody say hi to Uncle Curtis. Twenty three minutes left on this level. And we got a big hand developing on our secondary feature table. Kyle's all in under the gun with ace five suited. Not a spot you love to be in. And Richard Seymour in the small blind with a dominating ace. That's right, Zakat. Also the editors who work frantically to make the opening montage sequence every day. All of it. Animators. Seymour has made the call. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, just any there's a pretty big chance Kyle's will be eliminated. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Come on, Sam. Remus, on luck. Uh, uh, we can do this. There you go. Good start. <laughs> That is a pretty good start for Ace Five to run down Ace Queen from big favorite to uh, oh wow yeah to slight Play, dog and Seymour can no longer Play. win this pot outright. Oh, Luckily, wow. <laughs> this board runs out a straight for both players. That's what's known as a chop, and you know what they say, Nick. Sorry, yeah, everyone loves a chop pot. Ding, 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 ding. The steel wheel draw, not enough. Trying to find the official steel wheel. I mean, the roller coaster of emotions you go through on both sides of that all in. Like, ah, I'm probably going to go broke. Oh, I'm going to double up. Oh, I chopped. It's a roller coaster. I just said that, Sam. There was a, a chop on a, a TV table, on a final table lately, right? It was a crazy one. That the guy busted and didn't see. Yeah, it was a chop. Right. That didn't happen like, on exactly your like fave this. live stream. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and every other player just kept shut because of the pay jump. Happened on another <laughs> no live stream. A little bit mean. 
I have 21 minus DNV. Sam Grafton, UTG King Jack of the offsuit variety. It's going to open at 5.5. Seymour folding quickly with the 7-4 off on the button. So far, seems really composed. And ace three off in the big one for Kyles. Obviously, significantly oh. shorter. Just the 17K behind here. Yes, interesting spot here. Ace three off versus the UTG opening range. I feel like it's going to struggle does manage to make a pair, but it's one of those boards. Might be difficult to get to I, showdown depending on your opponent's tendencies. Yeah, I actually don't know how to navigate these spots. Like I'm, I'm ready to go with my pair of threes here, right? But do I check raise all in, or do I just shove here for pot and protect? I, I think it's probably meant to be a stop and go if you're because there's pot behind, right? But uh, it's I don't know. I, I personally I think there's a chance I might just be giving up ace three off. Free, just given the nature of the of the undergun open, but really? okay. I don't know. I I'm, I'm certainly no expert in in those um, in these particular dynamics, but we might see it now. See, I have no problem with the check, bet, shove here. Um, at least on a personal level, maybe it's not correct. I just always feel like whenever I check here, they just check back, and then it's like some awful card on the. It's always an over card, right? It's seven or something, well, you know, like, or, or like king you or an ace. Jack, or, queen, king. Like that's a lot of cards you don't want to see on the yeah. on the turn. I mean, obviously an ace would be nice for Kyle's here specifically, but I, I, I'm I'm really interested because honestly, I I can't speak definitively about this situation. I'm just not I'm not in situations UTG plus big blind given the games that I play. Wow, just calling. Oh, wow. Yeah, I mean, just doesn't have much behind, does he? It's like seven bigs. Yeah, 11K, and that pot is now 20.5. Nine of hearts on the turn. I honestly don't know. It's a very, very interesting one to look at later on. Okay. Kyle's checks again. Sam's thinking face is just perfect. Well, he's probably very confused. Like, this is just an odd line for someone to take with that many chips to start the hand. I mean, it was like nine bigs to start the hand, wasn't it? Ah, it's very shallow, yeah. Very, very shallow. Okay. I mean, I think Sam's correct. Now, he's probably not going to bluff him off once he calls the flop. So Sam's missed entirely. Kyle's will win with a pair of three at showdown. The ace high would have been good enough. Grafton looks like the how do you do fellow teenagers meme, says runner, runner. And it goes check, check on the river. And that's going to be dang near a oh, double up for Kyle. Well well, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Where? Where? Will they check the raise around? Oh, you have the ace. You know, if I value back, you can, I, I bet 4K, you check raise all in for nine. And oh, okay, I, have okay, fold, okay. I have to fold a set now on the river, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Back to the main feature table containing Leo Marquez, who has been nursing a short stack for a while since we started the level. Scott Baumstein, Chris Brewer, and Daewoo Song, Let's see. Okay. who's all in the pocket nines. And I don't think Marquez, if she hasn't called already, won't be folding pocket eights. Yeah, I think it's going in. It is, in fact, already all in, and they're on their backs. And this might be it for Margette. She got it in bad against Song before, and, oh, no, well, she's not going to go broke here because she took all his chips before. But it seems like this time Song's going to win. There's one card left to come. 
River card is a four. Double off Daewoo. Daewoo. You guys remember that Bobby Lee sketch from Mad TV? Remember that? It was, so, it was called Tank. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Go ahead, Nick. So Mar gets down to 13 bigs after her beautiful Queen Jack off Duble. Flopping that straight against uh, Song's Queens earlier on on our feature table, but uh, a little bit of, a little bit of revenge there. And Dae Wong Su now back up to 14, Leo down to 13. Both of our both of them are shortest stacks at our main feature table. Your big blind. Hmm? Your big blind. Sean Gutierrez, who folds. Ready Paterus, one of my favorite players to watch. Always just flinging chips into the middle. Yeah. He's been relatively quiet lately because of said flinging earlier in the day. Yeah, very strong player. Leo, King 10 off in the hijack. I think I'm pushing this one too, Joe. Okay, decides to raise instead. So Leo actually just has the 11 big blinds behind now. So I think it was about 13-ish at the start of the hand. Guess still possible to raise fold king 10 from this position. So she goes for that instead. Strong enough to win the pot without risking it all though. Nice hand. Why is this commentator always ruining my breakfast lunch? I'm not sure. What a strange word sentence. And never, ever talk about Nick like that. Why are you ruining his breakfast lunch? Oh, uh, all these poker reference. Yeah. He was in the chat earlier talking about how we ruined his breakfast lunch with our poker reference. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I know. We didn't, it didn't make much sense either, guys. If you've just joined us, this is day two from the PSPC. Blind levels 1K, 2.5K with a 2.5K ante. There are 445 players remaining and nearly 25 million US dollars in the prize pool. We're playing for absolute mountains. Leo, with another raisable hand, gets earlier and earlier in position, which makes the raise more and more dicey every time. Sleeper Service asking, do you still do stand-up, Joe? I'm glad you asked, actually, because I need to start chilling a little bit this week for my uh, next couple of shows coming back. Yeah, I'm at the Comedy Chateau in Los Angeles a week from Friday, February 10th, and a week after that, the Comedy Store. Oh, wow. In Los Angeles. Holler at me on Twitch for a discount code on tickets. Can attest, guys, to stand-up. Absolutely outstanding. I've, I've, I've seen probably three or four shows. You've been, a, you've been a bunch. You're always very supportive. Thank you. All right, so Hallett's going to defend 7-3 off in the big blind. Um, what's, what solver uh, is uh, telling you to defend 7-3 off against an under-the-gun plus two raise? Uh, and the player has a stack that you really can't win anything off of. Sorry, Joe, repeat that again. What solver says you should defend 7-3 off to an early position raise 
uh, against a player who's got 15 big blinds. Is I'm, there one? I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say, I, I can't explain this one. I feel like seven tray off is is absolutely O O L with capital O O L. And all right, well, not putting in good money after bad folds to the continuation bet from Marquette's. I want to read this one. Robert Lewandowski on YouTube says, Boston Rob from Survivor is doing pretty good. That makes me happy. I've got to spend a bunch of time with Boston Rob over the last couple of years. We play uh, some poker on, on one of the smaller American tours. I think they call it mid it's mid stakes. How shallow all tall, so tall table run is. good <laughs> poker <laughs> tour. <laughs> I was barely surprised John when they Howlett, chose it. I believe I is one of our amazing. platinum pass winners. Not too much information though. That tracks police. repping yeah. Ireland. Then they don't follow that man or that block or whatever. They might they might even feel out of you know understanding. And when they see chips going one one side to the other, maybe. I'm going to say only one thing. We were talking all the time until this guy came. <laughs> but yeah, I have to say, seven trade off looks He's ruined mega the wide. I ruined it for everybody, huh? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah man, what the it's fuck? A beginning. How do you say that? After yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause and effect. Yeah. You, you was there a uh, much chattier guy here before me, or was? Or no, I, it, nobody. I just, I just finally shut up. That's <laughs> all that happened. <laughs> Day was song, ace queen suited. I don't know where the tables just go. I feel like you'll have that like a super chatty table that just goes quiet for a while. It's every seven minutes. If you're ever in like a but group of people, is it, every seven like, minutes will be like a quiet. Like Ireland. Yeah. You can you can set so your watch to yeah, it. Yeah, no, it's a really shallow table. Reside. Kind of funny. Okay. Live up in uh, Newcastle. How's your life in the UK? Good. Okay. Sweet. Yeah. Can't complain. Red Misty Sweet. says sorry. Good, stupid yeah. question. Nice. How many players nice. remaining? Uh, 444 uh, not now. London, too expensive London. 444 yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. remaining in this year's PSPC 2023. If you had spoken more, I would have the, the accent. No, not from Newcastle, but from UK. Yeah, like I said, I was born in uh, South Africa and then uh, oh, really? went to the UK. When Where in South Africa? When I was three. Okay, so you've been so, pretty much all, all your life in the UK. Yeah, I have, yeah. And where in South Africa? Johannesburg. Ah, I've been there in a safari. I've heard it's amazing. No, Ben, but... You, do you ever get back? I've never been back, uh, not yet. So no. no? I've got some family there, but they're... Uh, you know, I've, I don't really know them, so although they're blurred, they're not... There's, like, no, there's no connection. There's no connection at all, because I haven't been back since I was there. Yeah, it makes no yeah. sense. Well, unless you want to... <laughs> yeah, meet them. You know. They want to. Uh, they want to watch White Lotus this season. The uh, White Lotus is like go HBO on. Show. <coughs> so it's like one of the families goes back to uh, meet like the relatives in Italy, and when they go meet them, the relatives like, we just don't want anything to do with them. <laughs> it's pretty funny scene when they actually arrive at their family's home. Thanks for the gift sub, Mer Style. Do you think you'll get old in Japan? Shout out to Mer Style, longtime supporter of Twitch yeah, I streams. Um, I mean, what made you move out though? Move out to Why did you move, move in to Japan? You mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. Move out to Japan. Yeah, yeah, so. So I came there for the first time maybe in 2016, 2017. You were already into poker, yeah. Yeah, I was already into poker. Yeah. And. I think, uh, you know, I, I like the way uh, everything feels there, you know, people are so nice. Uh, you, you don't see people screaming at each other or anything. It's very quiet, right? Especially I've been told I'm if you come from Spain, you probably yeah. appreciate that. Spain is a bit noisy. <laughs> uh, but it Unless has, it's siesta, then very quiet. <laughs> very nice things, but Japan is totally different on that. Yeah. And, I will tell you later. Uh. <laughs>
I will tell you later as he looks down at Ace Jack on the button, facing how it's wider open. Again, I think probably Jack four off. So that's fine. It's all right from the cutoff. It is definitely on the wider side. Don't think that's part of the conventional range. But he certainly has a few chips to throw around there. Howlett started the hand with about 68 big blinds after all. So a three bet from Ace Jack off. And that will do it. Sure enough, Howlett's wider range getting punished. Jarrett's insanely popular so I moved, with the moved Spanish in, audience. Uh, first of all, because I was interested. Yeah. You know, I, I lived already in Korea, South Korea, okay. um, Macau, UK, Australia as well. Thailand, right? Thailand for three months. Oh, because, because of what happened. Yeah. 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 He does tell me that Thailand is the best place in the world. He loves it. It depends for what you are looking for. If you yeah. are young and you want a fun life, I guess. I think he's... If you're with friends, it is fun. Definitely. Yeah, I don't think he's crazy poly. I think he just enjoys, like, he says how nice, like, everyone is. No, no, yeah, yeah. Thailand is quite nice. Yeah, actually. yeah. I lived in Thailand for about a year, Joe. Did you know that? I think I knew it and forgot it. I had a, sh I had a short spell in Thailand. Did you live at one of those places on stilts in the water? Because that's the only uh, hotel that Maria will stay at. <laughs> it has to be partially submerged. <laughs> uh, spent a good chunk of time in Chiang Mai. So Brewer here, UTG plus one, going to open up. Our fellow commentator, Scott Baumstein, in the big blind, probably going to come along for a call. Yeah, there it is. We're going to a flop. Ace-8 currently the best hand. Jack of clubs, six of diamonds, four of diamonds. So a check and an opportunity for Brewer to continue. Thus far, very aggressive player. We've seen him firing many a street. Does continue. So 13.5K in the middle. Scott really, you know, I think has a grasp on his strategy on the One flop the very frequently. We see him making really good, snappy decisions. King 10 doesn't really connect. Yeah, aggressive opponent. Like, not really much by way of sort of backdoor draws. Um, just puts it straight in the bin a, onto the next hand. There was one piece of the kitchen that was broken. Yeah. That kind of thing, very, very minor thing. And we found in the contract information, actually we have a two year warranty that we okay. can actually request, request reparation yep. for, for that, you know? In, in Japan, basically, they try to guarantee satisfac satisfaction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something like that. And Tom Lahad sighting. I'm not going to talk over Thera, but there he is on the rail. Red shirt, if you guys want to see Tom, there he is. Met. Quiet now. Wow, I can understand why you like because it's completely the opposite of Spain, which is <laughs> building expectations and then never... <laughs> get what do you mean? <laughs> yeah. So Guido Familia will be done in at least 100 years. <laughs> if I have to define it, I would say that. I, I think it's how they met, how they meet expectations yeah, pretty much cool. all the time. Yeah, it's a very I mean, nice point. It's yeah. super different than like, I mean, I'm living in New York right now and I'm in like supposedly a nice apartment, right? It's 600 square feet and like we've had like mice plumbing issues like everything that is huge <laughs> it's like for New York. 600 York square like, feet but I thought yeah, I know yeah six flex but okay already, right? uh, cold. <laughs> old. Old. old yeah it's an old city I mean it's not as old as like European cities but yeah for the US it's an old city it's probably I don't know New York is probably I would like to visit New York. 300, 400 years old? It's great to visit. A country that's like it's incredible to visit. 30 it's, years yeah. old. <laughs> it's very unique. There's not really like another city like it, but it's also like, there's like a good unique and a bad unique to it. <laughs> Tell me about it. It's just, it's the busiest city you'll ever be in, right? It's six, it's like uh, six miles with, I think it's 18 million people or something. Like Manhattan's insane. Maybe I exaggerate the number, but it's so many people. So like, but everyone, and everyone's super busy. It's like, 
It's almost like a torch to capitalism or something. Like everything yeah, everybody, is. Everybody will be running around like all the time. Yeah, everyone's walking. It's like yeah. a super busy environment. Like walking back with, like, watching the clock, right? Like, as oh, yeah. if they are in a hurry. Yeah, yeah. Everyone's in a rush. And then, like, but then there's, like, like Broadway's, like, incredible. Like, there's a lot of cool culture. Like, the Polk's awesome. Like, there's a lot of fun stuff to do in New York. Great food. Um, but, yeah, like, Literally, like, the trash system is you put trash on the street. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, like, a little smelly. and Somebody comes and gets it, though. <laughs> this is one of the few American cities that you can walk around. Oh, it's super good for walking. I, I like it. Yeah, and, this, and the subway is the subway's a little gross, but once you get used to it, the subway is kind of great. All right, things get a little quiet here as people actually pick up a couple of hands, howl it with pocket trays. Two tens for Gutierrez. One thero, one thero. <laughs> ah. Are you making jokes, Joey? Yeah, I know. Okay. No. Hello, Joseph's babies. I have returned. Hello, James Hardigan. Just in time to see Gutierrez go all in over the open from Howlett. And just in time for another awards plug. The way you describe New York, me, like, kind of tourists need to avoid the, the natives no, or they'll get that. into trouble. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the tourists, like, you change. it's just. Like, being someone that lives there, like, when they're walking slow and you're trying to get somewhere, it's, like, it is annoying. You call it an awards plug, not, Joe. I you call ask it people and it's not an good. important public service announcement on behalf of the entire production team. EPT Live has been nominated for fave live stream, their words, not mine, at the Global Poker Awards. And if it is your fave live stream, we'd very much appreciate your vote. Globalpokerindex.com slash awards. Complete the ballot. Cast your vote because I genuinely believe everyone who works on this production deserves it. And it has been branded EPT Live because, to be fair, it is the Global Poker Awards covering the year 2022. And every stream we did last year was from an EPT stop. Prague twice, along with Monte Carlo, Barcelona, and London. And I'd like to thank everyone who's voted so far. Thank you. Like, I'm sold. A lot of people like, have gotten in touch. I saw some stat. To say they've already done it. Like, median income in Much Manhattan. Much appreciated. It's like, it's just so expensive to live there. It's like 118K a year. So this is level 12, right? This the is the fourth level yeah, of the so day. 1,500, 3,000 blinds. More than that, which is nuts. So much money with registration yeah, closed, like, I don't like, imagine we'll like have to wait too much longer until we get the prize pool information and the payouts. Yeah, yeah. And a reminder yeah, that the ambition is to make the money tomorrow um, to I moved play through the bubble on day three. So play will end uh, early I, today. If there's any danger the West Coast of encroaching like in Vegas, on our world-famous bubble uh, coverage. I grew up in suburbs, so it's like a city's a bit much for me. I see. It's pretty insane that almost half of your salary goes for rent. I mean, it's <laughs> nuts, yeah. And the other half for government. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's true. No, you for living in the city, you pay... You already, so like New York's a high tax state, and then you pay an extra 3% to live in the city. Yeah, so yeah. city tax is also. Yeah, yeah. Cool. yeah. <laughs> it's also the most exciting city in the entire world. So you live eventually. So good yeah, they named it I twice. Don't, I don't live there forever, but I mean, there's stuff I like. like. I love going to all the Broadway shows, and um, I mean, that's probably the main thing I like. But like, there's random activities too. Like, they'll just be random pop up stuff, or like, just walking around doing Christmas to school and everything's decorated. I think I'm gonna like New York. I want to go. Yeah, you'll like. I think as like visiting it, it's it's fun to visit. I think living there it can be a little exhausting. <laughs> I'd recommend San Diego over New York for living. Well, I grew up in San Diego, so.
Well, we've reached that bad news, good news part of the broadcast. Um, bad news. Mm -hmm. Maria Ho no longer in the PFPC. Good news, Maria Ho on the mic. Oh, hello, it's me in the commentary booth, no longer at the tables. Hello, it's me, I'm the problem. <laughs> it is me. I am delighted to see you, Maria, although I was equally delighted, I could be more delighted to have you at our secondary feature table yesterday. Especially when I'm doing the Chop Hot song Justice out there, you know? Absolutely. What city in Japan are you in? Tokyo. Tokyo. So does I mean, yeah, I mean, that Paul, mean, well, I guess we've got Scotty B part of the team this time Tokyo around, so Kyoto. Griffin hasn't quite Kyoto. won the commentator mm -hmm. last yeah, longer yeah. yet. Yeah, we can't make it that easy on Griffin, come more on. Quiet. A bit more quiet, yeah. it's still very beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. My, uh, my girlfriend, it was, that's like her favorite trip she's ever been on, and she just says the food the best of any will. <laughs> First, She's he brags about having a 600 yeah, yeah. square foot apartment. Now he brags <laughs> about having a girlfriend. Flex what, after flex. It's not really what they eat. Like, all of those things finishing with I, like sushi, maki, oh, yeah, yeah. They, they eat more traditional, right? It's not, they don't eat makis. <laughs> yeah, makis are um, or, you know, not real. No. I mean, nigiris. Did you just say monkeys, monkeys are not are, real? Of course, nigiris. It's just the way they do, do them. The focus but is on fresh But monkeys are real, so For example, fake. if I've you go to an American, sushi, uh, uh, an American Japanese restaurant, let's say, you're going to see a lot of uh, sushi you with You think sauce, the ones right? at the zoo are like Bio, koalas uh, with yeah. the monkey it's face mask? Oh. Projections. They don't serve you, no? <laughs> That's like a... Hologram. Mm -hmm. exactly. Hologram like monkey. Pie. Yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. You know Kabuto? You guys know Kabuto in Vegas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They I'm, do. Loving, I'm loving this conversation, by the way. Everyone's just getting to know each other, trading, like trading yarns. I love it. I was going to say, I mean, I actually, I'm not huge. I just like the way she says I mean, I sort of like, like, put sauce on it, but I never like dip it in soy sauce, so I feel like I'd probably like it. One of the main things is also that you are never going to try real wasabi unless you are there. Oh, okay. Which is totally different compared yeah, to that's the. That's interesting. Wait, are we now saying wasabi isn't real? It's actually not a powder. This conversation is taking a bit yeah, of a turn. It's totally different yeah, yeah. than the real one. And it's much better. Yeah. And much harder, eh? Probably. I, do, I, like, I like all the food in Spain when I was there. I think the food in Spain is awesome. How much I, do you like? I liked it, yeah. But Barcelona is a bad place. Song has opened in the hijack with Queen 10. Theros in the big blind with Queen 9 of clubs. Yeah. And I just realized how shallow spent, this table is and how short some of the stacks are. Before I went to Madrid. What's going on here, Joe? Um, I, I predicted that we would have something like a, a pre-bubble bust-out bonanza like today really when, the, when the really bad. deep, luxurious structure just sort of catches up with the fact that we okay, yeah. have to I'm start sure, losing sure players. But because it's a 25k what? and the bubble is so steep, I think people are really going to um, grind no, so down to you know to the teens to sub 10 big blind stacks a lot of the time. Madrid, um, maybe which is a mistake, weeks, obviously, because you lose all your fold enough. equity at that it's point. But great. I can kind of understand it, just like waiting for a good hand. It's all the gouty stuff. Calibrating widget. Um, no, we stayed at. I have a bunch of Hilton. That's what I'm here for. Downtown. I'm here for the widget. Like I was right by the, uh, like the big Gaudi house. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Nice. It's very, it's very it nice. was a great spot to stay. Yeah, and then just, I, I just walked along the beach one of the days for fun, but yeah, yeah I loved it. I mean, the Seguda Familia is one of the all-time coolest things I've ever seen. The never ending. Yeah. But yeah, I saw something, it's like the government spends. Gutierrez took one off on the flop on it, with like the gut the shot back, and the so overcard to the board. And funny how now on the turn, you know, Song you know, is going to go for a second barrel of value. Yeah. Like, <laughs> it's just the ale. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I was like tallest, you know, I was beating about it. <laughs> Reading his vision. Very cool, though. Well, now it's, we have some issues with for, for a while, no, with all the um, pickpocketers. That's right, also. DYFC. All oh, hail the widget. Super chill with. As we see the stacks uh, of the players uh, okay. on the main stage yeah, yeah. right now, Chris Brewer with 74 bigs. Everyone else playing sub 50 big blind stack. 
Ready for tour, eight big blinds. Like Hello, Danger Zone. Danger Zone! Yeah, yeah. You get full ride. Uh, and the guys yeah, yeah, like, yeah. you know, it's crazy. Like, it's like, so ridiculous. I'm New not York saying has a not normally slight issue with that, actually. So New York has a, because of how like expensive it is, they want people to be able to still like, live in the city. So I think it's a, right now. If you're below, like, some number of income, they have to provide you housing. It's like a, it's like a rule, and it's a law in New York. It's probably a good law of all, because, like, you want people to be able to actually live there. But uh, the start of being immigrants coming over the border in Texas, and Texas is, you know, very conservative. So they started literally taking buses and dropping people off in New York. That way, New York had to house them. That's so, like, so New York is like running into like housing issues because they have all these people that like they're having a so by law. They have to like so like they were literally like putting on like at one point, I think they housed some in like the Ritz Carlton. Like they just had to like find a space for them. It's, it was very nuts, <laughs> but they have like similar rules too, because then you can get like squatter situations where like if someone stayed there long enough, you can't evict them. Yeah. Well, we've got a hand with Dat Paddy opening <coughs> King Ten of Clubs, and John Howlett flatting on the button with sixes. Short stack ready for tour with seven three off in the big blind. Dude, you're not going to be I, able to tank your way into the money. No. Just fold already. Yeah. No, I quit. I made no, it six Randy months Pichur and quit. Is one of my absolute <laughs> favorites. <laughs> I tried it, though. Um, you had a boss? Yeah, <laughs> my boss is. Nah, this boss is, is tilting AF. Ah, that is fine. No, I, I joked about it. Yeah, yeah. The, Maybe he yeah, could tank his way up, until uh, they poker? announce the money. What? Did you leave your job to play poker? I guess. Well, I like, <laughs> left poker to take the job in theory. And then you returned. Yeah, then I returned. I... I struggled having a schedule and a uh, boss. It was the job itself what was a great opportunity, and I was like walking like an internet. Six is still ahead. Um, we like collected data and sold the data to people. Yeah, um, I don't mind that you know Chambers just, opted to open off of this stack size. Also, you know, like, sub 15 bigs. So I think some people like could also find like an just the game. open jam from and the cutoff like, with this suited king, but. In the morning, and that drove It'd be insane. interesting to see <laughs> if he yeah. wants to yeah. just continue. Yeah. It made me really, it made me like, even though the button sad. should no, have a fairly too, like I wasn't strong range I wasn't in the sense of, you know, on this type of board it. texture, they're going to continue you, quite often. James has some board texture right now. B O R E D. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I just, I'm glad I tried it. Um, I was very frustrated with uh, poker and thought I hated it and didn't want to Is play he it saying anymore. poker or parkour? I think he's saying poker. I think people who live poker is not I mean, he's either playing Hold'em or he's jumping off the tops of buildings. Yeah. Once you, you, you know poker, you don't... I guess the two aren't mutually exclusive. <laughs> Look at James Bond. He did both in Casino Royale. Looks like Chambers yeah, decided yeah, yeah. to I, wave I the like white flag just, on the turn, which like I was making me unhappy, like, allows Hallett to different. go for some and protection I was, like, with his sixes, and that, I was, that will end I this try hand. It and then I was able to quit with no hold feelings and come back and play, but uh, yeah, it was good because it made me realize I want to play. Well, so I'm so sure you're all enjoying the back. anecdotes <laughs> of Chris Brewer, but we are going to have to go across to the secondary what? feature no, table. No, I had to see how that was going to end. table that is occupied by the likes of Sam Grafton, Sevens Guy, and NFL Hall of Famer Richard Seymour. So Nick was making jokes earlier on about Seymour bets, and I'm like, yeah, sure, if you want to kind of mock the guy who could basically kill you with his little <laughs> finger, you go ahead, buddy. I'm not going to... But he wouldn't. But no. Because he's a sweetie. I make it a point to shake his hand every time I see him, even though handshakes are kind of out right now, because I'm like, hee hee. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. That's actually so funny, and I know what you mean. <laughs> So 
So I'll watch a few hands from the secondary feature table. Richard Seymour has folded. Blaz Zerzhev from Slovenia has Queen Jack of Spades. Blaz. And he's going to raise. Cassio Quiles from Brazil. Yeah, with that short of a stack, you just got to find a spot that's good enough to go with. And this looks like a pretty good spot. Has the dominating hand. Oh, um, okay, never that. mind. <laughs> yeah, never. I, back it up. I did not know that Nicolas Fetbeze <laughs> was going to wake up with aces on the button when I said that. And that is proof that we are watching these hands <laughs> the same time as all of the other viewers because, because not great timing, but, you know, can't blame the guy. To call or reshove, that is the question. If you relax your eyes and look at his shirt, there's a locomotive on it. Choo-choo. <laughs> Oh, just a call from Betbeze. Sneaky, and I like it a lot. So it looks like the action is back on <laughs> Zershav, who is actually getting a pretty solid price here to call and see a flop. Yeah, and as long as he's not fooled by this cold call from the aces on the button and decides to ISO, I feel like with Queen Jack suited, though, it's kind of nice to see a flop. Sam Grafton says, good luck, bruv, to our all-in player as we go to the flop. Potential action on the side between Zerzhav and Betbeze. But Cassio Quiles is at risk with King-Queen. And it is a queen-high flop, which could spell trouble for Zerzhav as well. How many queens are left? One, two, three. One queen left? Is that it? Yeah, you know what's worse, though, is Kiles sitting there thinking, like, I mean, this is as I good of a it. flop yeah. as you could have hoped for. King-Queen makes a great top pair. Especially since the ace is just called pre as well, and you're, like, sitting there counting the triple up that you think is going to come your way. And Spade now. Nine of spades, okay. <laughs> Very interesting turn card. A little surprising to see that Bezi just check back the flop. I think that it's a good situation to start building that side pot, to start getting some value from your aces. When you have King Queen here and Zerjav bets and Bet Bezi doesn't fold you're a little bit you're like Ugh. yeah it, <laughs> is it my imagination or does this guy look like both sparks brothers combined i can either confirm nor deny because i'm just now learning of the existence of the sparks brothers yeah i have no idea what james is talking about either <laughs> jesus i feel okay. like usually you get james's references so then i okay. don't have to say anything but okay I'm going to try and help. At least I can help out Maria here, right? Yeah, I'll, I'll take some help. And both Sparks brothers call. <laughs> <laughs> I found the perfect photo. Oh, my gosh. Yes. Is Hal Sparks one of the Sparks <laughs> He's brothers? He's like a mashup of the two of them. Yeah. That's fair. incredible. Totally. Yeah. That particular photo, for sure. You know, Zerjev might be tempted, and probably rightly so, given the way this action has played out so far, to go for some value here with queens and nines. But 
Looks like he does end up checking. And now I feel like Bet Basie, let's go. Let's get more chips in. Aces are very hard to get dealt pre. Let's get some value. This pot ain't big enough for the both of us. You must know that song, right? Sparks' biggest hit. <laughs> the Sparks Brothers. They're, they're actually the male brothers, Ron and Russell Male. Their band is called Sparks. How, what, Edgar what, Wright made a documentary about them. What other kind of brothers could there be besides male brothers? M-A-E-L, as we do get the bet on the river from Bet Bezi. I think for that size, it's a little tough to let go of Queen Jack. Granted, you do block some of the natural bluffs of the backdoor flush draw and the straight draw with Jack-10 and whatnot. And I'm not saying that those hands would necessarily even call the all-in from Kiles Pre, but still, it just feels like the price is a little too good to let go of Queen Jack. Mm, Chile Kiles. That's right, Switchback 5. It was a good documentary. Okay. 20. Is that, oh, hold on, don't don't muck that. Yeah, Queen Jack, no good. King Queen, no good. And the elimination of Cassio Quiles. Where's the pot, though? It just, I feel like Queen Jack of Spades thinks they probably got off yeah. pretty cheap. Pushing a few more outs than you'd like that, right? Yeah. I like the river. Maria would have played it way better. Did you get aces in the tournament at all? I think I did get aces once, and I got no freaking callers pre. Boo. <laughs> Hello to Atari Robbie, who says, I saw Sparks in Detroit for the first time last year. One of the best shows I have seen in years. How about a poker question? So Maria, and that on that river spot there. Uh oh. Never mind. Let's remember that hand. Where's Dad Patty going? Uh oh. No. We have just lost Patrick Chambers from the feature table. Oh boy. <laughs> Knocked out by Leo Margetts. Patty got in with King Queen against Leo's Jacks, and Jacks held. I thought he had a stack. So, and that and right uh, the last pot, not the dead patty, of course, but uh, Unlucky. the previous pot. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I know. <laughs> Do you base your <laughs> river bet on <laughs> like the entire like, size of the pot or the like, side pot or like what? How does that ball. work? Yeah. Yeah, I think it's a mixture of a little bit of both, right? I think you are factoring in how much is in the main pot, how much is in the side pot, but also, of course, board texture, relative hand strength, all of that comes into play. But I think, you know, usually um, I like to go somewhere kind of in between what makes sense with, <laughs> with the side, side pot and main pot. I know that doesn't fully Great. answer That's your question. That's very clear. But there's, there's just so many factors that come into play. Um, so you're just saying you're randomized. Like, you're that, you're like, <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, not, yeah, not exactly that either. It's been a but. wheel. <laughs> yeah. That's an annoying one. Yeah, two pails of tens. I would when say I was, the simple uh, answer is I'm more basing it off of the side pot in that particular scenario. Got really it. big for me. I won like the biggest pot of my life at the time. I think it was like a 60K pot. It was like huge for me. I uh, had aces on like ace, eight, six, and the guy just shoved the flop and I called. Chris Brewer's holding court. Five, but it wasn't five, so I filled up. So I just like showed my hand. I think it's that hypnotizing accent. Story over. <laughs> uh, I'll get back to it. <laughs> you got a monster. And flops top pair with it. Check. 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 
check, check. Turn is an ace. Two potential flush draws. Check. Check, check again. The board runs out with two over cards for the nine, but given the action, looks like Brewer is gonna value bet the nine anyway. Yeah, well, like I, I have like, but you know, this great hand. I show it and the guy just like starts doing this act. He's like, oh, I donked it off again. Like it was, it's like, oh, it's so sick. You always get me. And then he gets this like big smile and goes to flip his hand. He had nine, seven and told him the straight. And he had, the second he told him the straight, he had just planned on slow rolling me. He didn't even look at the ripple. <laughs> so he's like, yeah, ha, ha, like I win. And I was like, no, I filled up. And he was like, oh. <laughs> just completely slow rolled himself. But like this kid, this guy was just gonna cross my soul. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought yeah. he was going to slow roll like enough uh, pocket fives. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. No, it, it was a slow roll while I still won, which was, made it great. But he, he saw the total, he was like, "Game over. This kid's fucked." Gets holds queen seven. Wasn't Sean Deeb, was it? It wasn't Sean Deeb, no. <laughs> no, I think Sean would know the board. It was uh, <laughs> it was a pretty special game and fun, pretty fun play. Yeah, it looks like a song is raised with a nine. And a something, Gutierrez. Because his face when he is in the he big was blind. So happy, like excited to get the slow roll. And then his face when he realized he slow rolled himself. <laughs> and Song, excuse me, Gutierrez jams with the hand we're unsure of. Ace eight suited and Song folds. I, for one, like the fact that Chris Brewer is trying to talk to the people at the table, pass the time, make new friends, share a few laughs. I always find that it is nice when somebody takes the lead at the table on starting conversations, especially in a tournament that's as big as this one, and it's a high pressure situation. A lot of people here aren't used to that. It, it does break the ice in the sense of, I don't have to focus on the talking, but there's somebody doing it, so it doesn't just feel but so But what if they're trying to talk so to quiet. you? Do you participate fully? Do you give one or two word answers? Uh, it just depends on the mood I'm in. Sometimes I, I'll engage a little bit and then I'll kind of go into my zone. Um, but most of the time I'm always going to answer or, you know, continue the conversation a little bit. I saw Griffin really pestering Spraggy yesterday. Spraggy was giving him the old like, uh-huh, yeah, uh-huh, <laughs> hmm. Brewer making it 6,000. Tour with eight big blinds. And is gonna defend, okay. Seems like the kind of thing you defend and if you catch a piece, you go with it, but no piece. No piece for Brewer either. Turk checks. Brewer bets, Pateur folds. And Pateur now left with just six big blinds. Debu Song, 14, and Gutierrez, 25, 28 for Marguerite. 
32 for Baumstein. Everyone not very comfortable unless you're John Howlett or Chris Brewer right now. It is quite incredible that this was playing super deep pretty much all the way through day one and the first half or the first couple of levels of day two. Now a sub 50 big blind average. 406 players remaining right now, still waiting for the prize money to be confirmed. We think we're looking at a field size of 1,014, but that'll be verified by Toby Stone shortly. Um, one thing that we do know is, again, to ensure that we make the money on day three and not tonight, it is going to be a six-level day rather than an eight-level day. So we will finish at the conclusion of level 14. So that means... 30 more minutes on the clock, break, two more levels, done, dusted, off air, to the restaurants, to the bars. You know, I actually haven't made my way to the bars very much this trip, but... Because they're so expensive? <laughs> yes, that is definitely a big part of it. But, you know, now that I'm out of the PSPC, I feel like tonight is going to be my night. Got to spend that big BSOP PSA money. <laughs> Neither player with a club here. Margette's still ahead with the sevens. Contempt007 says, did Joe ever pay out on his dinner bet? Time to cash in, Maria. I would. I would do it tonight if you want, Maria. What do you guys think? You could really make it painful. But I would want to pick. I've already eaten at Katsuya twice, so no, that's Wait, a no-go. What is this three, caveat wait, three that times. you get to pick when you owe me dinner? I want to go either to the Italian place or to Marcus. Mmm. Both sound pretty good, actually. Or the Chinese place. No, I was there last night, so I'm vetoing that for sure. Seems like a good spot for Brewer to finally bet now that he feels like he's made a straight and perhaps can get a little bit of value from non-flush hands. Stapes dodges another one. <sighs> Let's sort it out during the break, guys. We'll, 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 we'll sort something out. I might not run good at poker, but I run real good at dinners. Life, Joe. The word you're looking for is life. Yeah, I do run real good at life. I, I do not condone anybody letting Joe off the hook. This is all I have to say for this dinner. He's owed me long enough. The thing is, it needs to go through that cycle where it becomes so old and tired that everyone's sick of it, that it then goes on so long that it becomes funny again. Mm -hmm. So we're still having this conversation right. in 2025 about how Joe still, still owes you a dinner. I think we're closing in on a year. Yeah, it's hilarious. <laughs> it's a great story. Baumstein in the big with ace four suited, although something must have happened before that or we wouldn't be on him right now. <laughs> he would have won the pot. Chris Brewer raised to 6,000. Hey, there it is. Is that a re-raise from Scott in the big blind? There you go, that's one for you. Yeah. The re-raise with just ace four suited. Right. That's one put for me the on the Put me on the board. Yeah, Balmstein just deciding he wants to be aggressive with this particular holding. You know, Brewer has been opening pretty frequently.
Just over 25 minutes left on this level. And there is a break at the end of this level, which will actually be the last break of the day, as we just confirmed. And I imagine Toby will inform the players in due course. Going to play two more levels today. Another two-hour session, taking us to the end of level 14. And then everyone gets a nice early finish. Happy days. Six. An early finish is a happy ending. We've dropped below 400 players, by the way. 399 remaining in the PSPC. Oh, of course, but it's announced at the very much. I'm surprised they haven't announced it yet. I think they did, in a way. I put it so that people don't uh, play faster. Pachor I, I, because sometimes it's like down to six big blinds really needs to find a spot that he feels yeah, comfortable yeah. going with. Decides to pass know, on the ace nine okay. after Hal had opened before him. The late registration is over, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's been over all since we came back from break. So it's been nine minutes. Maybe they, they will announce it in the next break. Well, well, they'll probably announce it when we come back from the next break. I think they want to announce it when everyone's in the room because they want to have the like first place is gonna be. <laughs> How much is it gonna be for first in this tournament? Five or six minutes. finding back to back time? hands five to go five. for the three bet. Five it worked one? against so Chris Brewer. They'll make it is a bit it gonna work so against Hallett? Yeah, probably 5.5. Yeah. They make it a little top, more top heavy or something. It is particularly effective to be three betting off of, you know, this 30-ish big blind stack because people can't comfortably commit too many chips, whether it's calling pre or, you know, four bet shoving or something, because if you four bet and Baumstein goes all in, then obviously, you know, that ace five here isn't going to be the best of it, but how it does manage. Whatever, 4.1 to find the four bet <laughs> with sourdough. Pretty great, pretty great. I was uh, obviously somewhat skeptical of the 7-3 yeah, no, offsuit I, call on the big no, blind, but he knows how to work the sourdough. Like, you know, that maybe, I don't know, maybe a bigger house for the yeah. dog. But for the dog. <laughs> no, I don't, ha I don't have enough, but you I... You can move, move to the dog. The dogs get their own house. <laughs> it's a very large you know, dog house. Getting, getting a bigger house. But still, I love my place. And so my, I wouldn't yeah, change, but I think the dogs would appreciate having even bigger... Uh, yeah, I mean, I'd buy a house, I guess, but I wouldn't, like... My day-to-day -day life would be the same. Exactly. I wouldn't change anything, really. Who let the dogs out? Woof, I mean, I get much woof, 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 woof. Yeah, exactly. In New York, I just get, I just go from 600 square feet to 1,000. Yeah. <laughs> and I probably will play more 25K. Yeah. Howl at UTG with King Kong. How about you? Do oh, you have anything exciting? No, actually, I was thinking about that. I think I would, um, I would like to create a big office in Tokyo. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Because uh, I play poker, but I also make videos, and it would be, it would be very fun to have a team of people working with me. Yeah. Oh, right now you work from yeah. home and your team works remote. Yeah. yeah that would Rock and Aces says James, yeah, but, you should uh, never do that again. Do what again? I would just have a place. I sang. So we can come a to burst of what the biggest time? hit that the Bahamas has ever produced. I missed it. What was it? Who let the dogs out? Woof, if I woof, win, woof, win, woof. A song I mean, I by the Baha men yeah. <laughs> who made so much money from that record mm -hmm. that they chose to invest in this resort. <laughs> and because <laughs> it was their mother, the Baha Ma, <laughs> who raised them inspired them, supported them. They insisted that the resort be named after the Baja Men's Baja Ma. And this is how you create a legacy. The problem with renting is that it is extremely expensive for, for tourists compared to if you're a national. Um, you know, if you, Pretty nice looking flop you for Brewer, having you are forced to pair and straight draw. Hallett going for the check back. So, uh, 
and you, all, you feel a bit of stress. Exercising a little mm -hmm. pot control, mm -hmm. certainly, mm -hmm. you know, like getting that. check raised yeah. in that spot. How yeah. it would have to call, but you I wouldn't was, love uh, a lot of turns that could come off that could was, uh, make kings look a little a worse for the wear the but i think this jack of diamonds is a really it nice clean me. turn uh, the sofa was like this i moved, moved it a bit and i like it so like that, you know. uh, well that's a little dirty so, so dirty. Oh, this game can be so stupid sometimes. I think the good news is, is it fills every single draw from the right. flop. So, you know, I mean, I think 7,000, you might just make the cry call, but certainly you're not going to lose a big pot with this type of run out when you have kings. Goo! Twenty minutes left on the clock until the break. There's just no wind. They have like no wind control at all. They just... just out of interest, um, okay. yeah, yeah. are we changing feature table when we get to the break? Yeah, I think. Yes, so. apparently we I, are. I, I'll allow I it. never claim to like know the mole cuts, but people I know who claim to, they as well. How's it going? Meanwhile, a new player has just arrived at the table, taking the seat recently vacated by Patrick Chambers. This is Connor Rash. He's bringing a 64 big blind stack, just shy of 195,000 to the feature table. They're like pretty high quality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I think I watched, uh, yeah, you like connected it to one of your one at once videos or something. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, that's wild. <laughs> that might have been like 2018 or something, I think. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. was four years ago. Tom C gets yeah, in touch on squad. YouTube to say, I thought I got your name like wrong, Joe. I could have sworn your name was Stapes. Then I saw Stapleton, thought it was a different now, person. Yeah, I, I, and then I, I mixed them up. Oh, no, no. <laughs> I didn't mean it that way. Yeah, I know, I, I, what? <laughs> Just thank him for his comment. Thank you for your comment. No, I, I remember it's funny like, because oh, is, like, I call you Joe to people and people have no idea who I'm talking about. But then when I'm like, oh, well, Stapes. And they're like, well, yeah, of course, Stapes. It's also if you say Stapes to the people I know outside of poker, they don't know who you're talking about. That's true. Yeah, I did a video with like, it depends how big it's a video. Rash wasting, wasting no time. Yeah, let's not be rash here. <laughs> uh, a big video of even more. Limped pot, blind versus blind so far. Neither player wanting to bet. I feel like Brewer, when we first picked him up today, had something like 80,000. Now he's more than tripled up. And he was playing pretty fast and loose when he didn't have a huge stack. And it feels like he's reined it in now that he does. I, I wonder if that's by virtue of the fact that he is a super high roller regular and wasn't as interested when he had a shorter stack. Sometimes it makes things difficult to do. So confirmation, guys, that there will be a new feature table for the last session of the day. A few Platinum Pass winners at that table, including Clement Alloy, one of the Platinum Five, one of the OG Platinum Pass winners from Barcelona 2019. Andy Wilson, Bowie Effect, plus Alejandro Lococo, Papo MC, Ana Marquez, and... Uh, <laughs> Are so many people trying to do very nice things. Yeah. Um, you need to put effort into it if you want uh, 
And confirmation that we will, after the break, play two one-hour levels. And then we will conclude the day. I, like, was teammates with in college and stuff. They had, like, huge issues with that because of these super competitive, like, hold-walking people. But, like, they always expected themselves to be, like, the best at everything. So it was, like, if they ever just did, like, good. Couture facing they, like, an open from out. under the gun. <laughs> But it was like an interesting thing. Uh, we've we've like seen Pator already have good. to pass up a few spots that he deemed oh, marginal for his stack, but it looks like this one is going to be good enough for him to go with and certainly lacks fold equity, but is slightly ahead against the King Ten of Hearts. Wow, just had an update. Six of the eight players at that new second, at that new main feature table I just went through, six out of the eight are Platinum Pass winners. Day woo! Yeah, the problem here for Song is that if you call and it gets back to Gutierrez and Gutierrez shoves their stack in the middle, then you can't really call. You don't love it with ace jack against a 23 big blind stack. So that's why you see Song just give up the ace jack. That is a call and we are off to the races. This is a coin flip that Ready Patur needs to win or he will be KO'd. He's at risk with sixes. Theros, Elias Gutierrez has King 10, has the overcards. Like a Bahama Mama versus a Pina Colada. One of these two things has a slight mathematical advantage. Coconut. The flop is Queen, Queen, Deuce. Latour's sixes are holding. Right now, Gutierrez has six outs. Six cards that Patur has to fade to survive. Eight of diamonds on the turn. And now that's nine outs for Theros. Nine cards for Patur to fade. Kings, tens, eights. It's a ten on the river. And ready, Patur is ready to leave. Good luck, guys. I'll miss Ready Patur. Always ready for action. That's going to take us down to 384 players. As we get into the last 13 minutes of this level of play. I mean, it was unfortunate to bust the way that I did. I was, I was uh, doing pretty well, I had a nice stack, and then uh, lost two flips and out. But, uh, I mean, it's, this is the first uh, live event I've ever been to, and uh, honestly, it's just been so much fun. I've never been to any live poker event before. I've only ever played live poker twice. So, I mean, it's just an insane experience I've had. The first hand, I was a little bit shaky. I picked up my chips, and I was shaking a little bit, but uh, I got that through, like, got, like, won the hand, and then... Uh, after the first hand, it was just just whatever, man. I was just just me and a bunch of other regulars. You know what I mean? I'm just, it's I just 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 having fun. You know what I mean? I was ex I was excited to be on the feature table just because there's a lot of people in Twitch chat who know me. So I just uh, you know it'd just be nice uh, for a bunch of people to see me play. So I was very excited. I would love to come back and play an event like this. I'd never played a like I say live poker before, but now when there's an event in the UK or something like that, I'm going to make sure I go like when. Like when there's events happening, I'm gonna make sure I go and play some live poker because it was just so much fun. I always was a bit anxious, but and I never attended any live event. But now I'm just gonna make sure if it's in the UK, I will be attending just, just for fun. It's just uh, it was so much fun. Who dat? Dat Paddy eliminated a short while ago, but other platinum pass winners still in the hunt include Andy Barham, who won his pass in London at a moneymaker tour event in 2019, Richie Robb, winner of Dare to Stream. Apparently he likes calamari pizza. That is just wrong. Yeah. <laughs> Daniel Summer hanging in there. That is Niklas Tum, known as Flushy. 
who won Felix Schneider's stream contest. More Platinum Pass winners to talk about. Franco Pistali, an Argentinian player who runs a charity helping underprivileged children. That's nice. Lovely. Then we have EPT dealer Jerome Moreau. Not wearing that T-shirt today. <laughs> he won his Platinum Pass playing spin and goes, as did Abel Las Obras. He's a Spaniard who actually lives in Ireland. Tom Parsons, he's been a guest on Poker in the Ears. Carl Robinson works on an oil rig in the North Sea. That is Adam Neal, who's in a hand against Brian Kim. And looks like Adam has just won a decent pot. Joe and I played the game against Adam at the Hippodrome recently, a Platinum Pass meetup game. Back to the feature table. We got our boy, Scotty Baumstein. Having a think. So this hand has gone to the river. Scott was the pre-flop aggressor. It's checked on every street until the river. Chris Brewer has bet 16,000. Scott calls, and Scott Baumstein showing ace king for top top, ace jack for Brewer. Baumstein's going to win this pot. Big deal for Baumstein with that stack. Yeah. So what's Scott playing right now? Around 40 big blinds. Just to clarify, because I see a little bit of chat going on on YouTube. We cannot bring specific players to the feature table. So, for example, if there's an empty seat, we can't go, oh, there's Spraggy with tons of chips. Let's just move him randomly to the feature table. The tournament staff administer the draw. They administer the seating assignments. We then pick a table. Numerous considerations. Obviously, we want a table we think is going to be interesting. But we also have to be conscious of the breaking order. If tables are likely to break, if those tables are effectively going to be non-existent and those players reassigned, we can't do that mid-level when they're on the main stage. It creates an absolute mess. Every once in a while, though, Spraggy's table will break. And randomly, correct. Spraggy with a ton of chips. I mean, it's not, it doesn't happen very often because, first of all, Spraggy almost never has a lot of chips. But Spraggy sometimes does just end up at the feature table, or someone else with a big yeah. name does end up in that empty seat. And I have to apologize, uh, Maria. Someone has written in on Twitch and it says, let Maria talk more. So I apologize <laughs> for wow. not letting you talk. I mean, I do feel a little stifled by well, you, Stapes, but uh, well, now that somebody's been spoken been up for me, yeah. I'm, <laughs> yeah, I'm liberated. <laughs> it is always incredible when we do have such a big starting field, yeah. how lucky it almost feels like we get with the table draws in the sense of who gets put together. Like even, you know, yesterday, the very first one with Ramon and Alex Botez, it just seemed like, what a dream. Um, but no, it, it is not rigged in that sense. I mean, it sometimes you run good, sometimes you run bad. Yeah. Um, we're trying to showcase as many players as we can. You also have to remember, and I think this is worth highlighting, especially for a Twitch slash YouTube audience. 
This is primarily a TV production. We are going to be making a series of shows from the PCA and the PSPC, and television is going to dictate the lineups, and then the live stream gets to kind of feed off what we're doing for TV. So Brewer opened in early position with King-7 suited. Theros is called on the button with Ace-10. Scott Baumstein folding the big blind, heads up to the flop. James, are you downplaying our role and existence in this? 100%. Yes. What I'm not doing is downplaying my own role. Someone said earlier on, I have more influence than I'm letting on. Not over how the tournament is run, table draws, seat assignments. That is completely left to Toby Stone and his team. And it would be completely wrong if anyone from the live stream slash TV production had any influence over that whatsoever. Flop went check, checked. Brewer kind of feeling like that flop favors Gutierrez, Gutierrez's range a little bit more, especially because Gutierrez has the knowledge that Brewer has been fairly active. Gutierrez on the flop felt like there was quite a bit of showdown value with the ace high and with the board pairing on the turn still feels like that showdown value is there and river and ace Dobfin asked a good question, actually. Are they breaking tables in a known order, like you know the next table to break? Absolutely. The tradition is to break high to low, so the highest number will break first. And again, the reason I bring up the TV thing is to make TV shows, to make edited highlights, you need some stability. You need to have a feature table for a decent number of levels. So we really need to avoid most of the high-numbered tables. Somebody in Twitch chat says, now it feels like Joe's voice is being suppressed. No, it's just oh, that hello. Joe needs to blow his nose. It's going to be very quick. <laughs> There's no, nobody could suppress <laughs> Joe. Nobody could hold him down. Just allergies. Looks like we have a new player at the feature table. Ooh. Colton Blomberg from the United States of America. Welcome to the main stage for one or two hands because we're about to hit the break and then we'll have our new feature table for the last session of the day. So he was about to play but he couldn't. And everyone at the table started talking about how he was such a good player that they couldn't get a chip out of him. I will say that even though it does seem like Brewer has been opening pretty much every hand, he hasn't been too out of range. You know, a lot of the hands are very reasonable opens, especially off of his stack size. And, you know, as it has been mentioned, a lot of players at this table are on the shorter oh, side, yeah, yeah. Long which time just makes it, it <laughs> Not too long. a better Not too long. spot for Brewer. Why would you stop? Slightly wider. Yeah. I mean, as I mentioned earlier, he's more or less tripled his stack from the start of the day today. M, B, N. I would be happy to just be in there with a nub right now. <laughs> yeah, I'm just trying to move now. Give me a well, chip and a chair. <laughs> just tell me the hand Just, really just say big punch. Just say I love it when you use my catchphrase. Cut off open, button calls. I call big blind, 853, two hearts. I okay. don't jam 
Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Kim Mason right. asks, what is the yeah. overall rating of Baja Mar no, no, experience a, from one to five? Was, I would uh, give it a five plus a 15% gratuity plus an $8 split check yeah, fee. You, know, you off like 10 bags or something, right? 20% sales tax. 20% yeah. sales tax. So, so on a scale of one to five, I'd give it like an eight. You forgot you the cool optional tip. You get, like, the middle guy oh, I always add a tip. So a 10. Something that you want to hold. He... It is nice AF, though. Best one made at the table right there. Absolutely. Welcome <laughs> to the table. <laughs> Blomberg won a pot. He's going to win like 33, at least 33% of the pots he's playing. Too, right? He's at the feature table yeah. for. Yeah, that'll be a nice yeah. stat to share nice with people once nice. he that gets moved off of it. <laughs> Ainsley wants to know if Baja Mar is better than Atlantis. As long as uh, our event's being held here, yes. <laughs> Howlet opening the last hand. Nine, eight suited? I can buy them. Uh, how much? Six. Six. And Rash is out. Raise yep. and take it. Howl it, do it. And I guess that is going to bring us yep. to the end of this level, to the end of this session, and take us to the last break of the day. A reminder that we're going to play two more levels today, so two more hours of action from day two of the PSPC. During the next session, They're going to move for us. we will have the prize pool and payouts yep. confirmed. Expect that announcement uh, yeah, from Toby yeah, Stone yeah. on the other side of the break. Plus, we are going to have a new feature table. Six out of eight of the players at that table are Platinum Pass winners. But here's how it ended for the players we did have on the FT. Oh, dear. Daewoo Song in the danger zone. Danger zone! Cute. Only one. Decent stack, Chris Brewer, 56 bid. We're going to 2,000, 4,000 when we come back from break. Blinds are getting bigger, the stacks are getting shallower. So join us inside of 80 minutes for more action from the PSPC. Well, let's stay out on the field. Athanasios Polychronopoulos has gone to the turn against T. Nguyen. She bet 17,000 on a king, queen, queen, nine board. A couple of spades out there as well. Polychronopoulos calls. The river card is the ace of spades. That completes a lot. He checks. She bets 50,000. And Polychronopoulos shoves. This seems serious. It is all in to call. Maybe struggling with a flush on a paired board. She folds ace queen. She folds a full house. What? And she's right. Oh my goodness. She deserves a show there. Yeah. How do you fold that? Very nice fold. Well, let's check in on Jason Somerville, who is facing a bet on the flop from Alexandra Dezuta. Ten nine seven all diamond flop. Jason is all in. He's been called. Well, he has the nut flush and a redraw to a straight flush. He's a ninety eight percent favorite here. Oh, 
Oh. Good luck, guys. You've got to be kidding me. Good game, guys. Does Zutra just caught running cards to make a full house? That was the nastiest thing I've seen in a long time, and I have the internet. 2% equity he had on the flop, 2%. On that note, good luck, guys. <laughs> <laughs> That's a point, yeah. I feel like we need to go back and give Jason Somerville a proper burial. Apparently not. <laughs>22 million plays 6.7 million. Ace queen for Danchev. Monster heads up. He raises, makes it 400,000. Pocket fours for Joel Mecca. And so's a pair. On. He shoves. Cool. Danchev calls. Neither of these guys are ever getting away from these two hands in this spot. This is like an action replay of the deuces against Ace King hand. And once again, we are potentially flipping for the title. Mika was a coin flip away from winning. Now he's a coin flip away from seeing Danchev crown champion. Danchev's rail calling for an ace. Mika looking for those fours to hold. Joel's dad wants to keep it low. But there's an ace on the floor. Danchev takes the lead. Joel Mika needs a four. This could be the final hand of this final table. The turn card is a 10. And Dimitar Danchev is now a 95% favorite to go one better than EPT8 San Remo and claim victory on the tour. It's a seven, Danchev's done it! Dimitar Danchev is the champion of the PCA 10 main event. Right now, Dominic Panker has a big chip lead over Mike McDonald. He's first to speak. He has ace deuce. Pretty good hand, heads up. Here comes the raise. Half a million. Mike has 7 4 suited. Definitely a hand he can call with, even though he's short. He can most certainly see a flop with this hand if he likes. 
Owen. McDonald shoves! Or he can see all five cards, maybe. Uh, can't please, but... I think this would actually be a loose call, given what Mike's shoving range should be. His range is mostly better aces and pairs. Ace two's not doing well against those hands. Uh, call. Call. Panker calls! Sorry, I didn't mean to slow down. Pardon me? Didn't mean to slow down. No, no, that's perfectly fine. This could be it. It's pretty much a flip. And if Panka wins, he is the 2014 PCA champion. Come on, you better be a lucky dealer. Technically, it'll be lucky for someone. Jack five deuce. Panka now a three to one favorite. Big whip for Mikey. Lump in throat time. McDonald looking for a seven or a four. That's a seven! Yeah. Wow. Seven of hearts. Well played. No joking. Don't sound very bad. Play on, players. Don't sound very bad. Mike set for a double up unless the river card is an ace or a deuce. Deuce. It's an ace! is the first ever Polish winner on the tour. Congrats, Dominic, but I am just gutted for Mike McDonald. And Panka now number one on Poland's all-time money list. Really sick start to this kid's career. Handled himself like he's been there dozens of times before. Thank you. Action on Schultz. King Trey. He raises to 350,000. Fine. 10-4 suited for Diego Ventura. And he'll defend. Calling's fine, sure. It's heads up, come on. Oh, Ventura pairs his four to become a big favorite in this hand. He's playing in flow. He's checked to the pre-flop aggressor. <clears throat> See back coming. Aggressor's gonna aggress. 365,000. Diego should certainly call. It's hard to flop a pair. He does call. The better part of 1.5 million in the middle as we go to the turn. Which is a king, so we see the percentages do the big switcheroo. Schultz, now an 89% favorite. And Kevin shan't be slowing down now. He is gonna hope that whatever Diego called flop with, he's also gonna call the turn with. More than half the pot, 775,000. Now I don't think Diego should necessarily be calling. Bottom pair is not so hard to make at this point. Unfortunately, this probably looks like a good card to bluff at. Diego does call. We now have a three million chip pot, and we're heading to the river. It's a six pairing the board. No help for Ventura. He's checked. Probably, hopefully, surrendering. Kevin Schultz deciding now whether to value bet his king. I think he's already decided to bet. I think he's trying to figure out what strength hand Ventura has so he can see how much to make it. Well, that is 900,000, roughly a third of the pot. Might look weak. Do you think Ventura is considering making a hero call with? Just a four? He's counting out chips. Rolling. Oh, wow, he shoved! Wow is right. How much is that? Diego has just check-raised to over 3.1 million. I like the idea, but the raise actually isn't for very much. Sick. Kevin might have to call if he thinks they're chopping or just based on the fact that this could look like exactly what it is. A desperate bluff attempt. call here would be totally justified well we can see that Kevin Schultz has the best hand 
And if he calls here, this heads up battle is over and he has won the 2015 PCA main event. Kevin's thirsty. I'm parched and I'm not even in the hand. Diego's doing a great job of keeping composed. I have no idea how. This decision is for one of the biggest and most prestigious titles in poker. This decision is worth $500,000. He's done it! Uh, Kevin Schultz takes it down! Nice call. Well deserved. The skydiving American pro is the 2015 PCA champ. Is Tony Gregg going to have another runner-up finish in the PCA? He's called here with ace-eight. Mike Watson checks his option with seven-four off. Well, the flop brings top pair for Greg. Flush and straight draws for Watson. It's practically a coin flip. You would not have expected there to be a collision on the flop between these two hands, but somehow the poker gods provide. Tony Gregg bets 400,000. Seems like a pretty obvious spot for a just call. call when you can raise 1.2 million from Watson. This raise puts Mike in a really awkward spot if Tony shoves. He'll pretty much have to call and it's a weak hand as far as calling hands go. Let's see how Tony responds. All in. Greg's going with it. Oh Mikey. What have you done? I think I know what Mike has to do, but don't forget, he's making a decision for one of the biggest titles in poker. Hard for him to know that it's pretty much 50-50 here. That it would be correct for him to call. He does call! Here we go. Let's flip that coin. This is a good one to see for you. A really good one. <laughs> really good one. Mike has 12 outs twice. This is why they make a deal. I can't really picture you holding up 7 4 off for the winner's photo, you know? <laughs> oh, it's too dirty. It's <laughs> a great hand. You need a prettier hand than that. Gotta build my image. <laughs> if Mike hits, we have a winner. Just don't turn me dead like you did to uh, Philip. That's true. Offsuit 9. Just. Yeah, you can turn a pair or something. He does turn a pair. Well dealt. Yeah. <laughs> Mike Watson now has 16 cards he can hit to win the PCA. Fours, fives, sevens, and hearts all working for him. That's a lot of outs. Is it too many? The river is a heart, and that means it's over. Seven, four in the winner's photo. Here we go. Yeah. Tony Gregg is a runner-up again. Mike Watson wins the PCA 2016 main event. Mm -hmm. The real Ampropolu is now massive chip leader with more than 15 million. Sean Buchanan on the ropes with 2.4 million. Fewer than 10 big blinds. He is in big trouble. King five on the button. He limps. Real Lampropoulou with 10-7 of clubs. All in. She shoves on Sean. Probably hoping for a fold. But when she does get looked up, she's going to be a dog. He throws in a single chip. That's a call. On their backs. One more very flippy situation. Once again, Sean Buchanan has the slight advantage, but this time he is the at-risk player. Let me win this one. <laughs> no, please. I won. <laughs> she won million. It's more fun to keep playing. It was enough fun. <laughs> The flop. 
It's 10 high. Looking real good for the fun to come to an end. Maria is a four to one favorite to win the PCA. Deuce on the turn. Sean has five outs. Unless there is a king or a five on the river, we have a winner. The river card is a nine. Maria Lampropoulou is the PCA champion. <laughs> Good game. Played well. <laughs> Good job. She played incredibly well the entire length of this tournament. The main event trophy, one million dollars, and the platinum pass are all hers. Sean Buchanan, the runner-up, for nearly 673k. Welcome back to the Bahamas and the Pokestars Players No Limit Hold'em Championship for what would normally be the midway point of the day, but a shorter day on day two. Just two more levels to play, two more hours of poker, and then day two will be in the books. These are the chip leaders right now. They do include Connor Beresford and Sammy Calipuro as a platinum pass winner. Huh. 373 players remaining right now and a new lineup on the main stage. A new feature table this session. Six of the eight have platinum passes, including Papo MC, Bowie Effect, Philip Grusom, Clement Alloy. Plus, Anna Marquez is back at the feature table. Some very shallow stacks here. Most of the players, sub 20 big blinds. Blinds now 2K, 4K with a 4,000 big blind ante. I'm James Hartigan. Alongside me is Nick Walsh. Hello, James. Thank you so much for having me. So, yes, Nick, these are the players we'll be watching for levels 13 and 14. I believe that's the levels we're going to be playing before we conclude the day. And tomorrow, you know what it is, world-famous bubble coverage. That's the day when we will make the money in the PokerStars Players No Limit Hold'em Championship. But, of course, what we're really wanting to know is what that money's gonna be. How much is a min cash? How much for first? How many players are gonna get paid? We are pretty certain at this point in time that we saw 1,014 total entries, 1,014 players. And we're about to get confirmation of that. And we're about to get that all important prize pool information. Apparently, it has been calculated. It has been verified. It has been audited, and now tournament director Toby Stone is down on the floor to give us that information. Attention, PSPC players, we have a confirmed prize pool for you. We had 1,014 entries into this tournament, generating a total prize pool of $24,843,000. We will be paying 175 places. 175th will receive 35,000. 100, the top six finalists will each become a millionaire with the six receiving just over $1 million. And the winner of the PokerStars Players Championship 2023 will go home with $4,053,200. The prizes will be up on the screens shortly for you to review. Thank you very much for your attention and enjoy the rest of your tournament. Thank you, Toby Stone. He'll be back tomorrow for the Stone Bubble. Min cash in the PSPC, $35,100. 175 players are going to make the money. And confirmation, Nick, that all six finalists will become millionaires with $4 million up top. Yeah, I mean, just so exciting that we get to crown, or create, I should say, six millionaires at the end of this PSPC 2023. And of course, six figure scores for most players leading up to the final table itself. And can you imagine free rolling this event 
and min cashing for thirty-five thousand one hundred dollars, pure profit. Yeah, absolutely, one hundred percent profit, and uh, a lot of players will be very happy with the min cash, let alone one of those top six millionaire spots. And yes, deals will be allowed, just like they were in the PCA main event. So now the payouts have been confirmed. There's just the small matter of resuming play. 373 remaining from 1014. Field ticket in place in the top right hand corner of your screen. I'm really excited for this table, James. Lots of big names out there, including our very own Papo MC Lococo. And my friend Andy Wilson as well. The official Bowie effect having an absolutely stellar couple of months. Now, obviously, I support all the Platinum Pass winners, but there will always be a special place in my heart for the first five. The Chase Your Dream qualifiers who won their passes in Barcelona in the summer of 2019, Clement Alloy, is in the same seat that Adrian Vinuela was sitting in yesterday. Clement, I want to see you do well, buddy. We need to see you chip up because he's only got 17 big blinds right now. Yeah, I'm just looking down the lineup here and only one, sorry, excuse me, two players are above average. We have a 13 big blind stack from Vas, Marquez, 16, Eloy, 17, Grusium, 17. Lots of shorties, James. Um, a few of them I would consider near danger zone. I think Vas could certainly be there. And uh, yeah, really interesting to see, see how this is going to pan out. It certainly is the rich and the poor on this on this table that we've uh, we're about to watch. Uh, you highlighted the average stack right now, Nick, is 163,000, which is below 50 big blinds. Things are getting shallow, and we expected this to happen as we do get closer to the money. So a reminder: 175 are going to get paid. That means roughly 200 players, 198, if I'm going to be precise are going yeah, to we leave have with huh? nothing. You and me, we have an advantage. Yeah, also a big shout out to my friend, Anna Marquez. Oh, yeah. Actually we lived in Brighton for a short no, time, we have James. Advantage. Oh, okay. That's where we what met and good friend of mine. Oh, okay. Really, really cool to see her getting close to the oh, money, but huh? she does have some work to do. 16 big blinds I'm, and I'm a dream. With the <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> So cards are in the air, and the action's going to start oh, on Alejandro Lococo, yeah. Papo yeah. MC. Yeah. Yeah, this guy really burst onto the scene. Absolutely smashes it every time he plays the game. Not just a rapper, definitely a player. Had some amazing results right out of the gate. And he is UTG. We get to see what a stylish fold. Yes, style points. Blinds you go, no, Coco. Are 2,000, 4,000 with a 4K big blind ante. Next level is 2K, 5K, which will be the last level of the night. Action has been folded to Clement, who's got ace nine of spades. Let's it go. Wow, that is really, really unexpected. 17 big blinds doesn't want to get involved with the ace nine of spades. I feel like that's probably 100% VPIP there. Grusium here, 17 bigs, pocket fives in the cutoff. Might be tempted just to ship, James. Although, not 100% certain if he wants to take the risk just yet. Five's definitely a little bit of a weird one. He does opt for the push. I think it's fine. I mean, raising just feels bad. Folding feels bad. And look at Mark, my man. Mark Rajan deciding whether to really call it off here. Very similar stack size to Gruesome. Decides to let it go. So now it's Give round to no. Jolt Vass in the big blind. He no. folds as well, and Gruesome's we shove gets through. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, Mark, definitely an accomplished online player. See him a lot on the mean streets of PokerStars. But uh, 
this pot going to the fives. The push is effective, gets folds up to 20 bigs now. Philip Grusiam. No discount. Those of you interested in seeing the overall standings, the chip counts, or getting updates <laughs> on the outer tables, that information is available at Poker News. Chip counts are available in the PokerStars Live app. Again, as ever, spoilers are a factor. The stream is on a 30-minute delay. Yeah, as I mentioned, that's Andy Wilson, a.k.a. Bowie Effect Online. Had a really stellar couple months. Won absolutely heaps at the end of last year and the start of this. So he's on a real tear right now. And obviously sitting there with 61 big blinds, 247,000 as we get closer to the bubble. Folding around now, Eloy opening queens. In fact, all in. Yep. So him fold the ace nine suited. It's triangle time with the queens. Yeah, I wonder if maybe just the open with the queens would have been better. I mean, if he's folding ace nine suited, James, maybe this is also a little bit, a little bit of a scared push as well. Doesn't want to take any risks, but also limiting his ability to get value from weaker hands. He's only going to yeah. get called by a relatively strong range for uh, for that many bigs from that position. Uh, Schweinflu on Twitch says, please tell me my guy Dat Paddy is still in. I can't tell you that. It's I'm so sorry. It's because of her on the TV table. They almost didn't yeah. let me get in the TV table. <laughs> <laughs> they made me take my shirt off. Like, what the fuck? Oh. They made me take my shirt off. Really? Well, one of the caveats when you're making productions for TV is that broadcasters won't let you on the airwaves if you have any branding for unregulated sites. Andy Wilson, under the gun, opens to 8K. My friend Mark here in the hijack, <laughs> ace seven of diamonds, let's it go. Uh, ace four is not ace. Huh? Yeah, yeah, ace. I know, I know. <laughs> Voss on the button, Trey deuce of spades. So I can like pretend that they got it wrong this time. No, that you can always <laughs> yeah, you can always do that trick. Yeah. But it's more dangerous. You. you go though, Coco. He's gonna make the call here and try and flop a set. Both players relatively deep given oh. the stage of the tournament we're at. 10-6 of clubs for Menzel. Certainly a hand that he could consider coming along with. It's just two big blinds total, plus there's additional dead money for the big blind ante. I think very frequently you just complete here, uh, sorry, just call here and you go three ways. He does make the call. Andy currently out in front with the queen jack off. Board is king high. Sorry, Trey's out in front, excuse me, pre-flop. How silly of me. Mm -hmm. And Trey's still the best hand now on the flop. Andy Wilson actually has the best equity here, of course. Threes could easily get counterfeited. Well. No. Three checks, five of hearts in the turn. Another low card. Just wondering if uh, Papo is going, ah, maybe the trays are good. Maybe I need to try and bet to try and, you know, get some value from some ace highs, some queen highs, maybe some diamonds, maybe some straight draws in the turn, that sort of thing. Does bet and takes it down just like that. I think for the most part, you just want to take it down right then and there. Obviously, betting for protection, James, is a form of value betting, but uh, also to deny your opponent's equity as well, which is why we use the term. Yesterday was warm up. I was wondering, it must be 
Take a look at our feature table. Chip counts there. Menzel now 284K. Voss came into this feature table the lowest, still the lowest. 12 big blinds. I want that at home. Looks hard to yeah. handle. No? He's gonna tripping, fall. Man. He's gonna yeah. fall. Yeah. <laughs> That's wrong, man. I'm getting dizzy just from watching. <laughs> <laughs> you are the number one. I wonder how often he falls. <laughs> He's a pro. He's a yeah. fucking pro. He's just showing off. <laughs> they will think it's a drone. <laughs> <laughs> Compliments to our camera guys down there. Three hundred and sixty eight players remaining with the action at the feature table folded to Alejandro Lococo. And Papo MC is going to raise that button. Yep, Ace Nine suited, definitely a player. Bowie, so you don't have to <laughs> definitely play. one that you want to play here. Oh, Bowie's got a nice one though in the big blind. King Queen suited. A crunchy King Queen. Itzmar asks, why is no one getting drunk? Probably because they're literally playing for millions of dollars. <laughs> Bowie's going to go for the three bet here. I like it a lot. It's basically a 4X, a little bit more. I get the impression that uh, uh, there's an all in and a call. Wow. So Andy Wilson is the at-risk player here and is behind. Will be annoyed that his suit isn't live. But at least he's got kings and queens working for him. Roughly six to four. But strictly speaking, Bowie is going to need to improve to survive. <laughs> wanted a flush suit at least. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's basically a coin flip, really. Well, oh, I was what a tease. about to say king on the flop, but then there were two aces behind it. And now Andy Wilson is down to 2%. Yeah, going to need... That's not it. <laughs> Running cards required, but dead on the turn. And we lose Andy Wilson from the PSPC. Are you like the window king, huh? Yeah. <laughs> the window king. Yeah, the window. <laughs> For you. <laughs> My face was. <laughs> hey, GG, the team pro there. Loco go. Papo MC stacking it up. Very nice hand, buddy. Yeah, yeah what a sweaty, sweaty way for it to come out, too. That's so funny. GG to Bowie Wilson. Bowie Wilson, Andy Wilson, a.k.a. Bowie Effect is what I meant to say. He exits the tournament. See you at the bar, buddy. So Papo now up over 400,000. He's playing more than 100 bigs. So obviously, we've got Max Menzel playing 70 bigs. Everyone else is short. Gruesome, 20 bigs. Rajan, 18. Eloy, 18. Marquez, 16. Vass, 12. And I think, Nick, and this is pretty representative of a lot of tables right now. Yeah, absolutely. Those big stacks definitely have an opportunity now to start leaning on those shorter stacks yeah. as you do, especially as we're getting closer to the bubble. I mean, James already mentioned so many players out there. A min cash is life changing money having qualified with a platinum pass. Right. And that's 100 percent profit. That's not 30. Was it 36 K, James? Yeah, 35 and a bit, right? Yeah. You can min cash this event. That's not 35 minus your 25K buy-in. That's 35 cash, baby. And uh, in that case, obviously, a lot of people sweating that, and you can exploit that. You can lean into onto those players even more if that's what they're sweating. 35,100. 
is what we will pay. The first bracket, the first few players eliminated. Uh, that is, by the way, when we're down to 175, and that will happen tomorrow. Day three, world-famous bubble coverage from the PSPC. Uh, Paris? Yeah. Going? Flying straight away? Just flying straight away. No, I go back to Argentina for my... my so, Mark Radgen here. So that's 5k. Eloy's got ace nine with the nine of clubs, which is relevant, of course, backdoor clubs. And thus far, been relatively snug, does decide to lay it down here. I think there's an opportunity for a float some of the time there. Um, given his stack, though, he's only got about 16 bigs behind. I think folding is totally fine as well. Don't need to get too tricky. I think so. Yeah, great stuff. Yeah. Oh no! That is the exit of Daniel Summer, another one of the Platinum Five, one of our Chase Your Dream qualifiers. Daniel Summer is out of the PSPC. I think he's gonna be huge. Huge stuff. Oh, I fear we're reaching that point in the tournament where we are gonna to start to lose plenty of the Platinum Pass winners. That Paddy gone earlier on, Danielle gone now. Oh, I'm not sure emotionally I'm prepared for it. And now we've got Jolt Vass all in with King Queen. Come on. <laughs> oh. Ace deuce for Phil Gruesome. Ace Deucem. Gruesome faults. Just a little too low in the range. Yeah, it's a pretty hand. Too many big blinds, though. Colin Capone brings us the news that Asifo, the poker tourist, is also out. Ah. So did you say another one of the Platinum Five is out? Obviously he's excited. Daniel is the first one that I'm aware of. Okay. Oh, Venuela. All in with aces. How about him? Well, he's three bet with aces. Sorry, three bet. Looks like Zerjav is going to four bet. And here we go. Now Adrian is all in. This is going to make great content for his stream. What's a podcast? I mean, that is one of my favorite lines of all time. All right, good luck. I think Bet Basie got out of the way. So it is Adrian at risk with the aces. But a big favorite here against Zerjav's tens. Queen 9 4 on the flop. Venuela, 9 to 1 favorite. 9 on the turn. Just has to fade a 10 on the river. Does so. Adrian Venuela gets a big double up. The platinum 5 live on. 251K at the 2 4 blind level. So, we know we've got <laughs> Venuela. We know we've got Clement Alloy. Mm -hmm. Daniel is out. Do we have an update on Daryl Inglis and Christoph Wolkenhorst? Man, I feel like I haven't heard a word about either of those guys in the last two days. Last time we checked, Christoph was still in. Sadly, the same cannot be said for Daryl. So Daryl Inglis, Daniel Summer both out, but we've still got Adrian, we've still got Clement, and I believe 
that Kristoff is still alive as well. It's kind of like in uh, when Watchmen, when someone's just going around killing all the superheroes. Is that the plot to Watchmen? Uh, yes. Three Sharps asks, what is the difference between the Platinum Five and regular Platinum players? Uh, there's five of them. Thank you for your question. Bed base, eight, pocket tens in the cutoff. Please tell me Sevens guy has sevens. <sighs> Ace Jack. Still good. Against the cutoff raise, you're going to think Ace Jack could be ahead. That is a call from Christian Rudolph. Jack five of Inuela, that gets folded. Seiji with king three of diamonds. He calls, getting a good price, so three way to the flop. I have exactly what his face is saying. I don't like this hand, but I'm getting a good price. <coughs> king eight deuce on the flop, so Seiji flops best. He's checked it. Are we going to get a C-bet from Sparks? <laughs> yes. Seiji, so obviously, with top pair. Not going nowhere, plus the backdoor diamonds. Does make the call. King Trey way out in front right now. Going to need to see a 10 on the turn or river if he wants to win this one at showdown. And clearly a 10 has been folded because but Basie only has one out. He hears the thunder of stampeding rhinos, elephants, and tacky tigers. Wow, very surprised to see a continuation here. I mean, definitely an opportunity to slow down if he wants. I mean, is he trying to get value from an eight or a deuce? I mean, on the flop, obviously, he's going to have a king, an eight, or a deuce a lot of the time when he calls here. One third of those really bad for your equity. Isn't, I mean, this just seems like a pretty trivial call for this pot, this relative size of the pot with top pair. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, unless he's got some omega soul read, puts him on exactly king three and thinks he's going to try and get him to fold on the river if he's queuing him up, but... Yeah, I, and I don't really see a ton of reason to raise here. I don't see a ton of reason to fold. I mean, I think what he's doing by betting nine is it looks as though he's setting Seiji up for a river shove, right? Because if he puts in nine, he'll have about a pot size bet behind. Does make the call, obviously. So if you look at the pot now, 68K, 54K behind now for Seiji. So he's telling a believable story, but potentially saving himself a few bucks if he checks the turn and then gets value bet by a king. So it still goes check, check. Yeah, I mean, the fact that he did bet the turn and used a smaller size, I think maybe trying to save himself a few bucks against the king, but then also uh, getting value from the eight of the deuce once in a while as well, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, interesting uh, turn size, though. Definitely can see some merit in that. If he checks the turn, I think Seiji realizes that he probably has the best hand and the river call is going to be significantly more and then obviously could be some bluffs as well. Although on that flop, not too many natural bluffs in my opinion. I mean, I step call a turn and then I get shoved on on the river and I then I'm like, okay, whoops, maybe I fold now. Sam Grafton Reasonably short stacked, opening with king five of clubs. Adrian Venuela folds the button, small blind is out. So round to the big blind, it is NFL Hall of Famer Richard Seymour. And he's got ace four. 
if you'd like to see more cards. Fortunately for Sam, it's not all clubs. Jack 9-6. Richard Betts and Sam. Checks, rather. We knew what you meant. Um, making it 6,000. Now, is Seymour the kind of player to call out of position with just ace high? Well, there's ace highs, right? And then there's ace high, no back doors. Yeah, right. Exactly. Make a joke, Sam. Nothing. Terrified, that's why. Stonewall. Hello, fellow teenagers. <laughs> <laughs> Going to stay with the action at the secondary feature table for a while. Down to 350 players now. Still got a level and a half to play today. With the bubble to follow tomorrow. Raised to 9,000. Such an interesting hand and not only one comment about it, lol. I don't understand it. It feels like an insult. You're banned. All right, next hand. Pretty uneventful, that one. Start on Sam Grafton. And the squid is opening here to 8,000. Only seen one of Sam's cards. Now he has the jack of clubs. And we've got Richard Seymour on the button. And we know one of his cards, the Ace of Clubs. Well, it's feeling like either a call or a re-raise. And that's looking like a re-raise. Loving Seymour's composure here. Backfield in motion. What do you think, Sam? Looks like a Rolex from here. What, Seymour's watch? Yeah. 100%. <laughs> Raising a fold. More. I forgot about the bit I did with him at the World Series that year where uh, I asked him for similarities between the NFL and poker. And then I said, all right, now get back out there. And I slapped him on the butt at the end of the interview. <laughs> and I'm, I lived to tell the tale. Survived it. So, yeah, we, it seems we've got a few dead cards in the deck that the readers are no longer picking up. So changing the RFID deck at the secondary feature table. New sitcom for Joe Stapleton. Surviving Seymour. Surviving Seymour. I, I've, I'm kind of under the impression that I'm 
unable to be killed. Because if I could, I'd probably be dead a long time ago. <laughs> like you've been invincible this whole time. You just you just didn't ever realize you had the power. My, my real theory is that I've died many, many, many times, but the only timeline that continues is the ones where I don't. I've had the same thought before, Joe. Yeah. Nine, eight for Seven Sky. Christian Rudolph, who plays as Votlos online, is going to open here. Makes it 9,000. Fold from the button. Just Sam Grafton in the big blind. He's got King Six. Sam not ridiculously deep here. Like 13-ish big blinds. Defense will go to the flop against Christian Rudolph. Does have the best hand for now. 47. Still has the best hand. However, that is the gut shot straight draw for Christian Rudolph, who's wearing the sevens baseball cap, by the way. Rudolph takes the lead on the turn, pairing his eight. Yeah, given that check on the flop, I think Sam's going to think he has the best hand here on the turn quite frequently. You know, I think 8-9 is a combination that does like to see bet this board quite often. But Sam being quite short here really needs to be careful about how he plays it because it could cost him a significant portion of his stack just to play this hand in a conventional manner. So 24K in the middle. Looks like it might be 15K. He does bet 15. Rudolph's going nowhere, right? No, absolutely not. He didn't check this flop to give up when he turned top pair with the gutter ball. I kind of feel it was a little bit off-brand for him to hit the eight on the turn. It really needed to be the seven. I mean, straight. we still have one street for it to always come seven. Just wondering if he maybe wants to pump it up right now and just get the chips in. I mean, the, what's the benefit of flatting here, really? Hmm, it's weird. Obviously, can push out some spades, can push out some 7x, can get value from some 6x. Makes the call. Seems good as well. But uh, definitely some... Pr it's always coming 7! It's always coming 7! Amazing. Seven's guy hits the 7 to make the straight. Oh, you absolute setup beauty. I love it. Last year was the year of the six, this year of the seven. We are playing the games with the flipping, and the seven toy is coming. Oh, congratulations to Sam here, but uh, that seven. Well, he was already losing, right? He was he was already losing, yes, but still, we'd love to see our boy Sam succeed and win this pot. Sam, you know the meme. Don't do it. He goes, is your, are you, are you, are you Rudolph? Oh, I should have known. Sam knows Christian Rudolph very well, knows his game very well. It's probably thinking more about that than about the meme right now, but it is hilarious that Seven's guy actually hit a seven. I six. cannot believe that. This is just the most beautiful setup for us here. That is enough to put Sam Grafton all in. Not like this, Squid. Not like this. Nah. Christian Rudolph wins that one up to 170K. No one's going to say anything on the table. Nobody. And we are going back 
to the main feature table. 341 players, 340 players remaining. And still the better part of 30 minutes to play on the penultimate level of the day. So there has been a raise from Papo MC, Alejandro Lococo. <laughs> and Sevens, <laughs> Julian Perus. <laughs> all in to win this thing. I'm gonna bring it in on the goal. Not this time. <laughs> <laughs> he wanted it so badly. I think he had the perfect that's song. That's just a call <laughs> because he wants ready. to peruse <laughs> a flop. He <laughs> <laughs> had the perfect comment, but not the perfect hand. <laughs> Rajan, Queen Six in the big blind. Faults. So heads up to that flop. King, Queen, Deuce. Seven's holding, but Lococo has the gut shot. Seven's holding, but pretty terrible board for them. And it could be even the slightest amount of pressure from Lococo gets these sevens to fold, given the stack size of Peru's. I should Coco, <laughs> Lococo. Not the worst flop here for Ace Ten. Yeah, backdoor spades got it to the, got it to the, to the Broadway straight. Tony Murphy says on YouTube, "I am rooting for my bro Adam Neal." Adam is another platinum pass winner who Joe and I got to play against at the Hippodrome recently. Uh, meanwhile, EPT 2023 just a couple of weeks away, kicking off this season of the Tour in Paris before we go to Monte Carlo, Barcelona, Cyprus and Prague. Full schedule at PokerStarsLive.com. Live streams from every event. Paris, I think it's the 22nd we start streaming. 22nd, 23rd, 24th, 25th, 26th. Yeah, 22nd to the 26th. Five days of main event coverage on the PokerStars Twitch and YouTube channels. Yeah, <laughs> but if you go to somebody like 500 years ago and you show him like a German engineering, he would say that's magic. <laughs> yeah. Right? Parkour, yeah. So it's kind of magic. T Gold AC says no EPT London is sad. Paris is trash. Lol. Whilst I understand and maybe sympathise with your disappointment at the lack of an EPT London, the second part of your statement is just plain Eight. wrong. And mildly xenophobic. Yeah. I don't like the word trash. Oh, one of my favorite hands. So, so I hear you I know why. Yeah. <laughs> 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 what, 1996 was the year I was born? Not yeah. because what you It's a good year. Think. 96. Okay, then, tell, then tell us the story why it is. See? Not because of that. Dirty, dirty so, German. So what's the <laughs> I'm hearing <laughs> of an exit in the field. Oh, we were just talking about oh, Adam no. Neal. Another platinum pass winner down. 
Oh, man, he's going to be gutted. Good friend of mine, Adam Neal, a.k.a. Payday. Meanwhile, back at the secondary feature table, nines opened. Ace Jack has three bet. Cha 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 chia. Cha 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 chia petta. And Zerzhev has called with the pair. We go to the flop, which is ace ace queen. Chia petta with the advantage. Cha 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 chia. Did you guys have chia pets? I did, Joe. I was about to ask you the same question. I got no idea what you're talking about. It was a plant that would grow in the shape of an animal, and it was called a chia pet. Huh. I think it was chia seeds. They were like terracotta pots that looked like animals, and then you watered them, and then the sprouts would grow out and give them like fur, like a hedgehog and stuff like that. That sounds pretty cool. Yeah, it was pretty cool. I think I think it could definitely have a resurgence. My parents saw my chia pet went to live on a farm. So these are the players we are watching right now at our secondary feature table. Adrian Van Whaler, the Platinum Pass winner, is the table chip leader with just shy of a quarter of a million chips. Sam Grafton, down to 30K. That's definitely considered less than 10 big blinds, which is definitely considered danger zone. Danger zone! <laughs> Buy your Chia pet now. But this a hijack, 159k in the stack. Raises to 9k. Makes it 9,000. Richard Seymour looks interested. Maybe not. 9-3 in the big folds. Seymour. 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 Heading back to the main feature table. 330 players remaining now. And we've had an all-in. Mark Rajan shove over the top of a raise from Clement Eloy. And that all-in has been called. And it's a domination situation. Clement is officially the at-risk player here. Rajan will be left with 5K if he loses. He's way behind here with Jack-10. Way, way, way behind now. Queen of Hearts. Yeah, that would be nice. No heart on the turn, and Rajan is drawing dead. So Clement Alloy is going to double up here with quads, <laughs> with quad aces. The river is just unnecessary. <laughs> Death by quads. And Mark Rajan is left with one big blind. Unlucky there, Mark. Just a few BBs. In fact, just the one, as James just said, behind the ultimate spin up, Joe. A single chip in a chair. That's all it takes is that's a all, chip in a chair. That's and I guess. So, what is notable? about Clement Alloy's Platinum Pass is that it's literally the first one. He is number one of 400 plus because he won that Chase Your Dream event in Barcelona. Only has $2,431 in live earnings and could potentially, if he can make it into the money, lock up a 35K score in the PSPC. You're still in. I am still in, indeed. Thank you. <laughs> Joe, somebody suggested PokerStar should sponsor some Chia <laughs> okay. Pets where it's like your head and then it grows like a beard. 
How do you feel about that? that I feel like I'd be ripping off Chia Petta. That was a needle, yeah. <laughs> but maybe. I like things that have my face on it. Let's not lie. Uh, chip in a chair. Exciting. French. French Meanwhile, Peruse has got the snowman. It's num num and starts the hand with 88k. Coincidence? I think not. Raises to 9,000. No, French. There are no coincidences. Coincidai. <laughs> Oh, Philip. Oh. Rusem with ace jack suited. You don't want to do that, Theodore. <laughs> Sub 20 big blinds here. Might be tempted to just get this in. But it was quite an early raise. UTG plus one. So might be tempted just to flat instead. Ace Jack seated certainly does play decent in position. Sorry to cut away from the action, but we have to get to the secondary feature table where Sam Grafton is all in. And Sam has been called. Ace Queen versus Ace Queen. Sam up against Sevens guy. Maybe the worst ace queen versus ace queen situation you can be in. He wants an all red flop. All right. Sam is now free rolling, and he loves it. It's always coming seven, by the way. It's a diamond. <laughs> so Sam will win the pot outright if there is a diamond on the river. Any other card, uh, you're going to get a vocal performance for the ages. Oh, he's really manifesting. Oh. Oh. So this ends yeah. in a chop pot. You know what they say. Everyone, Everyone loves, loves a chop pot. pot. Sing it, Grafton, sing it. He barely does it when he's with us. He ain't doing it there. Not while the cool kids are watching. <laughs> How cool would it have been if Seven's guy had sung it? That would have been cool. Very cool. Sam Grafton survives for now. Still a short stack at the secondary feature table. Average stack around 188K right now, with 325 players remaining. Oh, ticking down, 323 players remaining. All in and a call. Chapetta shoved on Sam, small to big, with Jack seven. Sam's got the best hand here, queen eight of clubs. And if the best hand holds, Sam gets the double up. He needs it. Four, four, deuce, queen high still ahead. Okay. Sam needing to fade jacks and sevens right now. Ace on the turn. Oh. Bring some opportunities. Not again. The river is an ace, so the queen kicker plays, and Sam wins this pot outright. So Sam Grafton survives, now playing a stack of 66K at the secondary feature table. And we're going to check in on one of Sam's fellow team pros. What is going on with Benjamin Spraggy Sprag? Oh, <sighs> Spraggy. Not still in. KO'd by Jeremy Osmus. Spraggy cashed the first PSPC. 
is not going to go two for two. His tweet said it was an absolute massive pot. Well, a while ago, we were hearing about how he had loads of chips. So apparently it was a 600K I, pot. It's not wow. Really oh. Side, and just to put some perspective in it, Alejandro Lococo is the chip leader at our feature table with 97 big blinds, and that's under 400K. Can you reply to Spraggy's tweet and just say no. next time? <laughs> no, I'm not replying to Spraggy's tweet. Until the stream's caught up before you kind of post it. Definitely this? not going to say that. No? No, okay. Seven's guy here, Ace King seated, opening from under the gun. But they say with a pretty ugly one. 10-7 ten. Ten, off, still playable here, of course, but. Ben. Not the strongest of hands. Does defend, seems good. Flop is seven high. Now, Bet Bese out in front, 75% on this flop. Ace King, just the two over cards in the backdoor diamonds. Out flopped by the mighty seven. What do you think of that, sevens guy? What's up? I think it's time to get some protection. Oh, wow, what we were. But basically, giving Rudolph a free card here, going to the river, very interesting. Hold on a second. Rudolph might bet the turn. Nope, checks it back. Okay, free river. I think that basically might realize he has the best hand at this point. Probably want to go for some value. On these paired boards, you do get paid off by ace highs quite frequently. Wouldn't hate to see him betting like 60% here or something like that. I think if you go too small, it looks like you just have a four or a three or a six or a seven. You want to make it look somewhat bluffy. There you go. Make it look bluffy. Oh, never mind. It was only the 4K. And gets paid off. Fair play. Just the one big blind also works, I guess. And but they say we'll rake this pot. For a minute, I thought he bet 20K, just the four. Yeah, the yellows are worth 1,000 each. The blues are 5Ks. The greens are 25K. So we're closing in on the end of level 13. Blinds will roll to 2,000, 5,000 at the end of this level. Play 60 more minutes of poker, and that will be the conclusion of day two. Been a bit brutal this level with some of the names we've lost. Starting to see the field thin significantly now. Yeah, I think the next level is going to be no different. Yeah, James kind of you kind of alluded to, to this, didn't you, earlier when we start up, started this session? Um, that just lots of players with tons of trips and lots of players with a lot, not many, and certainly plenty of danger zone situations both here and on our main feature table. Which necessitates some consolidation, and that's what we're going to see now. David Mitchell wants to know, when is James Haskin coming back into the booth? Has anyone seen him? Well, James will be coming back into the booth tomorrow morning or tomorrow afternoon when we start. Wait, who's, who's James Hardigan? <laughs> Grafton not going to get involved. Round to sevens, guy. Pocket threes. Sevens guy with threes? The world's all a muddle. Flop 777. Seven, seven. <laughs> well, oh, there it is. <laughs> it's one of them. <laughs> Seven's always coming. Trey's still the best hand. Oh, quick, quick check. Quick check from both players. Check a like a ding dong. To, 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 to you. Chris says he's just not Seven's guy. Chia Petta with the snap check again. Oh. 
Well, would you look at that? Uh, if I'm Rudolph, I'm absolutely going to try and bluff him off the chop pot here. It's so weird for your opponent to be snap checking with a queen on two streets. Yeah, they, they're just going to chop it. I, I really think Chia Petta would have done something with a queen, either flop, turn, or turn here. I think there was an opportunity to try and get him to fold the chop arena. Why bluff it when you can have a chop pot? Because you know what they say. Everyone, Everyone loves a chop, chop pot. You can't deny the people what they want. Everyone loves it. Seeing a few people asking questions about specific players. Is Rory Jennings knocking about? Yes, he is. Let's go, Rory. Rory's alive. Oh, honestly, I really want to see him go deep. Does he have any hair left? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Rory the stress ball. By the way, you know what you should be doing if you think that these in-sync performances of the chop pot are worthy of 10 out of 10. You should be voting for the stream as your fave live stream yes. in the Global Poker Awards. You know, I haven't voted yet. Should I do it? Should I walk everyone through the process? Well, the good news is the link is in the live chat on both Twitch and YouTube. So you can click on that link and then that will take you through to the voting form. Is this it here, twitch.tv slash pieface No. Mm, pokerstars.uk slash about slash responsible gaming? This is what happens when Tom takes a holiday to the Bahamas. <laughs> uh, oh, there it is. Mr. Supertash has a reasonable question here. What happens when the lower chip denominations are taken out of the turn? Hey, 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 Nick, don't ask irrelevant questions. Um, can anyone vote? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> it is a public vote. All seriousness, guys. And it's only if you genuinely enjoy this content, if you think that this is your favorite live stream of everything that's on the ballot, give us your vote, EPT Live fave live stream of 2022 as we see thus all in here with tens <laughs> i tried chat i tried with six times <laughs> <laughs> and i have voted Thank you for your vote. As part of the rules, I can't say who I voted for. But I do have a favorite live stream. A f sorry, a fave live stream. 99% sure you don't watch any other poker live stream, so I think we might have got Joe's vote. I've t I, t I tuned into a Texas Card House Live once last year to watch my own performance. <laughs> I tuned in to watch you, Joe. <laughs> well, the confidence that you ordered a drink. That no, that's, that's, that's confidence. Yeah, probably. No tactics, no strategy at all. Walk. Oh, I just realized now that GPI is my email address. That's not a walk. Not this time. <laughs> That's not a walk. Dreyfus. 
Not today. 10-9 of diamonds for Papo. And he is raised with the Grafton. Round two, the big blind. Phil Gruesome. All right, so 21-ish big blinds behind. Might be tempted to play this one aggressively, you guys. Let's see. Let's see if you are mean. He's all in. I know when you're folding. Only after. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately. <laughs> nice cast. Oh, yeah. Oh, they're nice. Really nice cast. Listen, Alejandro Lococo oh, wow. might be one of the nicest people I've ever met in my life. He actually has a heart of gold. Lovely fella. He'll murder you when it comes to a rap battle. For those of you looking at the Global, Global Poker Awards ballot, by the way, yes, we are EPT Live. All of the streams we produced in 2022 were from the European <laughs> Poker Tour, so they put us down as EPT Live, even though we haven't actually used that title since 2016. Yeah, for sure. It's the same situation. No, 6 9 just going in. Truman Smith asked, Joe, you were talking about Boston Rob yesterday. Did he make it to the tournament? He did. He made it through the day. I, I've heard rumors that he had a decent stack today. I haven't seen any bad news from him yet. Now, the problem is I can't search for a Boston Rob. His, That's not how the database works. Rob Mariano, as we have a big hand shaping up over on the secondary oh, wow. feature table. And it looks like there was... Not a ton of pre-flop betting. Did this go raise, three bet call? Robert Mariano? Robert Mariano. Still in. Still in. Yeah, Joe, I think you had it. I think it was raise, three bet call. And Richard is not too scared of this ace. Zerchev folds the jacks. Ship it to the NFL Hall of Famer as the clock ticks in to level 14. We are into the last level of the day. 60 more minutes, more minutes of poker to play at the 2K, 5K blind level with a 5K big blind ante. Rob Bear, the other player's chips in the sand. Funny, good survivor reference. Take a look here at our second feature table, chip stacks, Venuela, 268K, Grafton, our shortest still, needs the spin up for Sam Squid. Bepese makes the fold 9-6 off. They say it for Venuela. One of the two remaining Platinum Five. Clement. Adrian. We don't know about Christoph. Christoph MIA. 2KIA. But wait, Joe. Seymour wakes up with another monster. Just wow, had Kings. Way. Aces now. American Airlines. This guy sure has some big hands. Also, he's running hot. <laughs> I see more rays ing coming from Seymour. That's it. Oh, no, Venuel hasn't folded yet. Ma be yo. There's the fold for Venuela. Protecting that stack, a real nice stack to take into day three. Around 60 bigs, I want to say. What's up? Uh-oh. I think I'm going to play that. Play the sad music. Andre Akari. 
No longer in the PSPC. Everyone's favorite player whose last name sounds like a video game system, except for Larry Blintendo. <laughs> Larry Blintendo. Love that guy. Love Larry. You get two of them. Like, now you have to win, right? Yeah. Looks like we've got an all-in here at the feature table as well. And because we are out there, they're making everybody wait. It looks like the chip in a chair is finally in the middle. This is Radgen versus Lococo, excuse me. And Radgen looks like he had got it in with six tray against six six. And does not make the straight. Good game and good luck. And oh, now no longer has a chip or a chair. Radgen Mark, platinum pass holder, eliminated. I don't know what it is about this year if the structure was a little bit more amateur friendly but i do like the fact that many of the platinum pass winners made it at least to today and had a bit of a sweat to make day three because i feel like last time day one they just got mowed yeah i i would uh, echo that i feel like that's my memory of it as well but um obviously following a lot of the stories having met so many of the players going to the bahamas from their past wins um lots of them running into them in the hallways and whatnot, sort of saying, you know, confirming their chip stack going to day two. So that's what it feels like. Next hand underway. Yeah, new blinds, by the way. 2,000, 4,000. That doesn't seem new. It's 2,000, 5,000 now. Well, a 5,000 big blind ante and in case you didn't catch it, last level of the day. Average stack currently 197K. Only two players at this table with greater than average. What a boy. Max Menzel and our very own Alejandro Lococo. Speaking of Lococo, ace queen off UTG plus one, gonna raise to the min 10K. Don't you know I'm Loco? Co. Don't you know I'm Loco? Raise and take it easy. No problemo. Golden Jaguar asks, if I can walk again in six months, can I have a platinum pass for next year? Golden Jaguar, I don't want to do anything that's going to stop you from whatever it is that's going on in your life that is necessitating that you need to walk again. But PSPCs typically don't happen in back-to-back -back years. That's all I'm saying. I still want you to walk again. But I don't want to promise anything. Even if there were going to be a PSPC next year, I could not promise you a platinum pass. You know why? Because people are going to go out and start throwing themselves in front of traffic in the hopes that they will one day walk again and get a platinum pass. <laughs> And number 110, you guys, live from the Bahamas. What's the best red wine from Argentina? The best red, red wine. Well, Lamont Aloy, one of the two platinum pass, original platinum five, we know is still alive. Can you find it around the world? Yeah. Oh, cool. okay. Right here at our feature table. Maybe we should just not let them out of our sight so we don't lose them. Like Kristoff. Just wandering around somewhere out there. Probably cold, hungry. 
Yeah, probably not cold here, but you wanted it so bad and hunger is a real possibility. They didn't, they we should have given them their PSPC backpack merch with like a red flag sticking out the top. So we can find the, yeah, a flare gun. <laughs> Clement makes it 12,000 with ace queen off. Nick, do you have a special snack bracelet? Where's your snack bracelet? Did it get taken away from you? I was abusing the snacks. Really? No, that's not what happened. life <laughs> now. Uh, I forgot to put it on okay. when, I, uh, when I got out of the show this morning. Nick gets unlimited $12, $12 Nature Valley bars with his snack bracelet. I mean, that's high value. Thank you. You could free roll the PSPC with that. <laughs> kind of. 10, 8, 6, 2 pair for Vass. <laughs> With all the money I've saved on Nature Valley bars, no, I can afford to buy into the PSPC this year. Right. <laughs> Ace Queen for Aloy. So Aloy here obviously only got about 30 bigs. Vass, of course, the shorter stack though, 18, once he's made this bet. Awesome says, you talking the edible candy bracelets. Oh, yeah, what do you th what do you think this about. is? The electric daisy carnival? Like, this, we're not about plur here. Like, I'm not doing anything we're about EV. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, find your ambassador. He's been abusing abusing the snack desk. I think that would be beautiful. Aloy yeah, picks up a gut I, shot I draw on the turn it. and is going to need to yeah, hit it on the river okay. to win this pot at Green showdown. Pot, but we got another all in at the <laughs> secondary featured table. My guess is it's going to be Sam Grafton. Mild look of concern on Sam's face up against Blaz. Blaz Zerjov. <laughs> Looking a little bit blase. I like to split it. Hello, fellow teenagers. King nine is a good flop for. Oh, no, wait. Crafton is ahead. He is Queen Jack, not the King nine. River card is an eight. So Jackson eights with a queen kicker. And that's another double up for Sammy G. I've always said all it takes is a chip and a chair. I like that. Yeah, write that one down. That'll be famous one day. And Sam still has chips and still has a chair. Jack to king nine. Almost. Almost a jack to king nine. Quick recap of the chip counts of the secondary feature table. Venuela. Platinum five lives on with Venuela. Richard Seymour second in chips. Ch -ch -ch Chia in fourth. Sam Grafton in fifth. I mean, Grafton obviously just got a double up there, but that's how shallow things are right now. You can be fifth at your table and not super comfortable. See how chip, oh, come on, Vinwell, you're the chip leader. King 10, I don't know, it's probably fine. Richard Seymour, NFL Hall of Famer. Gotta say, Joe, I'm loving Seymour's work so far. Seems like he really knows his way around the poker table. Yeah, he, 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 he's one of those folks who does, loves it more. He's not just here. Right. To horse around. Is he a is he a platinum pass, Seymour? He's not, right? I think he's a DBI. I think he's a direct buy-in. That's how much he loves it. Yeah, right? Yeah, he just bought in for 25k. Just here to compete. Love it.
Not 100% he bought him, but I, I'm pretty sure. Because I was hearing rumblings of people they were inviting to play, and I think he was here before that. Sen Hordomi has asked multiple times, why is PokerStars abbreviated differently in PCA versus PSPC? And here's the answer, I don't care, you're banned. Leave me alone. Up and down draw for Seymour. He's fared pretty well in these spots where he can summy bluff and does and wins. Of course, he is dominating his opponent. Dead, dead on him. It's also called the Poker Stars Players No Limit really Hold'em like Championship, but there's no NL in it. I can see your, you you're banned again. Milo says this Joe thinks he's funny. I, I actually don't think I'm funny, but you know what I, I do think? You're banned. You're banned. Actually, I know you're banned. Thanks for coming. Next hand, 1-1-1 one, one, one on our secondary feature table. 7-5 suited for Vinuela. Nice playable hand, UTG, not so hot. I get it, in the bin. Background is Seymour. I just, I just love his composure at the table. He just looks like a boss. Like, you don't want to play poker against this guy, right? He's rocking that sweet Rolex. And he's going to fire a bet here. That's the first bet. Sorry, the second bet, excuse me, after the blinds. Rudolph, A7 off. Probably going to defend this one at least. I mean, the seven's always coming. Seven's guy in a hand with a seven. King for Trey. Gut shot draw for Seymour. And this is where we can actually start to give... Christian Rudolph some credit and not just call him sevens guy. This is a situation I wouldn't love to be in if I was Richard Seymour. Surprised not to see a continuation when he's got the gut shot there, Joe. I feel like King Trey yeah. four with a gutter is almost always going to be played as a C bet in a single raise pot. If he's checking the flop, I wonder if he wants to go ahead and fire the queen now. That's what he's going to do. 29K in the middle. I like the delayed C bet and Rudolph gives it up. Love it. That works too. I think probably you can do a bit of mixing with both. I like this one here from Far Side Chicken. Rudolph likes the Ace of Hearts because it looks like a reindeer's nose. Solid. I'll take it. Yeah, I'll take it. Heading back to the main feature table. 45 minutes left on the night. <clears throat> you won't believe it. Room number, by the way. Yeah, you don't know who is, who is room it is. Six zero nine. <laughs> room six zero nine. Yeah, really. Are we still on a sixty nine joke? I love it. That was like an hour ago. I mixed it up. That was a test up. Yeah, six zero nine. So I got mixed up. Stretch asks, how many chicken wings do people eat in one lifetime? One million? If only there were a chicken expert listening right now. I eat a lot of chicken wings, and I don't think I will eat a chicken wings in my, uh, a million chicken wings in my lifetime. Joe has a really funny <laughs> joke about chicken wings. <sighs> but you're going to have to go see him. Joe, are you doing any comedy anytime soon? <laughs> well, Nick, I'm so glad to you. You asked so weird. Here's 20 bucks. Um, February 10th, the Comedy Chateau in Los Angeles. February 17th, the, the world famous Comedy Store in wow. Los Angeles. Both Friday night gigs. Vast makes it 10,000. Are they serving wings? <laughs> I don't think either place serves wings. I think that they only serve chicken fingers because of the whole like mess of chicken wings. I think they just don't want the distraction. Seems good. Ace on ace, cutoff versus big blind. 
Just wondering if we have a, a chicken expert potentially listening in that could tell me how many chicken wings someone would eat in a lifetime. So good. <laughs> it's a very low frequency chicken wing. Not from him. I've seen him play. <laughs> Fast continuing. And the ace of clubs. And another back, you got backdoor like wheel draw, but not enough chips to mess around. That's the problem. <laughs> Sorry, Joe, that one got me. Yeah, you yeah. Just can't do it. Yep, yep, can't yep. Cuff. Besser says 17,653 chicken wings, which sounds a little too specific. It's Wiki Sean with a question I can answer real quick in between hands. Stapes, is there somewhere you want to do a comedy show that's like a bucket list place you have not performed at yet? Yes, some of the clubs in New York, actually. I've done the Laugh Factory in L.A. I've done the Comedy Store. Whoops, never mind. Grafton, all in again. Chiapetta with pocket fours, but I don't think this is going to get called. It doesn't. Uh, there's a couple of places in New York. Now, I heard they're closing down Caroline's in New York. So that one's going to be off the table. But I would very much like to play the Comedy Cellar in New York. It's, pro it's probably the one legendary place that I haven't done in New York or L.A. That there would be cool. There must be some famous ones in, like, New Orleans. Not, uh, not that I know of, but I'm not saying it's not there. But I've done the Comedy Works in Denver, which is somewhat legendary. There must be a couple of Sam Fran places that I haven't done. Um, yeah, the Comedy Cellar is, is probably, you know, is, is arguably a more prestigious place than the Comedy Store even. Arguably, not, not necessarily. Joe, 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 yeah. careful what you say on air, man. <laughs> Joe's about to get you banned from the Comedy Store. I'm banned from the Laugh Factory for that reason because I hosted there one time, David Spade headlined, and they asked me to announce their Thanksgiving Day. They do a free meal for anyone on Thanksgiving, homeless or comedian, whatever. Yeah. And I said, it's a tr long tradition here at the Comedy Store. <laughs> at the very end of a show that I knocked it out of the park. I knocked it out of the park. David Spade was on. Ken Jeong was on. Oh, I wow. opened. That's amazing. Knocked it out of the park. Closed the show by saying, thanks for coming to the Comedy Store. And I haven't been back since. That was November 2019. Damn. Oh, what a... What a moment. Action folds around to Viduela in the small blind, 9-5. Red Matrix says, Americans can eat 18,000 wings in their adult lifetime. That sounds more accurate. Seiji is going to defend the big blind. Was that a limpin or a raise? That is going to be a limpin, actually. I'm going to check the big blind. Seven, four, four, two clubs. Yeah, I think it was. Chicken wings are for people who can't handle drumsticks. Are you nuts? Yeah. There's a, a much different flavor and texture, mouthfeel to wings versus just regular sized drumsticks. Not the same. I know it's not a spoiler, for sports fan 9099. Too bad. Got a got a banner real fan probably. Sports fan at least. Seiji batting 5,000, 9-5. Not going to take one off with the gut shot. Heading back to the main feature table. Alright, this is for you to sing. Menzel. 
<laughs> the peruse, who is all in now, with ace jack on the button. Gruesome fold six deuce, and this is for not a ton of big blinds. Eight big blinds? Uh, a little more, 10 big blinds. Yep. Max Menzel, this is the absolute limit to the amount of Menzel we can have. Yeah, I want to give you the time. <laughs> I'm not good. All right. Max is calling a little light here for 10 bigs. Queen eight suited. Please, I, want, I, want, I want to sing, so hey, I don't know. Hey, sometimes. 1% frequency. <laughs> You're Queen from eight Argentina, a good right? Yeah, probably. Congratulations, World Cup. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> Where are you from? England. England. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Peru is the player at risk. Yeah, I remember. And ahead. Yeah, I think it's okay. I have. You know, one of my friends is like David Ikitai, and he loves Is that Adele Dezim's brother? So That's exactly yeah, what I was I looking for, large Farv. Yeah. King 8 4. <laughs> That's not a good sign. Menzel pairs his oh, yeah. 8. Yeah. The lamp. Peru's in big trouble now. Yep. It's like Only 24% going to the turn and river. <laughs> change the logo. Yeah. Change the logo too. All right. A Just 10 me. on the turn does give Peru's nine outs. Yep. Couple gut shots now. Oh. And there it is. Oh, the absolute <laughs> Natolas on the river. Je n'y crois pas, c'est merveilleux. A whole new world. Cute nouveau monde. A brand new place I've never been. All right. Let's do it again. Let's do it again and again. But Joe, when we're way up here, it's crystal clear that he just won that pot. <laughs> it's very clear he won the pot. <laughs> it's, the, it's the song from Aladdin, you know? Aladdin, Aladdin. Aladdin. Yeah. Aladdin. Aladdin. Sounds a lot like wow. I'm all in. Wow. <laughs> Be careful, buddy. No. No. I got it. Aladdin got is it. binding, yeah, my friend. I got it. I got it. I got it. Of course. Thank you. Uh, I don't yeah. remember how to say it in Spanish. Oh, yeah, let's go, let's go. No, I don't remember. Un mundo ideal, huh? Un mundo, I And a Marquez turn. To be all in. Of course, Papo MC knows the words. Marquez, all in now, ace and a hearts. You have to go if you want to have to sing. No, I told you. I just I'm priced in when you jam, you know? But it's though. Yeah. Think about that. That will make it into the highlights. It's like a bounty, you know? Yeah, exactly. A more of an emperor's new groove the guy. Where you, where you tell him to yeah, me too. Know? I'm just kidding. I've never seen like, either of them, like, I don't think. Like, but wait, Eloy wakes up with the ace queen the off on the like. button. <laughs> this is going to be trouble for Anna. <laughs> yes, indeed. Less than 10 bigs. He's going to give her a spin here for sure. In fact, he is all in himself oh, to try and isolate. Oh. oh, baby. Yeah, so this could go more than oh, two ways. Baby. Uh, Phil Grusom, not going to like the other card. Still a player doc behind him, though. Matthew Hunt, new to the table from the UK. Folds queen eight. Domination situation. Anna Marquez in big, big trouble. People trying to get their double ups in before the end of the night. Another absolute charmer, Anna Marquez. I hate it. <laughs> what Stop a smile. being so dang likable. She is very likable. I'm rooting for, for my friend Anna here. It's annoying. Really, really would love to see her double. King, oh. seven, six, two hearts for Marquez. That is way more equity than she should have at this point in the hand. Ten outs twice. I like Nearly she... half the deck. I like how she's not looking at the flop. Eyes closed. She knows it's coming. 13 outs. Come on, Anna. That was not one of them. How do you miss all of those? Anna Marquez Busto. 
to the disappointment of probably that. everyone at the table. Too many outs, Joe. Too many outs on the turn. It's a classic case of too many outs. Kind of fucked up the vibe, huh? Well, at least there's beer. GG Anna Marquez. See you at the bar. And Clement Alloy is now up to 32 big blinds. He plays with our love. <laughs> no, I tried to stay out of it. Other people are in, I stay out of it. Orida Dadel says, why people go all in with so bad hands? I'll take ace-10 suited against any two random cards, um, I don't know, forever, for as many times as you want to run it. Yes, indeed. I've got a follow-up question. Why people write in words with such bad thoughts? Matthew Hunt coming in strong with the re-raise. Queen Jack suited out of the small blind. Uh, uh, a hand you would three bet out of the small blind quite a bit against a late position open. Early, it's probably still okay, but less common. But I guess it's better than playing out of position. And of course, you can just win the pot pre-flop a lot of the time, so. Yeah, absolutely. Attacking that weaker range. Getting the folds feels good. Ragin says, put John Kaniska at the featured table tomorrow. Yeah. Thank you for your question. <laughs> I would like to see my boy JK at some point. But oh, you do you know. like John Kaniska. Okay, maybe then I'll say. Yeah, sure. The approach to showing is. Maybe you're supposed to show sometimes and not show other times. Definitely. <laughs> Most definitely. Randomize. I am, no. Randomize when you show. Uh, you have to show the right time. Mm -hmm. Papo had the most mischievous grin on his face just then. Sometimes you show a bluff, sometimes whole, you show value. I have a whole strategy. Oh, you have a training Thank site? Yeah. <laughs> a training when site? To show. When to show. Oh, I got a little rail developing. Phil Gruesome folds the king eight. Matthew Hunt this time folds the button. Is that Steve O'Dwyer on the rail? I, I didn't clock Steve, but mm -hmm. he doesn't seem much like a rail guy to me. And a walk for Lococo. What's up, Fish Flinger? Thank you for your comment. You gotta make comment. the final table before you can do that. That's the, that's no, the hard, that's the hard part. No, it, it's like Someone brought up a couple of uh, big cities that I missed. Mm -hmm. Chicago I've never played. Sadly, we've gotta focus on the sad stuff and not comedy. Richie Rob has been Richie robbed of his chance to win the PSPC. And Greg Raymer also, Fossil Man, buried. Won't be dug up for another 10,000 years. No. And then I, are you showing the guy who's getting, gonna get angry? Yeah. That's a very, that's a big chapter. Because you don't wanna have him angry against you. Yeah. No, you don't want anybody angry But he's always angry with everybody, so. Gruesome with King Queen in the hijack. Haven't heard much from him lately. That is a bearded fella on the rail. I do not think it's Steve O'Dwyer. What would the story of do? Depends what your hand is. <laughs> I know, right? Well, two-way pop, boys. Uh, 
Let's take a look here, guys. So sub-20 big blinds. I think you're just going to open king-queen here, Joe. I think you just make it 10K. <laughs> OK, good. Right. Kind of paved the way for you there. <laughs> <laughs> and Hunt is folded, I think. Yep. <laughs> Gruesome just immediately tells him what his total stack size was. 82 total stack size. Zolt Vass, what a name. He's managed to chip up a little bit since we've seen him on this feature table so far. Which do you think is a better Vass, Zolt or Deferens? 6'9", guys, maybe. Zolt. <laughs> All right, wow. <laughs> cool name, strong name. <laughs> but then I wasn't asking. <laughs> So just a big blind left. Menzel definitely has a hand he can defend here. King nine, pretty strong when you're facing that hijack raise. Does make the call. Defenderino. Ace, 10, eight. King, queen. Still ahead. Larry Blintendo, I laughed at your name and your comment earlier. There was just a lot going on, and I couldn't read it, but nice work. <laughs> Love that guy. King, queen with the opportunity to continue with the gut shot. 27K in the middle. I wouldn't mind like a little, even like a one quarter size here is totally acceptable. I think a lot of people default to one third. But I think sub 20, one quarter on this flop is a size you're gonna use quite frequently. Doesn't have to be big at all. Not gonna struggle to get the chips in on later streets. I'm fine with giving up here, yeah. Twenty-five minutes left on the level. Twenty-five <laughs> minutes left on the day. <laughs> Larry Nintendo says you're an inspiration for all the stupid things I do. Here's another stupid thing I did two years in a row now: go on a trip with Maria Ho over Valentine's Day. How to go? I'm like, sorry, hun. Um, I'm just going out of town with my. Real attractive, real successful friend on Valentine's again, and you know, sharing a hotel room with her. <laughs> happy happy V Day, baby. <laughs> I'm gonna let this one fly, Tim Sullivan. Male and female players are not the same, there's a vast deference. I'll take it. Alejandro Lococo. Oh, okay. Sorry. This time with the ace nine. You look like you can do it. I look like a cash game player, you said? Like you can do it. So this is about 20 bigs behind. Maybe I can. Well, guess Once the blinds have gone in. <laughs> Um, with the additional dead money. We won in 2018, lost in 2022, so I should win this time, right? This is actually quite close, guys. I'm from friends. Yes. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm talking about soccer. There's a chance uh, that... Against a button raise, right? yeah. I mean, yeah. it feels like... I don't know. You're right, it's probably pretty close. It's, it's close because it's such a weak ace, but obviously weak aces have the opportunity to make straights. Like if this was ace seven off, for example, I think he's probably shoving a lot of the time. Ace eight, ace nine is almost always a shove. Ace nine off. Sure shove, says someone who sounds very confident. Do you think Mbappé will be better than Messi one day? Mira que tengo, hermano. What? I don't know. Foxo says, I don't think it's pure. It's uh, it's not pure with ace three. I think there's probably a lot of calling as well. Really? 
Well, I think he has a chance. Oh, wow. Really no wonder Aladdin started being sung. There's a magic lamp. This is my favorite player for all time. And the lid is off. I love lamp. I love lamp. Eight, six, four. Lococo continuing. And Peru's, even though they have a six figure stack, is uh, that's about 20 bigs <laughs> behind. So hard to play this hand well. That's why many players just default, default to be more aggressive here, Pre. But I do think the call is probably what you're supposed to do here at the stack depth. The only thing that I'm unsure of is, of course, with the addition of the big blind ante, there's a lot of dead money that you pick up when you do get the fold, and it is considerable when you're uh, when you're looking at how much that is in relation to a 20 big blind stack. So, honestly, it might be one to look up with antes, but uh, I think probably the call is fine. Probably calling more frequently than shoving that. Just a little bit on the deeper side. We're not a million miles away from the bubble either, guys, so just remember that. Sleevy says, Stapes, you got to get to West Side Comedy. I have not done West Side Comedy yet. I feel like the West Side people are like really nice, but are a close knit group and they don't they don't know me. I haven't penetrated. I'm friends with Bronston Jones on Facebook, but I don't do a lot of begging for spots. I just wait for people to ask me. So I think that's a good way to be. Yeah, I don't know. I'd probably be further ahead in my career if I was a little more proactive. My yeah. Uh, Oh, yeah. My comedy your French career. evening starts at midnight. Exactly. <laughs> you know that, right? The perfect. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Body ending at eight. I lived in France for a year, so I oh, know. cool. Where? Uh, in Picardy. Picardy? Yeah. Oh, you speak French. Yeah. You have the uh, It's really tough. Uh, <laughs> you have the uh, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I studied French in, in university. We've got a new oh, so nice. player at the yeah, table. But, uh, that fellow just folded with the Oakleys. What year is it? It's kind of fading a little bit, but I still remember. Dan Taeb. An Oakley almost, hat. Think, almost, almost a year. Okay. <laughs> Next to him. I worked in a school. And you learned French over there, or you learned before? I learned, I learned before, and then I got better while I was there. You know. Yeah, that's cool. Did I, you solve France? <laughs> Never <laughs> done Chicago, <laughs> Anthony. I, I kind of overlooked so that when I was <laughs> naming the places. <laughs> I'd like to do <laughs> what? Zanies? Is that the big one in Chicago? <laughs> that's why I live in Canada right now. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, from the oh, Sen, you're so <laughs> funny. <laughs> you're so funny, and you're now so banned. and now you're actually lifetime banned. <laughs> Don't talk about my friend that way. That's Thanks for nice. coming. Yeah. It's just weird. It's uh, I'm more, you know, part of the reason I, I ban everybody, gang, is because uh, I just want everyone to learn. Like, let's just be nice. I think I think I think we've we've definitely <laughs> educated a few people. Yeah. Invasion. Both in poker and in respect. But they solve themselves. They kick themselves <laughs> out. So Lococo <laughs> opening. Aha! Uh -huh. You can't spell loco without co for cutoff. The Lococo Co. The Co Lococo. Coco Loco. Anyway, Peruse is all in. <laughs> Poker stars, not Joker stars. Please stay on topic, commentators. It's uh, your band. Not, I don't know. I have no rhyme, but you know, you get the rest. <laughs> Honestly, Lococo probably finds a fold here. How often, when you call here, are you going to be up against? Eight. I mean, it's actually it's actually a lot closer than it looks, Joe. Um, uh, yeah. Six You're gonna be up against king queen sometimes. I understand that. Yeah. I mean, technically, you should also be up against some like weaker suited aces. Okay. But yeah, ace nine suited is definitely qu quite close there for sure. It's a lot closer than it looks. But I think probably this close to the money as well. You're gonna just just err on the side of caution. Maybe ace ten suited. You're always calling. Sure. You gotta you gonna make him angry. Say messy. Honestly, don't know that one 100. percent But it's definitely getting close there. Yes. When I say um, probably gonna find the fold here. I'm I'm factoring a bunch of things, not purely what the GTO play is, because obviously I don't know. But I can. 
just sort of take a sense of the overview of what's going on. Sure. The face Lacoco's making, um, sort of where we are in the tournament, yada, yada, yada. And you know what? I'm happy to be wrong. <laughs> Respect my, uh, my tight, tightness, please. <laughs> Casual Fist, he says, his poker star is not no, poker jars, it. guys. Stop talking about various preserves. <laughs> <laughs> we do mention a lot of jam. <laughs> I like that one. Nice work. Four bet, five bet, seven bet, jam. Nobody likes six bet jam. Oh, <laughs> It would be funny if you actually came out with your own, I mean, we have you know, your own brand. It was just yeah. called Four Bet Jam. <laughs> Chat. What flavor should it be? What flavor should uh, Joe's yeah. range of Four Bet Jam be? Hmm. Everybody for? Can't say I'm a big jam j jam guy, but I. But for the for the meme, we'll do it. We'll get it done. I will actually produce some some uh, Four Bet Jam. Drawberry, I like that, from Keenan Bread. Drawberry. <laughs> I haven't seen anything that beats Drawberry yet. Where are you from? England. Crazy Pineapple. Ah, <laughs> that's actually genius. Very good. Golden Jaguar, it sounds like you really are laid up in the hospital. I hope you're okay. Yeah, man, rest up, and uh, hope you get better soon. Ruthless writing in with Stallberry. Yeah. Raspberry. Raz Dash Berry. Okay. All right. Any Raz fans out there? So far, Drawberry and mine, Crazy Pineapple, are my favorites, believe it or not. How about Band Anna Nana? <laughs> you, ban you Band Anna? Okay. <laughs> I've never heard of Banana Jam before, though. I don't think that works. <laughs> the Snozberries taste like Snozberries. Wait, we're not supposed to be talking about yeah, poker jars. <laughs> How did that comment actually successfully get us talking about actual jam? Well played. Well played, chat. You got us this time. Eloy did raise small to big with pocket deuces. Gruesome's like, nah. Ooh, a French guy is going to set mime. I don't know if it counts if you're the one who raised, but whatever. Boo. No six, no nine. Hmm? No some... six, no nine. He's still doing the 69 <laughs> joke. I love it. So you can put green one. But six nine's already all in. <laughs> <laughs> I know that. Marma Spade, says Ed K. It's in the running. Aloy does not continue, and Grusin pairs a six in the turn. Jasper, well, I, I wasn't talking to you. I was talking to the guy that's in the hospital. Ten. One bet, ten thousand. It wasn't the same person, was it? Not sure. I'm like, hey, I hope you feel better soon. And then somebody out of his door is like, oh, I'll be fine, thanks. <laughs> 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 yeah, I didn't sleep great last night, Staves, but yeah, yeah I'll right, be yeah. okay. I'll survive. I think I might have pulled a muscle <laughs> jogging. Eli fires a shot here with the deuces. I mean, yeah, maybe Gruesome just expects that Eloy would have fired all of his nothings on the flop and therefore maybe has a six beat on the turn. Anyway, ja Jasmine, I, I hope you feel better as well. Is there anyone else that wants to assume I'm talking to them? Maybe. <laughs> Smooth call, peanut butter, and jam. That's a lot of words for the jar. We're a startup. I don't know if we can afford all that printing. Yeah. You guys, you got to be, you, you got to realize this is a grassroots operation. We got to cut costs. Four bet jam will also contain the number four as opposed to the letters just to, just to save right there. A pocket pair from I Dream Memes, okay. Uh, P E A R, very nice. I'm going to call the end on this thought exercise, everyone, because you're really ruining it for me. 
we got it. We I have think, the best one out of the gate. Yeah. Drawberry, it's not going to have much better than that. Yeah, yeah. Four bad jam, our first flavor, drawberry, feels good. And uh, crazy pineapple, that's it. We, we're a startup. We don't need a whole run of flavors. I'll take, I'll, I'm going to keep raspberry too, but that's the end of it, guys. No more. Pocket Jacks for Menzel, a.k.a. Adele Dezim. We decided, James, that um, instead of poker stars, we're going to do poker jars of jam. Yeah, no, I was uh, I was listening in, and I'm 100% with you. Any good startup knows you need to bring a solid product to market, and then you expand. Then you do the, the crazy. The yeah. worst thing you can do is basically throw in everything and the kitchen sink yeah. and just overinvest, overspend, and then struggle to yeah. find a market. Amen. What other live stream gives you real-world business advice <laughs> while entertaining you and educating you on the game of No Limit Hold Them? No Limit Hold Me. <laughs> the multi-talented Adela Dezim. No Limit Hold Them. No limit to your potential. On a three bet here okay. from Phil Mitchell. I'm, I'll allow it. <laughs> <laughs> Phil Mitchell. 42,000. You slag. That's right, the wickedly talented Adela Dezim. Thank you, Elkanats. <laughs> wickedly talented. Um. When are we in the money? Asks Movie Maker. Tomorrow. 175 players get paid. We're at 268 right now, but we've only got 10 minutes left on the clock, and they're going to draw for the last few hands in a moment which means world-famous bubble coverage follows tomorrow. Uh, so how's three bet and queen five working out for you, Hunt? $16,000. Where's Grant when you need him? Get at him or pab. <laughs> you guys are weird. <laughs> are these, are these I, fools and horses references? Am I no. going to have to provide yet more <laughs> photographic evidence? Uh, nine of hearts, no change. My feeling is, though, guys, if the three bet and then the continue was small in the flop, I think the intention might be to continue Turner at least. Check. He might be queuing himself up. <laughs> does slow down, though. I feel like comparing a bald guy to a bald guy is like comparing a bearded guy to a bearded guy. It's like, eh. No, no, no. This is a really good Phil Mitchell from the East Enders. Yeah, this is an interesting one. Does, doesn't decide to continue the turn. Understandably so, but, I mean, blocking King Queen, I suppose, has some merit if you did want to continue barreling, but Menzel now at this point on the turn going to be a lot more confident he has the best hand. Still might opt to take the free card and just pot control, though. He's got the best hand now, likely to have it on the river. Wants to get a little bit of protection. It's a very small bet in relation to the pot, but obviously still getting value from some hearts, maybe some random 7x, maybe hunt three bets a hand like queen seven and like wants to come along for one more card given the tiny bet. But he's just gonna three bet, continue, give up, seems good. Wasn't a particularly strong holding, of course. <laughs> so in a situation where Papo MC still has the table chip lead with 85 bigs, nearly 430K. Dan Tabe still the low man with just eight bigs. And hearing that the Tony staff are going to pause the clock at seven minutes, so in 60 seconds' time, and that's where we will draw for the number of hands to play tonight, Nick. All right. 
the way you see that film. <laughs> Germany, I guess, no? <laughs> you look like what? Yeah. You guys. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Well, maybe. I don't know. Zolt Vass folding Berlin, under you know, the gun. Berlin is a good city to drink, right? Papo MC. Yeah, exactly. Jack 10 of clubs raises to 10,000. We are at the 2 5 level. Young Martin Landau. Anyone? Okay, yeah, I give you that. Was he in the Twilight Zone as a young man? Martin Landau feels like he would have been. North by Northwest, playing James Mason's henchman, Leonard. I'm really interested to see what he wants to do here. He is going to use the King Jack as a three bat. The re-raise from Max Menzel to 29,000. I mean, UTG plus one versus plus two, very interesting. I think Eloy gets out of the way here pretty quick most of the time. Fold, fold, quick fold. Yeah, this is going to be back around to Alejandro Lococo. And the clock has been stopped. Whoa, 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 stop the clock. Lococo's got mountains here. They are quite deep. You might be tempted to call and just take a flop here with the beautiful Jack 10 clubs. I think the only thing he's really pondering here, James, is the uh, the fact that he was three bet from that particular position. So he does make the call, and he is out of position without the betting lead. Doesn't have the best hand. In fact, he is dominated, and it is an ace five deuce flop. You know, the range is UTG plus one versus plus two. That three bet will usually be quite strong. I would I would argue King Jack is actually on the weaker side, given how early these players are in position. Continuation bet of 18,000 from Max Menzel. Really like this size. In these pots. Do not need to continue big to get folds and can cure yourself up. Quick thank you to Chris on later George streets. The thank you, CG. Yeah, thanks, CG. By the way, on the subject of Adela Dazim, Adina Menzel, <laughs> I tried, I tried to watch the sequel to Enchanted. It's bloody awful. Uh -oh. I quit after 30 minutes. The first movie, such a delight. Fantastic film. The sequel, Number one, pointless. Number two, horrific. Yikes. Guys, Lococo check raises the flop with Jack High and gets the best wow. hand to fold. Let's wow. go. Don't you know I'm Lococo? How many hands are we playing? Have they drawn? Well, it seems we're going to play three more hands. Three more hands left to play, and day two will be done. Shorter day than originally envisaged, but that means the players will come back tomorrow to play into the money. Python says, James, I need clarification. Did you mean the sequel to Frozen? Because if there is actually a sequel to Enchanted, I need to know about it. No, you don't. It is a Disney Plus exclusive. It's called Disenchanted, and it is disappointing. Isn't it weird least. when the name of the movie is too accurate? <laughs> There's an all in here. Little blindy blind action, less than 10 bigs. 
and a call. Fold. Oh, sorry. No, he says fold, excuse me. Uh, fold, that was a fold. Two more? Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> well, let's have a look at some of the faces yeah. still in as day two draws to a close. There is another member of the Platinum Five, an OG Platinum Pass winner, Christoph Volkenhorst. So along with Clement and Adrian, he's going strong. Danielle and Daryl, sadly, no longer in the field. Boston Rob's doing okay. Nice. Amber. I got chips. Eric. Warre rocking the Richard meal and a very interesting shirt that complements his timepiece. Who wore it better? Uh, him, because I don't think anyone else would ever wear that. Mason Pie. Winning another pot. Still playing a decent stack as day two oh, draws right. to a close. I told you on price bin, you know. Like... Nice. Penultimate. An ultimate hand. Ten thousand. Four raise. Ten thousand. I want to bet ten thousand. <laughs> What's better, pen ultimate or pen fifteen? Give us some shit, y'all. And Papa just brings a smile to my face. He's so nice. He'll destroy you on the tables. He would destroy you in a rap battle, but he's got a heart of gold. I agree with Foxo, by the way. And the irony is, Foxo, if I did like them, we'd have a problem because I can't afford to spend six to seven figures on a watch. Hunt versus Lococo. Seven do suited. Check. Check, Seven. check. Ace on the turn, and Lococo is drawing dead. Seventeen thousand. Delayed continuation bet elicits a fold from right, Papo MC, which brings us to the last hand of the night. A walk, in the, a walk in the park. What fun playing with you guys. Thank you. You guys were here all day? One, no. two, five, three, I get the five. impression these guys all are quite day. happy I'm to here. finish now oh, and okay. head out I'm to dinner. Together, ah, I see, I see. Not together necessarily. I mean, I know they've made friends, but I don't think they've got like a dinner reservation for eight going. I would have preferred to lock up the $25,800 cash, whatever it is, before going to dinner tonight. Uh, 35 one. Yeah, they 35 one? Like, That's great. That's two dinners. Quality is good. No, and then, oh. yeah. They deemed us not entertaining enough. We yeah. We went back and we proved them wrong. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Come back, back right? come back. So yes, yes. Just, you were so entertaining over there. They yeah. had to bring you yeah, back. Yeah, exactly. Right. exactly. <laughs> so what did you do? Battle, dancing, or singing over there? Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Really? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, singing before. I know, I must sing, but mm -hmm. I, she, she lost. Of course, she, she wanted to sing too, right? Ha 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 ha! Have so many movies. Don't look at me. I don't even know your hand. No, I'm checking. You have a hand. Oh, well, I don't even know my hand. I haven't checking. looked yet. Cheers. Yes. Cheers. Fuck <laughs> them. <laughs> what can I do? 
I won her twice, you know. Like, All right, bro, let's get a clock on here. I let it go. It doesn't matter, does it? I let it go. I think so. It's over. There were four people on it. Bruce and Folds. Watch trying to tank until tomorrow. Mm. Hunt Folds. Uh, Ace Jack for the short stack, Dan Taib. He's got 10 bigs. And he is all in. Triangle that guy. Look at that. Fence out there. <laughs> is that exactly 10 be blind, James? Spot on. Spot on. Oh, a seven suited for Vass. I know. I know. Still represents half of his stack here, a little bit less. And I also have to make sure that I can still have Yeah, I think a seven of hearts too wide here. And if you fold, guaranteed day three, James. This being the last hand of the night. <laughs> oh, I know, Phil. Yeah, so they liked us so much that they put us back here to this table. Yeah. But it was not enough to pay the drinks. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I'm going to talk with the boss. Yeah. <laughs> he heard it. Luke Coco is going to sort out some free it. drinks on the next feature table. What a guy. Papo, you're fired. <laughs> <laughs> Papo, you're fired. Yeah. I think. Okay, day three, guys. All right, let's go. Day three. Yes. Well said. This one's not good. Second one is not good. <laughs> Two oh, bad cards. Good game. good game, guys. Good game. What do you have? Because I want to raise. So seven just, no? First time. <laughs> well, play is concluded at the main feature table, but we need to get over to the secondary feature table. We have a domination situation. Sam Grafton is all in with Ace Jack. Seventh guy, Ace King. Actually, it's Christian Rudolph who's all in here, but he does have the best hand and looks like he's going to double up through the squid. Hey! But no, oh, wow. a Jack on the flop and it's domination rotation. Maximum pout. Unless there is a king on the river, we lose sevens guy. It's a Sorry. five. Christian oh, Rudolph dispatched oh, by a bad beat. Oh. Sorry, man. I mean, it was okay. Yeah, it's just painful. Yeah. It is. What it is. Christian Rudolph eliminated on the last hand of the night. Sam Grafton, the beneficiary. Everyone who survived the day gets to bag and tag you and come back for day three. I can't fold there to you, I don't think. Pretty brutal finish for Christian Rudolph. <laughs> yeah, nice hand. And he's wearing the hat. No, nice hand, nice hand. Yeah, nice hand, nice hand. That is the same hat, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah you, you played it right, yeah. yeah. Nice Obviously, work, yeah, Poochie. Ho horrible at the end of I love the fact that Christian Rudolph hasn't said a word all day. Has his microphone yeah. taken off and then strikes oh, up a right. conversation. Yeah, no, I mean, <laughs> it's it's a long the way. Day. So on brand. So sevens guy. Well done, Sam. He'll survive for day three. A reminder, it is tomorrow when we play into the money. Looks like 258 players will return and 175 will get paid. So maybe the second or third level of the day is when we'll kick off our world-famous bubble coverage. And what a bubble that will be with Platinum Pass winners looking to turn a $0 investment into 35000 or more. Those are the stacks of the players we were watching at the secondary feature table. Grafton ending the day above average. Bro, big fold. Not, I mean... Yeah, yeah. Making me sweat with pocket jack. You like <laughs> uh, Yeah, of course. I mean, oh, how no, does he yeah. do it, ladies and gentlemen? Yeah, he was so shallow, but uh, managed to bag a decent amount here. 
Well, let's check on who the chip leaders will be heading into tomorrow. Top 10 stacks. Krasimir Yankov's got more than a million. 167 bigs among the other chip leaders. Jeremy, Jeremy Osmus, who, of course, dispatched Spraggy in that huge part. Chris Mormon, who starts today among the chip leaders. Tommy Wynn and a couple of platinum pass winners. Ignacio Gonzalez and Renato Minicucci. Blinds will be 3,000, 6,000 tomorrow with a 6K big blind ante. And this is the money up top. Four million to the winner. All players who make the final six, all players advancing to the final day will become millionaires. A min cash worth 35 grand, 175 players sharing in the $24.8 million prize pool. And we will break into that prize pool tomorrow. That's right. World famous bubble coverage on day three. Make sure you check out the PokerStars blog, updates and stories from the PSPC, and of course, everything else that's happening here at the PokerStars Caribbean Adventure at Bahama. We will be back with you tomorrow, 12.30 Eastern, which is 6.30 p.m. Central European time for day three. World famous bubble coverage from the PSPC. But for now, from Joe Stapleton, Nick Walsh, Maria Ho, and me, James Hartigan. It's good night from the Bahamas.